<laughs> All right, guys, we are live. Episode 42 of the Salt Lake Sit Down. This is one I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Uh, I've got one of my favorite guys with me today. I'm very happy to have him on. I've got Ryan Stone with me today. Yo. Here's the thing, guys. We're not going to be talking about red pill today. We're not going to be talking about how to get the girls and, you know, wipe your ass and brush your teeth and don't shit your pants. We're going to be actually talking about the art of storytelling to some degree and also the video creation process, particularly how Ryan does it. And I'm going to be obviously throwing in my two cents of how I do it. I was uh, telling Ryan early here while we were shooting the shit and realized, fuck, we ought to go live, is that I've been following him from very early on. And so I've been watching him not only grow his channel as far as subscribers go, but I've been watching him from his early videos up to his most recent stuff and watching him grow as a content creator, as an editor, as a storyteller. And, you know, so yes, I'm fluffing you right now, Ryan, because you've done an amazing job <laughs> and, and I've enjoyed it uh, a lot because one of the things I've noticed about a lot of other content creators in our sphere, in our, in our little fucking circle, not that they don't make good content because they do, but they don't, they're more just kind of like what mine can be is kind of talking head. They turn on the mic and then they go. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you actually tell a story in addition to giving out the message, giving out the nugget, the, the red meat sometimes, whatever it may be. And I find uh, most of uh, the other guys, it's okay. How, how long can I sit here and stare at the talking head before I start getting bored? Dude, that and freaks me out, by the way. Do you know, do you remember? Those like when 1984, like V for Vendetta, all those things, there's always that one scene that lets you know it's dystopia when there's some idiot yelling into the screen mm -hmm. about them. And every time I say a YouTube video, I'm like, how cyberpunk have we gotten? <laughs> that's why I don't like doing them if I don't have to. <laughs> uh, and I get that. And, you know, and that's one of the fun things is that your videos are so different, even though you're saying a lot of the same message a different way yours are so different that it's like, Oh, I can, I can sit through this because it's not done the exact same way that everybody else is doing it. And so yeah. I've really, I've really come to appreciate your, your style, I guess, or your take on it that it's like, okay. And like I was telling for the guys in the chat, um, I was telling Ryan that, what got me into Da Vinci, which is what he's also got up on his screen there, was a conversation that he and I and a couple handful of other dudes were having on Twitch one day. And I had asked Ryan, you know, hey, when you edit your videos, what are you using? And he's like, oh, I use Da Vinci. And I'd heard about it, but I had never downloaded it because at that time I was using Filmora, which is a great video editor itself um their latest version 10 or x uh is very phenomenal and it in my opinion where i've used both it it's it's up there with da vinci da vinci has a very very steep learning curve in my opinion because coming from filmora which is very uh, user friendly, very intuitive, very simplified, but it's very powerful. Going from that to Da Vinci, it was like I had to literally relearn almost how to edit videos all over again. Yeah. And, well, you, and I, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the part I like about it, yeah, is because you're focused, you have to focus on the fundamentals. Like, literally, like here. Um, actually, you know what? I'll talk about it later. But like when I start a project and I didn't know how to use this thing, the first thing I learned is how do you cut? <laughs> But then I had to focus on the cuts, which is like the most important part of video editing. But you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm not worried about, oh, this fancy button here that gives me the Instagram filter. It's like, no, it's how do I how do I put one foot in front of the other? How do I make the volume of the sound go up? What's the ideal sound? And then I focus on those things. And nobody knows those things. They just know when those things aren't there. It's like shoveling your driveway, right? Nobody oh, notices yeah. until it's not done. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And and it's funny when you mentioned audio, that was also a big sell to me, I guess, when it comes to uh, Da Vinci mm -hmm. with the, the Fairlight page. Uh, it is literally a full-fledged digital audio workstation because one of the other programs I've used on occasion, and I definitely use it for my audio-only stuff, mm -hmm. is a thing called Reaper. Oh, you Man. use Reaper? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Reaper's awesome, dude. I mean, it's got so many bells and whistles. Oh, it's it's the Da Vinci for audio. Yeah, totally. It is. But I didn't like the idea of okay, I got to record my video in like Filmora or an OBS and then take it over to Filmora, do all my cuts and edits and everything else, and then dump it over into Reaper and then refine the sound and process all the sound to get it the way I want it, and then go dump it back into Filmora again to finalize it, master mix it down, and here we are. Hmm. And, and I, I hated doing that, even though I could, and with Da Vinci, the majority of the stuff that I need anyway is in Da Vinci, kind of like it is in Reaper. And it's like, oh, God, this is great. And a lot of that, at least for me, was kind of native that it's like, oh, I can do side compression. I can do this. I can do that to mix the sound to make the background music and everything fit yeah. with the, the audio volume. And Filmora is still, they're getting better but that's one area they lack in their their audio tools are very simplistic and very uh to me at least they they're lacking it's like now because i i believe that audio is probably half of your video oh you i'd know? say it's more like 70 80 percent is it you yeah so like too? everything i've seen on youtube and from the performance of my videos is people will put up with potato quality video as long as your audio is switched on and you know what? I would agree with that. And not to not to throw the guy under the bus, uh, not to shit on Aaron Clary, but I'm going to shit on Aaron Clary for a second. And that's simply because where he does his videos and he's using a, a Blue Yeti mm -hmm. and those videos are great. I don't mind them. I think they're fantastic. But what's funny to me is when he'll do his car rants on occasion which he oh, doesn't yeah. do too often anymore. That's but because I we keep making fun of the Rolo Tomasi guys talking from their Toyota Tacomas and Honda Civics. He's well, probably yeah. like, oh, that, that horse is done. <laughs> yeah, pro well, and you know what? And, and you know what? It should be. Because one of the times that he did do one and he had uh, uploaded it as an audio, which is where I would listen to him versus going through YouTube, I'd go like through SoundCloud or whoever the hell he's using for his audio version. Mm -hmm. And that way I could focus on driving while I was at work. Right. Well, the crazy thing is I would get so distracted from the road noise of his car. So you could, you know, you could hear the, if he had the window open or if the, just going down the road noise, the stuff, the car, the vibrations, shit rattling. And it would be so distracting trying to listen to him rant and rave while he's driving down the road that I would end up ejecting out of that audio real quick. It's like, yeah, I can't do this, you mm. know? And, and that's where for me, it's like, that's why besides the whole, you know, the Rolo Tomasi clones ranting in their cars, that is also <laughs> why I don't do car videos is, God, it, it, I just, it's like, Aaron, I just, I can't listen to your stuff while you're driving around and I'm hearing street noise and all this other crap going on. I yeah, just which is too bad because if you have good soundproofing in your car, I can see it being a decent little studio. It's fairly intimate. There's a lot of like noise cancellation in the seats and all the fabric around there although he doesn't drive what does he drive does he actually I, drive a honda I, civic or i i know i i'm trying to think what the hell he does drive he said it at one point and i forget now what the hell but he it's drives. i'm assuming it's like a normal car it's nothing yeah. like rich with his r8 oh. which by the way definitely designed for noise cancellation in that car oh i believe that yeah no yeah. no he aaron's no aaron's driving the equivalent of a ford probe so <laughs> gotcha. he's driving a used piece of shit that he bought somewhere that he keeps in good shape, but he, he yeah, he's not spending money on cars like rich does. So. Uh, well, I guess one here for the audience guys, we're talking a lot about what tools to use, 
but we haven't really talked about why, and I'm hoping we're not losing you here. Do you mind if I just get into like jump right into the whys? By all means. Okay, it's funny. When you make things with this, there's always a why. And as soon as you can answer the why, it makes sense. So if we're going to do a video, we start a new project. I mean, that part's easy. Oh, yeah, damn it. All right, I got to fix the goddamn window. I forgot because I have mine in a multi-monitor setup, so I'm going to switch mm. it to a single monitor setup. Okay. How did I do that again? <laughs> oh, dual, dual screen on. There we go. So it's, now it's a single screen. We're going to add it up. If you guys get used to it, definitely setting it up where... There it is. You have a ah, yes. dual setup. is much better. We're all going to go silent on this one. Almost no view of us, of our ugly mugs. It's just going to be straight up content. And then you're left with this goddamn window. Absolutely brutal to look at. I just figured I'll put together me making a pot of coffee because it's like it's good footage that I always have on hand if I need it. And well, I won't get into how to organize these things, but let's just say, okay, we want to do a video where I'm making coffee. So what's the first step? I'm going to, you know what? I'll just drag it all in here. Where is it? Bean, blend, boil. Yeah, whatever. Oops. The first window is where you input all your stuff into your media pool. That's an easy one. The only thing to worry about on this is formats because you were talking about taking stuff, recording it on OBS. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys don't know that a really great format to film in OBS is something called MKV. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because if your stream gets cut off halfway through, if you're filming in like an MP4 or an AV AVI, it'll mm -hmm. ruin your entire footage. Like it has to be a continuous full clip. But MKV, if it crashes, you'll get everything up to the last keyframe. So at most you lose about three seconds of what you already have. Nice. Now, see, that right there for me is worth the price of admission. I didn't even know that. I know the MKV format. I know what you're talking about, but yeah. I didn't realize that. But here's the problem said. with that, though, is that uh, DaVinci can't edit MKVs. Oh. I have something to do with the way the wrapper is set up, and okay. I won't get into wrappers and underlying yeah. codecs and that, but it has a Remox option, which it converts it to an AVI after you're done. So you have two copies of the file. You have your raw, and then you have your editable one. Okay. You drag the editable one in here. So this one is just for like viewing through all your media files. What kind of files do I have when I do? So you can take a look. All right, what file do I want to use at first? I'll start with that one, pouring beans into a cup, easy one. So that's bean seven. You go to this window. This is your editing window. This is your special effects window. This one's your color, the mouse works. Okay, good, this is color yep. correction. This one's fair light. I don't play with much as I should. And this is the one where you're actually rendering your videos. But yep. the editing one's the one you spend the most time in. Do you spend any time in the cut page at all? What you mean? Well, I know with DaVinci, there's the cut page, which is... What version of DaVinci like are you the, using? Oh, 15. Oh, okay. oh my God. Wow. Here's okay. the thing. Version 16, they're uh -huh. billing it as a full version. The problem is it's not a full version. It's actually a uh, beta version. And or you're talking about 17 being the beta because that's where we're at now is 17. Oh, the seven. Okay. 17 yeah, is 16 probably the full is screen stable. of 16. Yeah. Here's, well, here's the problem with 16. When I go through 16, the way it renders videos, like as you're pre doing this, it actually creates a cache of like low quality stuff that is good enough for you to make your edits to. So you don't uh -huh. actually have to go through 16 gigs of video every time and everything slows right to a halt. All right. For some reason, DaVinci 16 wasn't able to use your uh, video card very well. And so it just grinds viewing to a halt. So I had to go back to 15. I haven't, oh. I might upgrade to 17, but I know what you're talking about. There's like the quick editing window and the normal one. I just, yeah, there's the, the cut one. page and then the edit page. And yeah, you, I'm looking at your icons at the bottom. It's like, you, you don't have the cut page. It's like, yeah, but I, I, I mean, I never use the 15. cut page anyway. I'm oh, sure okay. it's easy, but again, and that's the beauty of DaVinci is that everything you want to do, there's five different ways to do it. So there's no way you're limited. The one thing I forgot to do, though, is the first thing you do is go into your project settings. This stuff's important. Otherwise, you're going to screw up your video. I don't even worry about the timeline resolutions. If you're making a YouTube video, for example, if you want an end card, you need 16 by 9 formatting. So that's 1920 by 1080, 1280 by 720, 720 by 480. You know, the HD, SD format, yes. I'm pretty sure. Now, my last video, the Stedman one, if you'll notice, it has like a different format. It's 
I call it like the Lawrence of Lawrence of Arabia or uh, IMAX, which is two point two by one. So this ends up being, if I'm not mistaken, eight ten. It's technically supposed to be eight seventeen, but the way programs render is that if you do it in odd numbered frames, it fucks everything up. So for YouTube, they actually lower it down to eighteen or eight ten. Just realize if you do this, you can have something that looks more cinematic. It changes your framing, but you can't have end cards. So like these are choices you make right away. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about this shit. Frame rate again. These are choices that matter right away. If you're doing, I mean, this was old CRT TVs, twenty three point nine seven six. Twenty four is like film movie films. Twenty nine point nine seven is also uh, uh, TV frame rates. Thirty, oh, which is supposed to replicate thirty. And then there's 60. So if you're doing like hardcore game footage, like football or video games, 60 might make sense for you, especially if your video games run at 60 frames per second. Me, I almost always stick with 24. I like, like there's a blurriness that happens to movement because you're only showing at 24 frames a second. And that's an aesthetic choice on my side. Like I'm sure you guys have seen where you walk into Best Buy and then you used to watch the Avengers, but the Avengers looks kind of too clean. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, if you guys know what I'm talking about. And that's because they're showing that shit at like 60 frames. So just yep. try it yourself. When you make videos, try rendering one at 24, one at 60, and you'll see the difference. And that, it's like really a creative choice you got to make there. I like the idea of this. It makes the idea of these things being movies. My whole point of making movies is I want evergreen content. I don't like doing, hey, remember the latest gossip? Prince Harry's a cuck. <laughs> <laughs> like people will watch that for like a month and then they'll never wa like nobody's watching a Tim Pool vo video right now about Trump's plan for the White House this November 16th now and he's going to do this 4D thing and like nobody cares anymore. Right. So the idea of this is kind of like, yeah, to tap into that. Now, this is all subconscious shit. This is the kind of thing that your brain might register on a subconscious level, but you're never even going to think about. I'm going to leave all this shit because we don't have to worry about it. Uh, then we drag... So you just start, we'll drag our clips in. We'll just grab uh, bean seven and bean don't change. That's the problem too. If you film, it's always good to film in the same frame rate that you're recording, that you're going to make this on. Yes. Now this is an exception. I'll tell you why I'm doing, I didn't do it in this one. It's because there's panning shots here. And it's something I learned when you're filming, if you want to have smoother movement and you don't have a gimbal, what you can do is you film it at like 120 frames per second, and then you slow the footage down. So well, this is just me holding a camera and panning left to right. But because it's a lot faster, you're going to get very, very slow movement. See what I mean? It's just inching along. Yeah. Okay. And so what I can, what I want you to do is just go to your clip speed. Now, if you do 500, it'll be, oops. That's the other thing. You can't actually select the duration, which is annoying. You can change your frames per second or your speed. Although also another option, enter it manually by double clicking and typing the number or just click and drag. That thing is really nice. You can also reverse it. Freeze frame. I'll get into that in just a second. So let's say if it was 500, you'll see this is about how fast it was me moving pi normally. See how it's kind of jittery there? Yeah. But the idea was if you move it to like four or 300%, and this is why I, I use 15, not 16, by the way, because this shit will grind the computer to a halt on 16 for me. The movement looks much smoother, even when it's still got the same things. It's just like a nice little, it's like an Instagram filter for their face. <laughs> um, so that part I like. Also, if you want to, like, you'll notice, this, let's say you're doing, like, it goes over to here and you want to add text. Where is it? Oh, I can't remember where it is on this window anymore. Oops, <laughs> not the inspector. Not metadata, not mixer. See, normally it's always open for me now. There's the part here where you can select your fill. Oh, effects. Yeah, effects. effects library. There you go. Titles. Yep. So let's say I want to add a title here. Uh, you know, this is pretty easy. Select your title. Um, these are just different versions of this. Like you can make these yourself. It's not a big deal. I don't like using their templates. Mm -hmm. Scroll. You can make it yourself, but this is so much easier. And text plus, that's a powerful one. That's what I'm talking about. Special effects. I'll show you that one. Okay. But let's just say there's a comment. And you want this to, in this speed, to pan over, freeze frame right here, and then carry on. One thing you can do 
is when you do your clip speed changes, the frame that you're selecting as your head frame, when you freeze frame, it cuts automatically. And this becomes everything past that cut becomes a freeze frame, which is nice because then it's only going to be for that length of time. You want the video to continue on. Oops. Keyboard shortcut. For some reason, and I don't know why it does this, but it automatically cuts when you freeze it. But when you decide to resume, it doesn't cut. So you do keyboard shortcuts are your friend. B button mm -hmm. for blade. See the blade icon gets selected. And it'll automatically snap to where your head's at. Just one click, you cut it. If you don't have anything selected, it's going to cut everything in that frame. So if I just do this. Yeah, you're going to now should... have two. You're going to, it's going to cut your, yeah, everything got sliced. Yep. Yeah, so it's always good to select it first. Although that time it didn't. I think it has to do with the text thing. doesn't matter. Anyways, clip speed, have it carry on. Then you're going to have like a seamless, it continues on. That's something very simple you can do there. And it's it kind of jumped ahead where I wanted to do, but I figured since I'm already open speed, we might as well go through it. Mm -hmm. You can also have it go backwards with reverse, whatever. You sometimes have to do math. Like if you know, let's say you have a, a two second area you want to get filled. And the space in here is three seconds. Obviously, you know, that means you need 50% more frames. So 24 times three versus 24 times two. Then, you know, when you go in here, you change your speed. Oops, you're going to cry out loud. You're going to change it to like 100. Why do I keep doing that? 150%. But don't worry about that so much. Most of the time, you can just eyeball it. Anyways. So let's just do what we're going to do here. Because I wanted to get to the very basics. Very important part. So I do a nice 400. So it's still smooth, but it's not 100% as fast as it would have been otherwise. All right. Now, because there's such a long drag there, I'm actually going to start it just as it comes into frame. This is your zoom in and out. There's two things you can do here. If you want to move this around, the, you go to the edge of the frame, you're going to get two icons. You get one with a single head and then one with a double head. Mm -hmm. A single head just means you're moving this one frame. It'll always snap to that, which is good. Another thing you can do. So let's say this is um, two camera footage where it's like two different cameras film the same shot. They're all in sync. You cut from here to here. Like if you're doing dialogue, person A is talking person B. If you decide that you want the cut to be actually here, when you do this, and I don't have enough footage to do it, but actually here, I'll show you how it works. If I did it like this, you should be able to, oh, for crying out loud, what am I? Oh, that's why. You can actually move both of them together. Mm -hmm. It just, little things like that'll save you some time. But in our case, we're not doing two camera, two camera shots. We just want to edit here. Other thing you can do is if you're, it's up to you whether you want to or not. There's these options here, bookmarks, and uh, what's this one called? I can't remember. This one's a bookmark, and this one's like a set transition or something. It's basically just like a marker. When you select it, you make the marker on that video. You'll always snap to that part of the video. So if you have to fiddle around with a lot of shit, you always know exactly where you have to go back to. If you don't have anything selected, it'll make a marker on the frame. That would be important. Like, say, for example, and here's where I got to go to YouTube. By the way, if I'm losing here, you want expansion, cut me off because I'm just kind of... No, you're doing great. Here. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about here. Why would you want to do that? Here is how much people watch. This is the Pat Stedman. No, this is the one before. The uh, coffee before the Pat Stedman video. If you look, 100% of people are watching it when it starts. It drops to 72% by the first 30, 40 seconds, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe for me, that means I need to make a note. In my first 30 seconds, I have to hook you guys... Otherwise, 25% of you are going to leave, which is standard for YouTube. Same thing here. I noticed at this point of the video, there's like a precipitous drop as well. What am I doing there? That's different. Sometimes you'll notice neat things like that. So one, for example, when I add end cards, I'll watch this thing just nosedive off, nosedive off a cliff. Yes. So it lets me know. Okay, so our end card's useful. In case I look, I get out of a thousand views, maybe four clicks will be from end cards. So I'm like, they're pretty useless. That's why my newest one, I just got rid of it. Nice. Okay. Okay, so I know here, uh, second 41 is going to suck for me. So I'm just going to make a note at, you know, 41 seconds in, whatever. 
as a marker. Actually, it's probably better off if you do it as a bookmark. Oh, no, wait, no. Bookmarks are for when you want to, like, make DVD chapters and shit. So you make a marker. Rename it if you want to. Uh, where was the name for that? There it is. So everything before this is exciting. I would honestly suggest take your notes when you're making a template because when you're hung, hung over on a Sunday and you want to do some video editing, this shit will save your ass. <laughs> no, that is good. That is yeah. good. I like that. Because... Color coordinated as well. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Now, but now you're getting molecular level, which I understand. I don't know if all the guys in the chat would fully appreciate it at this moment, but well, I Well, they'll it. appreciate when you can make three videos a week instead of one. That's the uh, point, right? Yep. If this thing is all templated together, it's much easier for me to do this as opposed to inventing the wheel from scratch. Uh, so yeah. I know if I'm doing it, like what I do in my videos to try and hook people is the first 30 seconds, I try to do a little skit. It's nothing fancy. It's like me sitting down, holding a book. Like the latest one was me holding Rich's book, reading it. Yeah. Hearing the nani when I hear about Pat Stemney getting arrested and getting up, going to make a coffee to talk about it. Ah, I love it. I love yeah. it. But if I know I have this long, that gives me some constraints and constraints actually make it easier to work with. So uh, let's get back to what we were doing here. We're going to do edits. So this is actually later on. So we want to make an edit that goes from this where it's just panning, showing the coffee's been made, to this, where you're actually pouring it inside. I think I had... Okay, that's normal speed, so that's fine. Uh, there's six different main categories of edits, and I'll explain why we use all of them, and I'll try to show you with the footage I have best examples of it. So the first one is called Cut on Action. Actually, I guess now I don't need this open. We can look at my ugly face. Cut on Action. The idea of cutting on action, the easiest one I can think of is like watch a Jackie Chan or a Kung Fu movie, throws a punch, and then it cuts to the guy getting hit by the punch. That's cutting on action. The idea there is edits. You want it to create a seamlessness to it. So your brain doesn't register that as two different scenes. It In your brain, it's no different than if you look at somebody and then you pan over as he's punching somebody else. Now, the ideally you want to do that on action. So that way you can move from one thing to the next without people's brains having to re- focus it's that little bit of extra attention that makes things harder for people to watch and nothing will kill your video more than things that are hard to watch the same way you were talking about clary how uh if he has background noise and shit it takes you out of the moment yeah it's too distracting yeah yeah and that's that's why all of this editing shit matters guys all this shit because your goal here is to kind of get a guy lost in this he should be able to turn off his brain sit back and just enjoy the ride it's a very I think they call them hot mediums. Uh, Marshall McLuhan talks about hot mediums and cold mediums. The idea is a hot medium is it doesn't require more than one sense. That's why TV is a hot medium. Don't think, just sit here and I'll tell you a story. As opposed to a cold medium, which is like a blog, a book, or um, radio. Because on a radio broadcast, you can hear the guy, but you have to picture him. You have to right. use more of your brain, and it's actually harder to consume. I guess the best way to describe it. Now, maybe that's what you want. Sometimes that is what you want. But like, like I said, everything here is purposefully driven. Uh, so that's cut on action. The second one is a match cut. A match cut is where you cut one scene with another scene. And that's the one I'm going to do here. So let's say... All right. So we're going to make a cut right there. So B and then A goes back to the normal window. We'll just get rid of you. In fact, let's just get rid of the audio. Oh, link clips. Right click on it. Link clips. Greatest option ever because most of my filming shit is B real stuff and the audio is just random audio. So yeah, I want to get rid of that the noise of you doing whatever so you can get rid of the audio. So it's basically a silent film. Exactly. Now, you may, there's other reasons to want to do this too, but that's the one for now. We'll get to that. That's a different type of cut. So you can just get rid of that. Okay. There's two ways to delete things you push the delete key or the backspace key. The difference is backspace just removes a clip, leaves everything as it is. The delete key. We'll shift everything to the right of it back. Do you want to show that to the audience? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So right click when you have your thing selected, right click link clips. That's how you link or unlink things. You can link video, audio, doesn't matter. Delete just deletes things, keeps the frames in place. Delete the key or sorry, backspace, just that delete 
shifts everything around. It's like the equivalent of just pulling everything together. I hate delete. I've never found it to be useful unless I'm just taking a big series of jump cuts. But, you know, we'll get to that in a second. So match cuts. Here's the match cut. Right there, make a note, because that's the part when I want to cut. And we're going to do something here. So a neat little option you can do here to line things up is the opacity. So this is called the inspector. When you're in, have any clip selected, you make sure your inspector is selected. This is where you do most of your like movement stuff. In this case, I'm actually using it for a different purpose. I'm gonna drag my opacity down because I want to see when I can line these things up, which is right about, hmm. Actually, you know what? So that's about the center frame. It's probably right about there. Pretty sure this will work. Yeah, so that's about right. Why am I doing this? Let's delete that. Put that back to normal because we're going to do a match cut. Uh, now, okay. everything in DaVinci, three ways to do it. Either drag these over. What I find is easier is just cut the one that's, that you're cutting and just drag it down. It'll automatically do the things for you. So this is a match cut. It's a bit clumsy, but that's the idea is that your eye has something that is drawn to. So, okay, in this case, you see it's moving to the right. Then as you cut, it'll uh, it'll be, it's still in the same frame. It's a completely different action. It's a completely different scene, but... Actually, that was probably a bad place to do it. I don't know why I'm all freaking out over stupid stuff like this, but... The better place to have done it would have been right there where I wanted it to be. Yeah. This will probably look better. Oops. Boom. Right. So the idea for a match cut is there. You want to have some continuity. Now, there's a meaning behind this, and this is where subtext is important. If I was just showing a clip like this... And I just want to show me pouring things in there. I just pour something in there. It's very boring. But if I show a match cut. Now, let's say this isn't even. Maybe this is a different cup. Maybe this is just a cup of coffee itself. Like an actual cup. I think I have some of that. Yeah, like this one, for example. Technically, this has nothing to do with this. But I want it to have something to do with that. In your brain, you'll draw the connection that. Okay, there's a cup of coffee he's about to drink. And then we're cutting to this, your brain makes the connection. Okay, so this is him going back in time and making the coffee. Mm. Sometimes it's something simple too, like uh, somebody is, go like I said, the Kung Fu film, somebody's going to throw a punch and then it match cuts to somebody handing his girlfriend flowers. His arm is still outstretched the same way, but in your mind, you're realizing that these two events are connected, they're related. And that's the idea. So if you have two things that make no sense and you want to make them make sense together, a match cuts your friend. Next one is a smash cut. Smash cut is funny because it breaks everything I just told you guys about continuity. I'm going to take this one. I like this one. So a smash cut could be just about anything. This is going to be some old Super Channel 1980s video. He's making coffee. But you see how that was like very jarring? Yeah. That's the point of a smash cut. Ideally, you want to use a smash cut to break monotony. If this was jazz music... A smash cut would be the equivalent of uh, the musician changing the key all of a sudden, which makes you all freaked out. It builds tension. And you always want to play around with tension and release, push and pull. Hey, here's a game and pickup thing right there. So, for example, you're one of those talking head videos. You know, hey, whammon ain't shit. Did you guys know here's 10 ways to be alpha? And you're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And everybody's kind of lulled and they're following along. It's very rhythmic. You're almost like hypnotized. And then, bam, a smash cut into something else. Like, I don't know, maybe a guy just getting smacked by his girlfriend or something like that. That's the idea. And it's like, I'm telling you guys, this is important. Don't just treat this as entertainment. But you see what I mean? It yeah. It forces the person to pay attention. It's telling them the next thing is drastically different than what you're used to. So listen up. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. But smash cuts are good for that. Oh, that's that's gold. I like that. Yeah. Uh, the next one is a cutaway. I don't really use those as much, but it's kind of similar where you want to show... you. It's almost like a smash cut, but you're trying to show the connection between two things. 
but there has to be something that's the same. So do you want to throw that up or if, are you going to give an example or not? Yeah, I'm trying to think of what I have here that would make a good example of that. Ooh, actually, you know what? Oh, for crying out loud, where is that? Yeah, I think we'll go with I, this. I love your bat. I love your landscape, your cityscape footage too, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, I man. think it's great. Every day I can't sleep and I get up at like four in the morning. I'm like, well, might as well do another fucking time. Lapse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up. Uh, I All love right. it. That's, uh, and I know, you know, that you're doing that, you know, right out your window type of thing. And I'm looking yeah. at it going, God damn it. I wish I had a view like that because I could just do that crap all day long, too. Oh, just so. live in 18 property bubbles for your life. Eventually, you'll get there. <laughs> So that's kind of like a cutaway. The idea there, it's not as jarring as a smash cut because in this case, the colors are very similar. You want to have okay. some similarity. Either there's a building in the background that looks similar to this or the colors are the same, but it's going to be less jarring. It's more jarring than a match cut, less jarring than a smash cut. And that's the idea of, you know, when you're sitting in a room having a conversation with somebody and they're looking around the room, oh, see his paintings in the back, stuff like that. Okay. Very Sherlock Holmesy stuff. But that's the idea is it's mostly setting stuff up. Uh, the next is a, oh, okay, a jump cut. Jump cuts are what you're used to. Yep. So let's, uh, where is the raw stuff? I think it's under temp clips. Yeah, jump cut is very, uh, anyone who's, for the guys that don't understand the terms, which I'm sure a lot of you do, but it's any of your, most of your YouTube videos are going to be jump cuts. Because they're very fucking easy. Yep. Very easy. And you just bounce back and forth. Uh, your audio, it's getting rid of the uhs, the ahs, the stammers that I like to do live. It's getting rid of dead air space, all that kind of stuff. Those are all jump cuts. Now, there's a reason for these ones, too. In this case, it's like uh, it's showing the passage of time. The idea is this would probably be like a 10 minute scene. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing all these jump cuts, you're just cutting to the most important parts. So, OK, it's empty. He walked in the room to fool around. He just leaves. The idea is it's compressing a montage. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea of what you want to do for jump cuts. In this case, people use them very lazily too, where it's just, you want to get rid of any um and ah, smooth yep. over the performance thing. Actually, I will say this, since we're already on that, let me go back. There is a trick you can do on this that makes it a lot less jarring. If you go to your toolbox under the effects library, video transitions, this is something different, but we'll cut back to this. For in this case, we just need to worry about cross dissolves. What a cross dissolve is, is it fades between the first clip and the second clip. So once you mm -hmm. put it in, you place it between the two, you'll see you have this little window here, change it to two frames. And what you'll do is these two frames. Now that's two frames out of 24. So one twelfth of a second, your eyes not really going to register that. But when you watch it, you see how compared to the second one, it's yeah, much smoother? It's, yeah, it's it's not as jumpy, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And if you do a long one, it can make it a little more there. And it actually kind of adds to the purpose of it, too, which is what you're trying to show is the passage of time. Yeah. Anyways, we'll get back to that, though. Uh, next ones are J cuts and L cuts. Those are fun. Now, I need... One of my actual clips of like me yapping into the camera for this shit. I'm sure I have one somewhere. Oh, actually, you know what? I think I used. Uh, yeah. So a J cut and an L cut is just like you think. You want to have audio or video in the frame before the audio or video of that frame comes in. So. Ah. Uh, I just need a clip here. Fuck, I deleted all my audio. <laughs> oh, all right, see, we're going to use this. Again, it's a super channel commercial. I don't know if there's going to be sound. Is there sound when I click this thing? Like, do you hear this? No, I don't hear it. All right, son of a bitch. Oh, wait, I can add that. I know how. I just because I forgot to add desktop audio. Audio output capture desktop audio. How about now? Nope. Any not hearing it. Why is that not playing? Oh. One sec. No problem. 
still not. Now good. do you hear it? Nope. God damn it. It says here my audio is playing loud too. Oh, that's why, because of the. Oh, I fucking hate StreamYard. <laughs> yeah, you got to click the thing probably. Um, I might have to do it as a share screen. All right, here, do me a favor. Add my screen share. Oh, wait, did I do the. I don't know, did you? No, I have to do a share audio screen three. All right, you share get... my screen for a second if you don't mind. Not, Not a problem. problem. Now you hear it, right? Yep. yep. Okay, so a J cut would be, or an L cut is where the audio kicks in before the video kicks in. By the way, here's another reason you want to use this link clips. If I want to lose two seconds of footage here, I change the link and then link it back up. So you can audio edit channels individually. In this case, let's just say there's a commercial, there's a movie that I'm waiting for. This is the scene, I'm waiting for a movie. It's about to start. I was just about to pour water for a cup of coffee. The idea here is showing that I'm basically going to be late and I have to give up the cup of coffee. Um. Now that's, again, that's clumsy because you kind of have to have stuff, like you have to gear it towards this, but that's the point. It's, oh my God, he's going to miss the movie and then it's coming in there. Or another example you could do is where you know, this is talking about masculinity. His title on the top is like, how to be an alpha male. And then right about here, you hear his girlfriend in the background bitching him out over something. And then right here, you have a cut to her angry ass face just bitching at you. And it kind of shows that contra contradiction between his message here and there. I actually kind of wanted, I have that on like the back burner ideas where I wanted to do a video one day where guys talking about being alpha males, but their actual life is anything but. But that's the point, is that the J-Cut allows you to picture yourself in this scene, pouring yourself water to make a cup of coffee, while at the same time you're hearing in the background whatever's happening. And an L-Cut is just, or, if yeah, that's an L-Cut. A J-Cut is in reverse. The idea where this, like, the audio is already playing. Here, we'll just do this. And then it kicks in. A good example for that one is the, sometimes on my videos I'll have that. Let me see, do I have my latest one? No, I don't. Oh yeah, I do. All right. Charles Bukowski, Jordan Peterson. Is that playing? Okay, it's good. So if you'll notice on these videos, when you hear them, there'll sometimes be music playing and that stops when that clack sound happens, when the book drops on the thing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. yes. Okay. That there would be an L cut. That's right. J, uh, J is where it comes in afterwards. L cut's where it comes in before. So the idea is you listen to happy-go-lucky, fun music. It stops suddenly there after this one is already played. So that way you realize, oh, okay, this is supposed to be a lot of fun and games. Now focus. There's a whole bunch of different reasons you want to use these things. All right, I'm going to stop the share now. We can go back to normal. We don't need the sound. And that's all the different cuts you can do. There is a couple things now, which is what these are, dissolves. And that's the stuff where it kind of gets fun. So we'll just use this and we'll get rid of this audio because it's loud as shit in my mind. So I don't use added to dissolve. It's just some weird thing. Blur dissolve is the first one. And as you can see, blur will automatically blur the first video into the second video best way to picture that is like a dream sequence yeah and that's the idea of a blur dissolve where it's kind of like a fuzzy thing in there the next one you can do is the cross dissolve now cross dissolve is like literally fade out one fade into and that just creates more continuity and it kind of shows you the passage of time as opposed to like a different reality or a different thing there and these are like choices you can make. So when I want to make a cut from one thing to the other, you got to picture like, how do I want the person to understand the relationship between the frame before and the frame after? And that's where all these decisions come in, right? Um, wipes are the other one. Wipes are what you think of like Star Wars. In this case, it's a center wipe. I'm sure you guys have seen that before. Yep. Those are, I like those. Those are kind of more creative ones. Like if I want to do like a Star Wars one, I think it's edge wipe. And that edges angle. it goes from like one side to the other type of thing yeah, yeah like that there yeah you go. those are just 
I can't even describe because I can't find anywhere where they tell you why you would want to use it and what effect it has. The what best I've come up with is like telling is, stories. Like yeah, it's pages. it's like turning the, exactly. It's turning the page of a book. It's flipping a page is what it reminds me of. Mm -hmm. And the other last one is an iris wipe. That was Add because it technically should go backwards though. Where is the thing here? Oh, anyways, I fiddle with that later. Those were because back in the old days, cameras had manual controls of their iris. And that would just like open and close the shutter to let how much light in. And it would literally close off the scene by by uh, closing off the light. Again, that's just if you want to get the aesthetic of like a 1930s film. I think uh, the most famous example I can think of is, what the fuck's that movie? The Christmas Story with the yeah. you'll shoot your eye out. Yep. They do those a lot because the guy is trying to make his 1950s aesthetic. So it makes films look older. So then here's the question now. Now you know all that shit. What's the point? And they got fancier ones too, like hexagon irises and whatever. Not that it matters. You can combine these two, by the way. Oops. Eh, fucking, there we go. You can combine these if you want. And that's the thing, is you have to decide on a video, why do you want to make these decisions? So I'll, for example, I'll go to the Pat Stedman one. No, I'm not going to save this. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Oh, another thing you can do, by the way, if you want to make, you can do those manually. If you'll notice, when you go to the corner of a frame, there's this little thing here, and your icon will change to two arrows. I'm putting the thing up because I realized I forgot to show you. Do you see how that icon changes now? Let me pull you into full screen here. All right. Yeah, so when you go to the corner of a frame... There's this little white icon there and this thing here, mm -hmm. you drag that around and that's just basically like a fade. Yep. That's one way you can do it. So you could do it by setting a timeline here with opacity. And I'll show you quickly how that one works. This opacity slider here inside of your inspector. If I want my fade to start right here, what you do is you make a keyframe for it. And a keyframe is like everything up until that keyframe is at this level. And then I make another keyframe where I want it to stop and I have it go to 0% opacity. Functionally the same way of doing it. It just depends on how you want to do it. The result's still the same though. Right. It's doing the keyframe thing is a little more precision control is what that is. Exactly. But sometimes you're like, whatever, just drag it over and I'm done. Yep. And then you'll right. get that where it fades to black. Now here's where you can, and this is technically it's a smash cut and a dissolve in one. If you'll notice here, I got a little space in here in black because I wanted to show passage of time. That And then it's a jump cut. So we're going from just stirring a cup of coffee, zooming in, to bam, a whole new scene. The idea is it's jarring and it's showing something different, but I didn't want that jarring because it's technically consistent, but I don't know how else to get from here to here without that. So in this case, you go to a dissolve and a fade. The idea is you're just showing a couple seconds passage of time. And in that case, I can use a jump cut and still achieve what I want is like a consistency along the scene without freaking people out too much. This Then this dissolve serves the purpose of letting you know, okay, get ready. We're going to, you know, we're taking the cup from here. We're moving it here. And you're like, oh, okay. And because the audio is consistent, this is me talking about uh, the lessons you're going to learn from this. This is actually a combination of a jump cut, a dissolve, and an L cut. Because the audio is continuous throughout the cut. So that's how you can combine these things. And then the idea is once you combine them, same way you'd make chords when you're making music on a piano, you can achieve very complicated conversations without saying a word just by how you edit. And this is the part that I find is fascinating because if you do it right, now I'm not saying I'm doing it right. There's, trust me, if you ask me to like self-critique where I've made fuck ups, I'd be here all goddamn day. But don't ever tell people that you do that. Just fucking <laughs> carry on and let them figure it out. Don't talk them out of out of why they want to fuck you. Let them figure that out for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> nice analogy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but that's the point. Then you realize, okay, I'm just telling a story how Pat Stedman's an asshole in this one. He got himself killed and he's going to get you guys killed too. And if you're going to be trad, at least take care of your fucking kid. But that's the surface story. That's what yelling into your camera at OBS, staring into the screen like it's 1984 accomplishes. Doing this 
will show and I always like doing this, this style because it shows game. It's like, yeah, you can be charismatic and charming. This isn't just about ranting about the world. This is about being able to take something that's absolutely horrific and I can still make it entertaining. Like, you know how, uh, what's that standard alpha male pickup advice? Never self-deprecate, right? Right. But this would be an example of like self-deprecating, just ranting about bullshit, commentary channels, worse than Hitler. But it's is it really self-deprecating? Because, oh, wow, this is entertaining. We're going, and it's just pouring coffee. I get it, but that's the point. It's like the guy talking about, oh, I'm just a, I'm just a pussy. You wouldn't want to fight me. Meanwhile, he's got biceps from here to the moon. Big mm -hmm. cannonballs on it. Like, people pick up on that incongruence, but it's an incongruence that works in your favor. And that's why self-deprecation could work as humor. So, another purpose for edits is if your shots need work. So, in this case, I had to do some setups and that. There's, like, a giant gap in here after i put the coffee down because i want to have three parts to it uh this one's called a this purpose is called a rack focus do you see how it starts off out of focus and it focuses on the book and then here mm -hmm. it focuses on the the part of the coffee where you're pouring water into mm -hmm. a rack focus serves a similar function as a uh cut on action but it's with a continuous shot the idea is same like it's obvious you're focusing on the book they they put a coffee thing in a camera. You bring it in. You're focusing on this now. So the problem is I had to... There's a... I wonder if I can just... Do I have enough space? Yeah, I do. So here's the whole shot. And, that's, and you're already seeing the problem. I have way too much just sitting there. The rack is way too long. I want that to be like a quick third of a second thing. But it's actually like five seconds. So here's why I like the power of this. So this is basically a still shot. Uh, we're gonna make a cut right at, oops. Oh, that's right, it actually technically goes back further. So we're gonna make a cut right on that part. It's all the same, we can just freeze it, whatever. We can make that as long or short as we want. And then this is the part where we bring in the cup. The rack, and if you want to clean this up, same as how you do jump cuts. So right at that point, this frame stays the same for about half a second, which is way too long. So now you got two shots. What used to be five seconds of this, one second of this, and then like five seconds of this, you're going to turn it into like a third of a second of this. This part here, which is like the most important, which is showing there's something new to focus on, and the rack focus. Oops, where am I going back to it? You go to about where the rack focus ends, and this is the part where you can have some fun. You right click on your frame, and there's something called a compound clip. Mm -hmm. Now the problem comes, because let's say I just speed this up then, that'll be fine. The problem is when you speed it up, the frame's still the same length. So this piece here used to be over here, now I got all this extra shit, there's a whole bunch of crap you have to worry about, I hate that. What you can do instead is you make a compound clip. Temp one, whatever. There's multiple purposes for it, but this is what I like about it. Now, that self-contained cut is its own clip. So when I go to change the speed on it, from a seven second piece to like a one second piece, it automatically sizes it properly for me because it knows those are constraints. I you never even thought about using a compound clip this way. Oh, dude, I, I know awesome. what you're talking about, and I've used them for other things, but I've never, wow, I, I've never thought about it. I mean, I, I understand it. It's like, oh my God, yeah, you could do that. I just, it never occurred to me. Yeah, it's just less work on your end. And then, so now, if we go back to, where did it start? Let's get this all this out of here. And that's how the final edit looks. You'll have something like this. That rack focus, ultra fast, and then the cup. About 15 seconds of fluff is pulled out of there. It's very tight. It gets the point across. And to the viewer, all he sees is, yeah, he's pouring. He put Troy's book down. He puts a cup of coffee down and he pours water into it. Big fucking whoop, right? Yeah, but that's the problem. If I had just literally filmed it like that, like just on my phone, do these three actions, somebody's going to get bored and fuck off from the video. Yep. And so it's my way of respecting the viewer's time and respecting their attention and achieving the goal at the same time. And I... Like I said, I can't say it's for sure or not. Like, I don't know, who does 
who's the most popular guy in Rule Zero that just does videos like one take talking head ones? Maybe Rich, I guess. Yeah, I'd say probably. Yeah. All right. Him not saying Rollo. it's yeah, not saying they're bad, not saying they're no. good, whatever. My decision here is like at least when you walk away from this, you have that feeling that I'm taking your time is valuable. People always like being fluffed. And I try to focus on keeping you watching so you can focus on the things and make it succinct. I, it's it's my personal thing there. No, I get it. And, yeah. and it makes sense. It totally makes sense. Yeah. And is it worth the effort? Couldn't tell you. For me, it is. Like I said, it's paying the bills, but whatever. Well, there you have it then. If it's paying the bills. <laughs> all right. There's all these different bands and wipes and shit too. I play with these if you want to. I don't find them useful. Like X wipe, for example, is just, they're no. just different iris effects. Do them if you want. Uh, what do I got here? So that was the cuts, the dissolves, the wipes. So that's basic stuff. But that kind of gets the point of why do you want to have this, that, or the other thing in there? The 40 second. You can see I got my own bookmark set. I don't name them because they're just like one-off videos. But that's the stuff I like. Now, the stuff where you can get really fun. Let me go back to Project Manager. Don't save. Is text effects. Oh, yeah. I, I You're going to have to... Uh spill the beans so to speak you like my pun um about your where you've got your your signature oh yeah well the signature oh yeah there's a bunch of stuff there um i'll start with the scrolling one this is when i said there was those different titles you can use yeah i don't even all this shit is like template shit so don't even worry about that you can make your own this is the text scroll the idea is you just put your text in it'll automatically scroll for you you don't have to fiddle around with setting your y coordinates and that it's fairly useful. The one thing that I hate about this is it doesn't have any formatting within the text box. So you have to kind of do a workaround and I'll show you how I do it. Um, copy this and I need to open notepad on this fucking window. I think it's window capture, notepad, notepad. Or no, wait, it might, am I doing the window share? No, I'm not. Uh, where's notepad? There it is. All right. What the hell? Where's my goddamn notepad? Oh, you know what? Discard that. I'll just add another one. If I was smart, what I would have done is set all this stuff up beforehand, but a lot of stuff I don't know I'm talking about till we get there. So you guys are just gonna have to put up with me being a bit of a tard. <laughs> there she goes. All right. So here's one trick you can do on that, because if you just put this text without any enters, fuck, I should have had some text prepared for this. You're just gonna get one long string of text. Like yep. here, I'll show you at the top. You see the well last night line? Yeah. It just moves it all into a single line, completely screws it up. Yeah, it doesn't do any kind of word wrap. Exactly. Yeah. But what you can do is, so I look at this, I copy it and paste it into here. I notice about the same answer, like this is the line length I want. So you go back into Notepad. You copy and paste it in here. You make sure your word wrap is set on. And you just change the window size just until it starts to clip at where you want it to clip. Then all you got to do is go through, go to the end of the line, hit enter to every line. For paragraphs, it'll give you an extra line space. And for everything else, it'll just make it its own line. And then you can easily, it'll easily format when you copy and paste it back in <sighs> to exactly what you need. It's a huge time saver. It took me oh way too long God, to Oh my God, yeah. Oh God, yeah. It's a bit of a workaround, but whatever. Anyways, so then you got your font choices. Now I could talk about like typography and shit for hours. I'm not going to do that and waste your guys' time. I'll just say right now, if you want to have basic shit, stick to the basics, stick to a display font. And because it's on video, if it's got the name of like a city in it, then you know it's made for, for viewing on monitors. Helvetica, long story. But So like, uh, where is it? Helvetica is technically a print font, so that's an exception to this one, but you'll see 
I'm just trying to think of a name of a city here. It's in like G. Georgia? Geneva? Yeah, Georgia. Georgia, city name. It's a font designed for being on screen. So that's... If anybody's curious, ask me in the chat and I'll tell you why. As opposed to, you know, like Gil Sands, which is made as a print font. Uh, another good example... Uh, where'd it go? With V. Verdana. Very web-based font. They're easier to read online. That's why you'll notice some people make text on screen and they're hard to read. In my case, because I'm a goofy graphic designer, I always like Helvetica because that's the answer for everything is Helvetica if you're a graphic designer. Just ask <laughs> Rolo, he'll tell you. Helvetica and Adobe Garamond. <laughs> but, um, all right. So a couple options you could do on here. Now, let's say, for example, what I did is... I just use a black background, so there's nice contrast in here. It's very easy to read. But if we add a don't eat paint warning on a video for some part. Oh, I've already deleted the Stedman clip. That's annoying. Yeah, like right, right here. This example here is like those fuck ups I told you not to tell anybody about. Here's one. The coloring here just doesn't work. It's hard to read with the movement that goes on. Like sure, mm -hmm. at some parts of the frame it's readable, but it's not. There's a couple ways to deal with this. The first one, you just bring the opacity down in your main image, and then you just bring the brightness up in this one, like make it white. That's one way to do it. Yeah. You could if you want to, but then that's the problem is it like de-emphasizes the background. If you don't want to do that. If you notice in this one, if I do it white, you have the same problem. It gets washed out by the uh, lighter parts of the image. Yeah. Now you've got options that come with it. You can do your drop shadow which that's the one I kind of went with here. Drop shadow. Another reason you can use a drop shadow is it actually adds a bit of fuzziness to it. If you create a large blur on your drop shadow, it almost just gives it like an airbrushed effect. So mm -hmm. that's something to think of. Or your opacity. Instead of a drop shadow, though, you could also you can also stroke it if you wanted to. Like add a stroke around it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can do that. For these thinner type fonts, I wouldn't suggest it. Uh, background is the one a lot of people use too. In this case, you go through it, just select your color. I'm going to do it like a Final Fantasy text window. 80s kids will remember this. We'll make the outline window 5. And if you notice, the height's always set to 0. That's why you can't see it. So once you extend the height yep. and the width, that's that, an option too. You, you actually you beat me to it because that's what I was going to throw in is, well, you could always kind of put a background more or less behind your text and faded a bit so that it's not as jarring or competing with everything else you're doing, but at least you can see the words then. Yeah. So. Now, in this case, like the creative choice I made, I could do this. If this was just dialogue, like mm -hmm. I'm repeating something the guy's already said, I want to do it like a text box, like it's a Final Fantasy game. You could totally do that. I don't like that in this case because the idea is I want it to be kind of seamless in the background. Right. Um, you can also like fix your corners, whatever. And if you notice, there's always, if there's a keyframe here, you can have this change. So mm -hmm. one thing you might want to do is as it starts, uh, width and height, zero, zero. And let's say the first second, I'm just roughing it here. You get it to fill your whole window. That's kind of bad, but whatever. Then it'll have like a little pop-up thing. Again, if you want it to be fast, usually something that's l faster than 15 milliseconds has more of a pop to it. Anything slower than that looks more deliberate and slow. Mm -hmm. That has to do with reaction times of people. But usually if you're doing a 24 frame video, anything less than four frames will seem like action and anything less than or more than four frames will seem more deliberate. I could describe it better, but fuck it. Anyways, we're just going to get rid of that. Another thing you can do, I mean, obviously you want to pick maybe a thicker font, but if you go, if you notice in the inspector tab, the one thing I've never gone into is video. Oh, while we're here quickly, you got your size changes. Tracking is the space between letters. Mm -hmm. Line spacing, the space between lines. Um, if you're using larger typefaces, you're usually going to have to pull your line spacing down. Because if you notice at zero... These are spaced kind of wide apart, and I don't like that. So I like to bring them in nice and tight to where the 
under uh, the underlines of the larger text meets the X height of the lower text. But yeah, usually bigger the font, the less space you need. The smaller the font, the more space you need. That's the rule of thumb. You can also have it just be all like these are options that are fairly simple. All lowercase, all caps. How you want to align it. The anchors. Those matter because if you notice, there's like a uh, you see how this gets cut off. Where is it? See how that's cut off there? Yeah. Now, I'm not sure how this works, but there is a certain window that this text box is allowed to be in. It's not a it's not a death sentence, but when you anchor things, you want to anchor it to one side or the other of the text box. That helps you size things better for what you want. I don't know where I had it to. Probably this. Make your size so it fits in there. But the video tab is where you can do some magic on that. Same thing with rotation. The one thing to remember, too, is... Oh, they don't have that here. That's in video. So this is where this window comes in handy. Another option you can do... I can't read the text in the background. There's composite modes. Mm -hmm. These change the way your... Whatever's in front will render on the things in the back. Add just means add the color information of the front to the back. So... Actually, this won't work when it's white. But let's say it's 50% gray-ish. Add is just adding a 50% gray filter to whatever's behind. So if you notice, the lighter parts here look a lot whiter. The parts that are behind red look not as light. Yeah, so it's I taking, see that. Yeah, it takes 50% gray and it adds, you know, this 40% red to it and you get this kind of color. That's one thing you can do. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, usually if, and you can do it with clips too, not just text. So if I want right. to have a clip in front of this one, same thing. The idea is if the one that you want to have in the foreground is brighter, usually add will help. Um, color just adds color information. That would matter if I was, say, using, I don't know, pink. It'll actually just add a pink filter to all this one. Um, color burn and dodge. These are old photography terms. Mm -hmm. Burn used to be you would take extra light and put it on a certain part of the frame and overexpose it. So the idea is you have like a, you overexposed the parts that the text is on here. And so that's why you get that darker burn. Or for the burn, because you're underexposing it. The dodge is overexposing it. Sometimes you can use those. It usually has to do with like dissolves and shit. So, but you'll kind of know. Just know that's why it's there. Darken just takes the darker colors and puts them in there. So if the background is darker, the background's going to take priority. If the foreground's darker, the foreground takes priority. That's why you can see the text here, but not here, because this is darker than the text. Darker color, I'm not entirely sure how that works. It's kind of similar, but if you notice, it's a little more pronounced. I think it has. To Difference and exclusion. I don't know the difference between them, to be honest to you. They just literally take... It's like a negative image. So this part is pink, but once it gets... The closer to white an image gets, the more it'll take the opposite color of pink, which in this case is lime green. Hmm. I've never... I never even thought about using that on text. Yeah. Just... So black is going to show you nothing, because black's just black. White, it'll show you the opposite of red, in this case a light blue... In this case, it shows you the opposite of a really light white, which is black. Again, depending on what you want to achieve, these can be better or worse. Difference, I notice, does the same thing. Exclusion or divide. I never really use divide. I'm not entirely sure how that one works either. Hard mix is just like a color burn and color dodge, but it's harsher. Uh, lighten, same thing. Whichever color, it'll lighten the image behind it, but it won't overtake. If there's light shit in the background, you won't be able to see it. Hue just takes the color information. So for example, it'll just add pink to things. If things are dark, they won't get any pink added to them. But if they're light, you can just add a pink hue to them. You would want to do that, to be honest, if you were doing like, a, how to explain this. If you wanted to add like color filters. Do you ever worked with like a film camera? I did when I was young, yeah. Okay, do you remember they used to have those color filters, those filter gels that were like yeah. colored discs yeah. and you put them over your lens? Yeah. That's what Hue ends up doing. Okay. There's colored lens. Lighter, lighter color. Uh, the linear stuff, this just makes it, it just means linear as opposed to parabolic. It's a math term. Just know it's a different effect, but the similar thing. Luminosity just takes the brightness information and disregards the color. Multiply is a fun one. So if you pick a nice light color... You notice it's hard to see, but if mm -hmm. I pick a darker, it's easier. Because it literally just takes 
So there's 255 red, green, and blue in information. It's called RGB. Right. You take the RGB value of the front thing, multiply it to the value of the RGB in the back, and that's the color that displays here. That's actually, you're going to probably use multiply more than anything on light backgrounds and overlay on dark backgrounds. That's good to know. Um, or sorry, screen on light backgrounds. Overlay is another one that you'll probably use in place of multiply. But between those three, you're going to get them. In this case, you see how screen works. Instead of multiplying the foreground to the background, it almost divides it. Um, I never really figure with fiddle with these ones here, but there's so there's like all kinds of different options. In this case, the one that would probably make it most visible. In my case, I went with black. I just took the hit on this one, but what I would have probably done if I wanted maximum visibility, full on white, just normal, and I'd probably just do a drop shadow, make the drop shadow white. And increase a blur drop opacity play around until i get it just as visible as i want to so that's why it even goes well against the backgrounds or if you want to be like a fancy movie guy that's why if you notice a lot of old movies their subtitles were like in this bright yellow mm, yeah because there's no color that the biggest contrast you're ever going to find is yellow and black so right there if you want maximum visibility always just yellow on black but as you notice there it's kind of like obtrusive yeah, it is. It's actually almost obnoxious. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but, maybe that's the it, look you're going for. In exactly. Case, right? If that's what you're going for, you know, it, it has its uses. It has its mm -hmm. purpose. Cropping, I've found, is deceptively useful, by the way. When you do cropping, in this case, it just like cuts. It's basically cropping out the video. And this is good if you want to make a montage. If you want to put three frames together, do that episode of 24 with Jack Bauer. Like, uh, <laughs> it's I'm just going to move this to the end. Oh, for crux sake, give me a thing. All right, whatever. We'll just take this. Put them on top of each other. We can easily... Oops, give me that. Now, that's like a really shitty example because I'm not paying too much attention, but you could montage or whatever you want to with all your images here. Cropping's a great option for that. I show purple rain. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So if you want to do that, any kind of like Rockford Files, 24, 1970s, like moving things in and out of frame, cropping is the way to do it. And if you want to be super manual about it, you can basically start a crop at zero with a keyframe, go to the end, set the crop at 100%, and that's how you get your, your wipes. Did I even... Oh, it's a bit slow, but whatever, you get the point. Yeah. Okay, so we'll turn that one off. Um, back to, and here's something I found. If you're just going to do yapping into the camera, where is the old relationship? Well, I guess, am I on relationship? Oh, I am on it. Ah, oh, damn it. I lost all my footage there. All right. Let me go back to one where I actually have a talking head thing in here. Project manager. Oh, yeah, Stedman. I do some shit there where I talk to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I deleted that one, too. Now, this, it's funny, that right there where you were at and we're seeing him, was he sitting in the dark or? or yeah, it, it was one of his COVID cabals. This is one where you're sitting out in his patio. And uh -huh. then he's like, I want to get more light from the sunset. And then he sits there and then he just goes into the dark. It's all vertical video. So there's a lot of black around it too. Like yeah. Up the brightness, you'll see what I'm talking about. Where it fucks the brightness. Yeah, fuck whatever. I'll go back to that later. Oh yeah, I got to set that as a visual option. All right, fuck. Um, 
The problem is just staring at somebody talking to you is fucking boring. Yeah. Movies, if you watch now, modern movies have taken attention span to the extreme and they make three edits a second minimum. I find, and from watching other YouTubers, the ones that have like hired professional editors like PewDiePie or whatever, mm -hmm. three to five seconds per edit just on a talkie. Wow. So what you can do here, uh, 1501, we'll just do three second ones because it's easy. And I'll show you, Hagen, just take something simple like yapping into the camera and a couple minutes of work, which you should be watching your video anyway before you release it to make sure everything goes smoothly. Yes, yes, absolutely. Every three seconds. So we're going to make a keyframe for zooms, positions, rotations. Yeah. So we do three seconds of him talking like this. And let's say it's just talk. So we'll make another keyframe here. Here's a trick too, to have it automatically look like a zoom in from a second shot. Make a keyframe, use the right button, or right key to move ahead one frame, second keyframe, and do a 1.2 zoom. So in this case, as he talks, now these are a little faster, I'd probably do it slower. And let's say he's making a point and then he's making another point. I'll keep moving it up 20% every time. So it's like, But you see there, so it makes something a little more interesting. Now, if you want to have it to be notable differences, you're probably going to want to do something like a two or a three, as well as, again, two keyframes. So you want it to be a sudden jarring one. Oops, that's why that one's all messed up. And then, okay, kids at home, get, go download Pat's COVID Cabal so you can play along here. Yeah, do it now while you still can. <laughs> yeah, before it gets swept out. So what I can do here is just some simple edits. He's just sitting here ranting about whatever, but it zooms in, talks about something, talks about something. That zooming out thing was a mistake. I can fix that later, though. That's because I should do this once and get it right. Yeah, whatever. So that's one way you can change things by a quick zoom in and then let's say just zoom out. In fact, let's just put this stuff all back. Back to one. So right there, this is just a seven second talkie where you're sitting there talking. Put back your X and Y because you're not a fucking pleb. And that can make something a little more interesting. Mm -hmm. Or what you could do, again, it's all about what do these changes mean? mean, In this case, it's just back, forward, back, forward. It's like a very lazy, generic way to do it. And you're probably going to use it a lot because it's like the workhorse of it. But if you want to, let's say this is where he's making a really good point in between here and here. We'll create a zoom point here and a zoom point here and have it zoom in onto his mouth because you want to look at his mouth when he's talking. Now you want to have it slower than that, but that's the idea is that zooming in is the equivalent of like you leaning in on a conversation. Like, what did you say? Like when a girl's super interested in you, she twirls her hair, she leans in, starts smiling. That's like, that's how your brain pictures this. Oh, this is something I need to listen to. You'll see I do that a lot of time on my videos. I try to do it right at the point. You'll always hear me say some shit like that. Uh, at the end of the day, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. This is where you get somebody to focus on it. Now, on the flip side of that, you could do... By the way, this button is to reset everything back to normal. And this is to set the specific option back to normal. They're always your friend. Let's say... Um, he's already talking. Blah, blah, blah. The lizard people are going to eat your babies. <laughs> and this is some point that's not specific. Like, you need to pay attention to this. This is like, take a step back. Let's let's get out of the weeds and let's talk about big picture stuff. That's when you maybe want to do a zoom out. And that lets you know that you're, you're going from a very specific point to something broader. These little things like this, which will give a guy a cue as to what you're saying. It's like, you know how in writing they tell you, say what you're going to say, say what you say, and then say what you said? Mm-hmm. Same thing there. 
So it's not enough just to say, at the end of the day, we need to keep the bigger picture in mind here. By the idea is throwing this zoom out effect, you're visually giving a consistent message across. So not only are you telling a guy about the bigger picture, but he's zooming out. So like he's walking back too and taking it all in. Giving or in the, the, case of, the visual of a, the bigger picture. Exactly. Yeah. And that's good wow. because people don't recognize that at all. Like they won't. You can no, tell that is, this. No, that is totally subconscious stuff. Yeah, that but is, it works. Totally. Yeah. And it's I all about it. mirroring. And that's the beauty of this too, is that you can't, like I could give you like, go by 20%, blah, blah, blah. Here's your artistic list of ways to make more emphasis. The beauty of this is you almost want to run off of instinct because mm. the way you instinctually think it should work is more than likely how other people's brain is going to interpret it to work. The autism comes if you don't know how to react to emotions, in which case that's why I'm saying zoom out when it's bigger picture, zoom in when it's focus stuff. Switch between two focus levels if you want to say something. In this case, I always like 20%. It's a nice level. Sometimes 1.5. You'll get a feel for it on your own. You'll see the difference between a 10% zoom, a 20% zoom, a 50%, a 200%, a 300%. And you kind of just notice how it feels different. Sometimes even, let's say there's a detail in behind him, like there's some dude here who's naked jerking off. And as he's talking about something super serious, you want to add some levity. So you just like do a quick zoom into this thing here. <laughs> kind of like the movie Airplane used to do that for a lot of gags where somebody yes. in the foreground's being serious and in the back there's rubber dicks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but as again, that's, that's all how you want to play it. And that's totally my thing too. Like I'm using the ominous music here of like, unsolved mysteries or that serial killer documentary that people love right now but it's pat stedman talking about the feelings surrounding 4d chest and the lizard people pizza party shit right so it's like <laughs> there's a juxtaposition of complete absurdity and super serious delivery and i like i hope i'm hoping when other people catch on that they catch like is he taking this shit seriously but you can tell from the whole conversation, the video is basically calling this guy a fucking moron, right? Yeah. That the more serious I take it, the more joking it is. This is actually helpful from a game perspective because, you know, when that tweet I put out, like, I don't know, a couple days ago, where the chances that a girl is a lesbian increases 140% when she rejects you? <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, guys suck at rejection. Ah, oh, she must be a lesbian or whatever. But that's but that's kind of this one too, right? Like I could just say, look at this guy, he's an idiot, and then point at him and laugh. And people will go, Why are you being so mean? But in this case, I don't actually call him a flat out an idiot. I just show you he's an idiot because look at this super serious thing attached to this really ridiculous thing. I've already explained why it doesn't work. So I didn't call him an idiot. There's that plausible deniability and that subtext of him being an idiot. <laughs> and it's much more persuasive because if I tell you what to think, your first thought is like, you can't tell me what to do and you'll exactly. think the exact opposite. Resistance, yep, resistance. In this case, it would have almost been better if I'd have spent this whole video justifying this as like, at least he had balls and then <laughs> playing stupid shit. But I mean, if you, yeah, and that's the thing, if your goal of this video was just to make a slam piece, that's totally what you would do. It's, they used to call that the, uh, the boyfriend destroyer. Oh yeah, Back in yeah. the mystery days. Mystery days and the Ross Jeffrey days, too. Yeah, guys would sit there, like, a girl would bitch about her boyfriend, and your natural thought is, like, yeah, just join her on team, fuck that guy, and then maybe she'll think I'm better. And But then girls will start arguing with you, well, he's not that bad. So what they found out is the best thing to do is just take his side. Oh, I'm sure he's not that bad. He must do this, that, and the other thing. And then she basically follows the natural indication of a girl to argue with whoever the fuck's talking to her. And then she basically talks herself out of liking him. And that's the boyfriend destroyer. And this is how you use that boyfriend destroyer in storytelling. Oh, uh, I love it. I love yeah. it. Ah, oh, didn't even think about that shit. But I, and that's why I liked that I had to learn this from scratch because it makes me focus on that stuff. Like, what am I trying to do? And then go look up how to do it, which is fucking impossible, by the way. People really suck at explaining shit. Oh, amen there. But then you can always use it as examples of how you want to cut videos. Like, I'll take this point. By the way, I did notice uh, in that YouTube window I put up there where it showed, like, spikes and dips in attention span. Every Stedman clip, there's an, there's an attention spike that people start watching the video. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm keeping a mental note of that. So in the future, if I can do these, like, Simpson-esque family guy cutaways to something to make the point, 
peppering a few of them in wouldn't be the worst thing on earth. And that's a way that you can actually take feedback from your audience without asking them because people don't know what the fuck they want. So I'll show this quick clip and explain the examples of how all this stuff comes together. The theme of the video, red pilled coffee. I make a cup of coffee. It's like you came over, we come to chit chat about whatever. We just, and because a lot of like contractors used to come to my place and they just sit out the window, sit and stare out the window for a while there. I'm like, oh, okay. So maybe that's kind of an interesting thing. Plus it saves me on having to film like 20 minute sketches every goddamn week. It'll be make the coffee, stare out the window, watch the landscape and then get back to subject. So I got, starts from this time frame. You got your dissolve time lapse. And this is him talking about shifting gears and pissing contests. Him talking about the bet. <laughs> and then the next sentence where he talks about how Colty's a piece of shit and he's having a pissing contest. Mm -hmm. Or this here where he's talking about how he's got integrity. And then right here where he talks about how he, he reneged on this other bet and if people don't like it, fuck him. I love this scene, not because Stedman's an idiot, but because it's like my most favorite storytelling in this one. He's really good as a subject in these things. <laughs> so I obviously I move him over to the left frame because I want this real estate because I want this to be like a cartoon thought bubble. It's like a cartoon. And that's <laughs> ideally when you look at this, that's what you're thinking. Like Charlie Brown, blink, good grief. Again, here's the setup. Um, he talks about integrity and whatever the fuck and being a good dad or whatever the fuck he talks about. And then we got to shift gears. Basically, now that it's now that my life isn't as happy, I'm going to stop doing this and do something else. But he plays it like we got to shift gears, like your energy has changed. If you'll notice, there's a ton of jump cuts in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight jump cuts. But I don't think did you notice any of them? Uh, no, that's the thing. I didn't notice them. Yeah. So that two with that two frame cross dissolve really helps especially if it's just like a talkie like this you basically have them completely smooth and the music in the background it's like a consistent j cut so the music is almost combining the clips together yes so between the music and the dissolves there you almost picture it as a single unedited piece and again these are just cuts on action technically because he's talking about as he talks about this i put this up thought bubble talking bubble actions words however you want to interpret that it's a complete cut it should be jarring because you got a giant pop-up window there but because it's exactly what he's talking about here it's it's more seamless and i can add as many of them as they want to and then as he says things you'll see he he does a lot of those linguistic tricks like he repeats himself says the same thing twice like he probably followed that fucking pickup artist course about you know say the soft parts quiet and you know that shit you yeah know what I'm I do so know I, what you're talking about. And that's yeah. how I can tell he's doing it because he gives me great entry points to perfect edits. I almost want to work with this guy again. I really should talk <laughs> to him after he gets out of prison. <laughs> we should do a TV show like, uh, what's that one? Be Bosom Buddies? <laughs> he could be he could be bulky from uh, whatever fictional ass country they had it. Oh, God. And again, here's that. Now, these could have been video clips. And this is where that clipping, the cropping option I talked to you about, mm -hmm. really comes in handy because then you can frame this. And just on the important parts of each frame. And if you notice, the spacing isn't the same. They're not always like one second apart, three seconds apart. That's just a timing thing. The idea is if it was just every seven seconds, it would be a rhythm and you'd probably just start glazing over it. Yes. So I had to put random spacings between this because I want each one to be its own version of a smash cut. Grab your attention. What's he talking about? Oh, what's he talking about? Oh, and even if you only have, like in this case, maybe a second, which isn't enough time to read this whole thing, you're getting the gist of it, right? Oh, yeah. The issue is that they're gay. Well, that's kind of mean. Why do you say that about Colty? And then by the time you're there, you're on the next one. Oh, answer the, oh, so he's just harassing Colty. So you don't actually read the whole thing, but you're getting the message. By the way, this is good to know because this is a very manipulative technique and you're going to notice a lot of people use it. Like if you guys, there's a 4chan uh, green text about the John Oliver show. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this one, no. I know who. I know what 4chan is, but the, the particular 
topic, okay. I guess. I don't know. So there was some guy who's actually like a film editor, and he talks about how John Oliver is very good at being subversive. If you watch his show, it has the same theme. John Oliver makes a point, but he quickly jumps to like a joke so fast that your brain doesn't have time to register if that point makes sense or not, and instead goes to laughter. And he does that 10 to 20 times in a row over eight second intervals, and that's how he makes a segment. The idea that it was so clever was because you hear something, you get a dopamine response from the laugh track. You hear something, you get a dopamine response from the laugh track. So it's actually oh, wow. skipping the part of your brain that wants to judge whether something is true or not. Yeah, it bypasses what they call the critical filter, basically. Right, and it's instead you just get... programming. Exactly. Now, whether they're doing it that way on purpose or not, I don't know. Right. I do know that editors know this technique. Like, I'm using the technique here. Ideally, I keep that in mind when I do this, so I don't manipulate you guys into thinking, you know, you need to have a Lamborghini and six-figure salaries in Romania, or you're not even a real man. <laughs> <laughs> hypothetically speaking i'm not right, talking about right. anybody in specific here no of course not. but you know what i mean like that was my thought back in the day when a limitable man used to shit on this whole monetization of the manosphere thing which you know in his that was a branding pitch on his own side but in the same way that all these evil guys are stealing all your chicks and you just want to be a trad guy with the wife and as much as those guys are suffering by playing by the wrong rules why not do it here too like if i'm giving you a real message that's got real value that i think a guy would do better having known than not known. Why not use those same manipulative tricks other people use? Just put it, you know, use it for good. And I know that sounds a little bit fucking self-masturbatory, but fuck it. No, it's why not? You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, actually, you know what's good too? This is a great reason for J cuts. So here, um, how does he say it? I got to hear the text. I'll say it as he says it. All right, so he says, um, yeah, I gave up those contracts after leak. Uh, if people don't like me, they're going to get pissed off at me. I don't care if they get pissed off at me. But that's the point. The, edit, the film goes away, and he just kind of, I don't care if they're pissed off at me. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that, now this is technically a J cut slash smash cut, because it's cutting to black. Very jarring. But because the audio keeps playing, that's how it firms like a J cut. And the point of this is because... Your brain has like a two, 20 millisecond interval where it has to refocus on things that have changed. You're actually turning off your, your slow thinking and back on your fast thinking when you hear, yeah, I don't care if they get pissed off at me. And so that out of all of this, you're actually going to have more treat with more importance. This one little line in a black screen here than all of this shit. So there's all like, I could have just done a zoom in when he said this, I could have done yeah. a zoom out for bigger picture. In this case, I chose a J cut slash smash cut. But you see what I mean there? Like you combine these things. It's almost like you're creating your own musical language. That's subtextual. It's inside of the thing. And people are listening to this and they don't even know what's happening. They just know they're watching this. They feel good. It looks good. But in the end of the day, they're going to take from this. He's talking about integrity. He's not being integrity. And right here, he admits he kind of knows on a level he's not being, you know, acting with any integrity. Just fuck him. I don't like him. Now, I didn't mention that message specifically anywhere in the video. No. Nope. Nowhere in here do I say talk about incongruence at all. But I keep throwing these examples in there. And the idea being, by watching this video and just by the process of editing, I'm giving you an entire second lesson, I guess. And I fucking love this shit. This is why I had so much fun on this one. <laughs> It was almost like filming two videos at once. I felt super quick. I do it a few times. Same thing here. Same uh, process yeah. I where he talks about when you brought Trump in. Yeah. I don't think he betrayed me. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Everyone is zoomed in more and slower. Emphasis, emphasis, emphasis. Repeating things at the same time, like three times. That's like a Trump thing. Repeat it three times. Zoom in, slow it down. And then one more. I'm not feeling it. Same thing there. This one's like a cut on action with a J cut. Same effect with a completely different style of edits. And that's, I love this too, because then you can show, I could basically say the same thing seven different ways. It's like using synonyms. I don't know, I love that shit. And then here you go from that dissolve. 
again, it's a smash cut. Completely different scene. Okay, we're past that. Moving on to the next thing. And that's the purpose here of this smash cut. I try to soften it a bit by making it go black. But that's the point there. This has nothing to do with this. Right. But they're connected because it's the same narrative. Does that make sense? It does to me, yes. It actually yeah. does. Now, keep in mind, this is literally the same thing you're doing where you record your thing in one take, read it off a script and do it, right? Right. But all you have to do is make a couple changes to how it visually represents itself and you can completely change the subtext behind it. Throw on, what if I want to throw this on here again, it's just like, yeah, relax, just pay attention, listen, do your thing, go make a coffee, go sit in the other room. And this kind of lets you know, like this stuff is important. Pay attention. Don't worry about paying attention to it. Just kind of passively pick it up. Then you make these changes when you want. Okay. Now pay attention. This part's important. All right. Now we're just talking again, whatever. This part's important, but you see what I mean? It creates spike peaks and valleys because people don't have a consistent attention span. So what you want to do is you want to spike interest in various places. I'm sure you guys have seen that whole hero's journey, like the rising action, falling action, the climax, and then the epilogue. And it's like higher and then lower on the emotion scale or whatever. Yes. Uh huh. I find if you can get a good rhythm, you can do that with your videos too. You do that. Yes, you have a really great one you're going to do. I'm going to go back to talking now because I don't think there's much more to show unless there's specific stuff you want to see. But I think I, um, I think got that. What the fuck video was it? There was a specific one I'm thinking of. It was something. I think it's when you first started calling people dipshits because you wanted to bring dipshit back. Oh. <laughs> but you actually do the equivalent of like a J cut zoom in thing there where you say you're saying a point, you're saying a point, and then all of a sudden your music cuts out. But I don't think you did it on purpose. I think it was just a happy coincidence. The music stops. You say your final sentence of the point you were trying to make. And the camera is like in on your face. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, that was fucking sweet. Because it like makes you focus. <laughs> but you had like some goofy disco music. So it kind of yeah. added the levity to it as well. <laughs> it's like, this is important, but don't take it too autistically. Okay. And that was kind of like the subtext I got from it. And that's why I found it to be like a very clever video. But yeah, I love this fucking shit. Ah, uh, so uh, do I uh oh i'll talk to you now about this is the fun stuff so color co color correction okay this is the part i find the most fun where's my clips by the way clips and nodes good to keep in mind nodes are for when you want to do masking and you're going to have these things here input output clips something that's good to do is duplicate your clip how does this work again um was it control D then? Nope. Damn it. I want to add a second node. Oh, Isn't it control node? Yeah, there you go. You want to do this because it's it for like just one offs. Who cares? But if you're doing like this off a template and you want to use this for later, always make a second clips. The edits you make are on this one and you still have your original if you ever want to go back to it. Now, if I want to use just for an example, um, this one's going to have different color grading than this one, and I'm going to fade between them. You want to make alpha output, and you want to drag the alpha to this. What that's going to do is it's going to make whatever changes you make to this one, as far as like the uh, the the masking, it's going to actually output them as well. Otherwise, you won't. And then Control Shift H, that shows you the mask. So this is showing you everything that's going to be in frame and everything that's not going to be in frame. You go to this option here, or this one. This one will do color changes, so I can select a color. There we go. Sorry, Shift H, not Control Shift H. And then if I click and drag across the image, it'll show the parts that I want to be in frame. So if I were to do this one and put it back into the thing, it's basically changing our mask. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but that's just an example. Um, Back to nodes. Give me my nodes, you son of a bitch. One thing you can do is just do shapes. This is probably going to be a lot easier for you. Oh, for crying out loud. This one's just a simple box. 
there's a couple times when I use this in my videos. There was one where I pick up a blanket off my chair and then, you know, it whips around the camera, but then the, the scene transition happens along with the blanket. This is how you would do an effect like that. So at the start of the frame, let's say I want to have this second color correction go. Go ahead. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Over half a second. I want it to... Oh yeah, hit the keyframes or it'll never save. I'll do a full second. Over the full second, I want it to completely overtake this other frame. Now, what I want for this frame is color correction. So like I said, for the masks, if you want to do a qualifier, that's if you want to do a specific color. That's actually nice if you want to like change the colors of roses from red to purple and shit like that. Okay. The shape one is easy if you just want to make like broad masks. Again, squares, circles, lines. You can use a pen to make your own shapes. You can... It's... Ultimately, whatever you want to make it for a mask. And then you go into this one. If you want to do color changes, oops, not that one. Which one? There we go. The wheels. The color wheels are your friend. The easy way to think of this, because like, what the fuck is lift, gamma, gain, and offset? This is the highlights. This is the midtones. Or no, gamma is the, gamma is the shadows. Gain is the midtones. And lift is the highlights. So let's say for this second image that I'm contraposting onto it, I want to make it. Uh, let's play around with this. Yeah, we'll make the shadows green. The shadows green. We're going to reduce the red and the blue in them. We're going to make the foreground more red and blue and purple. And you'll end up with like this very weird color phase, right? Ideally, what should happen then is as you're doing the edit... Oh, I need to have a second one in here. I'm butchering the shit out of this clip. <laughs> Fuck it. Just remember not to save, or if you've got it on autosave, oops. <laughs> oh, yeah, they have that kind of thing, but that's different. Come on. By the way, hold down the middle mouse. It makes it much easier to scroll. Like, just hold down the middle mouse and go to where you want. Where was I? I think it was about here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we are. Uh, we're going to put this one back to normal. Because we don't actually want... And I'm showing the effect you're going to be able to get on this one. It's going to be very powerful. Get rid of this. Where's my nodes? Just delete that. And then what should happen is, oh, did I delete that one? I think you did. All right, that's fine. We'll just do it quickly again. Add a serial node. Serial nodes and parallel nodes, do you want it to happen after or do you want to happen concurrently with? That's the best way to describe it. There's a but You could probably do this as a parallel node too and just make the changes in the bottom one while the top one goes. This is how I do my workflow. You do how you do. So back to what we did before. Uh, Shift H. So we can see where the edits happen. We're going to start with it here. And then... Right, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's a full second to have it go over here. Hey, why is it not giving me a goddamn... There we go. So over the full second, it goes from completely hidden to completely visible, right? Okay. Uh, color change. Oops. Color change. We wanted to make green shadows. Or I did it the other way now. Now it's like purple shadows and green highlight or green mids and make the red highlights. Whatever. It's whatever goofy effect you want to do. You can play around a lot with this. Then, after you put it in, that's how you get your masking effect. So you can do all kinds of shit with that. In this case, maybe it's like, 
changing a color filter. Maybe it's you want to add a second shot in there. Like I could put that shot technically over here if I really wanted to. But yeah, it's all kinds of neat stuff you can do on that one. That's, I use this, I've used this one, uh, one of my old vlogs where I'm in my elevator and then the elevator opens and it's a completely different shot. Mm -hmm. That's my process of doing it to that. Okay. That would be like where the elevator opens and the second yeah, shot is the there. Door. Yeah. Oh, I know what I missed. The reason why that's not looking like that is because I forgot to add the alpha. That's what happens when you don't add the alpha, by the way. Now when I do it. Ah uh ha -huh. Yeah. So like I said, you could easily just go and do a cross dissolve or an edge wipe here on this one with this one as its own, but you can also do it this way. The difference is this way you have more control. So I could have had this follow as I put the book down, like underneath the book. You know what I mean? Any kind of shit. Slipping a blanket around, making your own fancy wipes. That's some special effect. But I'll skip past this and I'll show you the part that you were wanting to see. That uh, text special effect I got, right? Yeah. All right. Where did I put that? Relationship breakdown. Don't save. While you're looking for that, I know Red Crusader was asking about uh, color grading and all that. Not only are we talking about it in special effects, one of oh, the just things. Oh, cleaning it up. Well, yeah, because I know I use on occasion, especially in some of my more recent videos, like the last few, the one that's coming out here on Tuesday, mm -hmm. I use LUTs, which oh, then because I've got about it, LUTs. Yeah, they're they're fun. Uh, they a lot of times they will you know, a lot of people will use them for white balance and whatnot, depending on your type of camera. Like I know you shoot a lot of your stuff. Uh, with an actual bona fide camera, does it have a detachable lens or no? Yeah, they all do. I have a few okay. cameras. I have a, a Mazoke, okay. which is like a, uh, it's a Sony a 700 lens, but it's literally just a dumb camera. Like I actually have to physically move the iris and shit open as well as right. my Fuji film, which is more robust. So I have to do major post color correction with the Mazoki because it has no computing inside of it whatsoever. Right. Where when I shoot my videos, obviously, which are primarily talking heads, I'm using the uh, Logitech uh, 920C is what I'm using. The, the camera that I'm talking with you right now is the Logitech. It's just a webcam. Yeah. And so it kind of does a lot of its own color correction, I guess you could say. And uh, so <laughs> I, hate, using... I hate my 1080 for that. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. But I've noticed using a couple different LUTs, trying them out, it obviously gives different colors. Uh, it gives a different mood even. Oh, yeah. It's a huge effect. Actually, good. We can do that one quickly here. Um, is it yeah, because I found a LUT that was for uh, Game of Thrones. That it's the, the way they do their, when they were doing that video, that series on HBO. And, and it kind of gives that same grainy, washed out, kind of feel oh the alexa that, camera yeah yeah that's the avengers camera they have those uh it's called alexa is the series of cameras the avengers all used them and they actually have like a thing where they make it work that way mm -hmm. um and that's just about your now what i'm looking for here is the fucking uh and that's where you talk about lots light something tables look yeah. up tables that's the one yeah look up tables that's it which is just a way of, when you do your color correction on here, a LUT is a way of saving it and use yep. it later. But what I'm yep. looking for right now is the histogram. Oh, there it is. Easy way to do color correction is when you have your wheels open now. I'll just switch this back to bars. So if you notice here, my color information, reds in the mids are a lot higher than the, everything else. In the highlights, things are a bit more close together. Obviously, it's because this is here. That's why these mids are going to have higher reds. But... What you can do is take the wheel here, which moves them all the same. If I wanted to... So, for example, anything past this line is most likely going to be washed out. Yeah. So if I want to bring it down, if I want my whites not to be white, but almost more of a gray, you bring down your gain offset. Your gamma, if you notice there, it's changing the multiplication, so it's just compressing. Offset, again, 
you see how that effect changes your histogram. Right. Here. And you can also, I do know this much. I don't really do a lot of color grading on my stuff, but I have learned for the guys in the chat primarily. Not only can you move things like what Ryan's doing right now, where you're he's kind of moving all the whole spectrum, if you will, all the colors and the shadows and the highlights. He's doing everything simultaneously. Yeah, you actually for- can, yeah, you can go in and move like just the highlights. If you've got something that uh, maybe it's blowing out because of your lighting or something, you can go in and adjust the highlights, but leave your shadows and your colors, basically your RGB itself. You can leave them without them being touched. Yep. You you can you can get very specific with DaVinci, where you can boost up your shadows, for instance, and leave your highlights and everything else uh, the way you know at a proper level. I guess you'd say where if yeah. you boost one thing and and it blows out like what ryan was showing earlier you can make it so that the highlights don't blow out but you want to bolster or boost your color or boost your shadows you can do that as long as there's information in the image you can do it i shall here i'll use an example what you can do like this perfect thing it's just a steel stove i'm going to turn it on let's say uh, let's move it forward a bit so i can see my hand in there too so we see this the color information it's actually pretty good already because i've already done color correction on it before but if I want to get, I mean, that'll flatten it to zero, obviously. Where am I looking for? I think it's gamma. Oh, no, it's a lift. So I want to bring it out. I don't want any blacks on this. I want it to be, you know, nice and gray, very smooth, very soft. Um, I also want, at this part, there's too much red in this image. I want this to be a steely color because everything I'm filming is in blues and greens. Yeah, you want a you cool get, look. Yeah, you can get super stylish with this too, where I can make it almost like super natural. So in this case, I want to bring down the reds. There, so they're about even with the greens. I'll probably bring up the blues a little bit. And there that gives go. a cooler steel look to it. Yep. I tried playing around at first where I did like red pill, blue pill shit with that, but it just looked kind of weird because sometimes blue looks really nice and I didn't want to do it, but I don't want it people to get the idea that anytime the color correction is blue, that I'm talking about being a cuck. (laughs) That's a fair point. That's a fair point. But yeah, so you can go as far as like to wash things out if you want to. Drop down just a little bit of the reds from it. And you'll see from the histogram how it has an effect. Mm -hmm. In this case, just get rid of the darks. Shift down the lights. You can get a much warmer picture. And then once you're done with that, you... Oh, I don't know if you know this shortcut. So let's say you have 17 shots that are all different variations of this, and you want this exact thing to go to the next one. Click on the image you... across all the shots. Well, there's another way you can do it, too. If you just click on this one, I want to borrow this color collection, you middle click on it. Oh. Yeah, just middle click, and it'll borrow the color correction from every from the other shot you have. And you can do that if you want to, if you want to play with four or five different ones on four or well, five different shots. Well, that one definitely the one you like. speeds everything up. Yeah, because the one yeah. you're talking about is just slip, collect, shift, and collect. But for yep. me, in this case, I got all these fucking little effects, and it just does them linearly here, and it's a pain in the ass for me to click, so that's the way I do it. But, I mean, like I said, no, there's eight ways sense. to do everything. Right. I've always been of the, I guess the way I'm, I'm learning and trying to operate is maximal results with minimal effort. You know, I want to make my, I want to, I don't want to take 10 hours to do a a five minute video. I want to do a five minute video in 15 minutes type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Oh, so one thing you could do too, and this is good because you're using OBS to stream your stuff, right? Yes. Okay. OBS actually can works with LUTs, but they work with PNG file LUTs. Yep. So in this case, I get the color. You uh, take a screenshot, save it of you shouting into the camera, whamming a shit or whatever. (laughs) You got the color correction exactly how you want it. That's exactly how I want my face to look. Mm -hmm. You right click on it. You generate a 3D LUT. Save it wherever. Then then you go in and load it into OBS, huh? Well, you can't because it saves it as a a 3D cube LUT. Okay. You can't use that. So there's a program you have to download. Where the hell was it? My LUT program. And it actually converts it from a LUT to a PNG. Freestar, Java. God damn, I'm trying to find the name of the goddamn program. I do it so very rarely because I just set it up. Anyways, you go into that program, you convert it to a PNG, and then you go into OBS. Now i got to switch this to OBS is on the goddamn thing here. 
Uh, when you're in your OBS, you see your scenes. You go to where your uh, your sources. Go to where your camera is. You right click it. You go to filters, and you'll see a window. I guess I could put this. No. Where's the fucking? Give me my goddamn. Instead of DaVinci, let's do OBS. Oh, does OBS not let you stream OBS? <laughs> uh, I don't, you sons I don't of bitches. Know. No, it's fine. Yeah. I'll just do... Can I do a screen cap? Display capture. This is what I should have been doing at the start, by the way. Okay, there um, you go. Not that screen, though. <laughs> there no, you go. <laughs> that screen. There. Moving it over here. Then once you get them into the PNG, you add them in here, and you can actually add your own LUT. So in this case, this is my general LUT. I got a bunch of them in here. Mm -hmm. The one I like... Actually, you know what? I'm going to save that because I don't want to lose this one because I actually kind of like it. Let's add another LUT. Apply LUT. If you notice, this is zero color correction on my... This is just how the lights are set up in here. I want to add a LUT. Um... Where did I put the fucking LUTs? All right, whatever. Let's use these ones. Teal horns, teal lows, orange highs. That's when you went into the thing there. You changed the color so it's like that. You can physically add your own LUTs in here, which I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. Oh, Black yeah. And white. Yep. The sliders. I like this option. If you're doing your own stuff and you're working, especially if you're working with, like you said, just simple webcams, it's often good to have a collection of LUTs around there to collect it. Oh, there we go. Actually, you know what? I bet you anything I put it in raw? No. I'm going to take this off just in case I accidentally have, like, nudies of the wife on here. I don't want that fucking up your stream. <laughs> so what they always know from, like, a graphic design or, like, from a computer perspective for forensics, you can tell if it's a guy's computer if there's nudes on there somewhere. Oh, there we go. So here's my LUT collection. But the ones you're probably going to like, there's film and webcam presets. The webcams I don't like. You can actually download a lot of these ones. You just search for like LUT packages. Oh yeah, most of them you can get for free. Yeah, the ones I really like is where you can replicate the style of a specific camera. Uh, Kodak Kodachrome 800 I think is like the standard. And if you'll notice what it does, it's not working because it's this camera, but if you're using a webcam, it'll increase the shadows and decrease the contrast so you actually can take your webcam and give it more of a film camera look to it which is kind of neat i like it yeah but that's for that's other people that all things they can do same as your color correction you got the same options there whatever anyways we can close that off um i think that was it oh yeah so how you can export your luts just go through there and that's good stuff to know the last oh, one was the really... special effects text i love this shit. all right oops i gotta go to the right section this is the effect I'm talking about. It has like a whoosh sound and it's like mm -hmm. feature presentation. Total 70s, early 80s type of shit is what I think of when I see that. It totally is. It I literally me. stole it from like a 1982 Super Channel like vignette. <laughs> I was like, I like that look. <laughs> uh huh. So for that one, you go into your fair light. And this is where your special effects come in. This is fucking. Oh, you mean fusion? Or fusion, thank you. Yeah. Oh, this fucking piece of shit. All right. Pain in the ass to work with. So the options I'd start off with is uh, 3D text. I think there's a keyboard for this. I want to say it's like shift control space or shift. Yeah, control space. Control space. So you can type in the options you want because it's a pain in the ass to find them the old fashioned way here. Yeah, it's a search feature you're doing with control space. That one is your yeah. friend. So in this case, 3D text, which is that text plux option that you did before. Mm hmm. So in this case, relationship breakdown, Helvetica new, 75, bold outline. That's the type where it's like literally an outline. I could do it just as easily with, you know, a condensed or thin italics. Doesn't really matter. You have to re-render this stuff because it actually renders. Merge 3D takes 3D text and it makes it into a video. It's an effect you kind of need in there. Otherwise, it's just going to be 3D stuff, That, but it's not going to render properly. It's... I'm sure there's a reason why you want to do that. Maybe you just want to have like it do motion and then you mm -hmm. have a camera follow it without having it render. I don't fucking know though. The render then is how you turn it into actual frames. And this is the part you have to play around with. So when you actually do your video, this 
will run once and then create your keyframes. You have to do it again if you change stuff in between here. Trails is the option I do for that. The idea for options, um, keep your free pre-roll frames at zero. The idea there is it's... So if you do... Where did I put it? Pre-roll frames at like, you know, 60, for example. As I go through this... See how many... It does like a hundred different frames and it mm -hmm. slowly goes from a hundred to zero on that. I don't want that. I like having just like three. I'm probably gonna have to do this again now, but because see, it keeps re-rendering it every time. So I kind of need to, there we go. So now it only does three frames, but that's the problem is it still goes past. So I actually fiddle with the gain. So for me, what I do is I push this off and change the gain. It's kind of hard to explain, but the gain is like how strong an effect you want. And the pre-roll frames is like a multiplier of gain. Mm -hmm. So for me, I want very, very subtle. So I have like no pre-roll frames and very low gain. And that's where yeah, you get like very is. small. Yep. Ah, oh, nice. Now it's going to be slower in this, which is fine. You can set up these options here. This is the one I like if you want to make motion. Rotate, X offset, and Y offset. So you could have this just as easily do that scene from, uh, was it uh, Chinese Connection at the end where Bruce Lee's doing the big fucking wave in his hands shit? You know, let me do this on camera here before I'm not waving my hands like an idiot. Remember that at the end of it where he's kind of doing this and yeah. has that tracer effect? <laughs> you could do that here. Uh, display capture. With just the rotate. Now, if you notice, there's that keyframe option there. So you could literally have it. So when I want to do this... Um, Let's say, I don't know, the first 12 frames, I want it to rotate that way. Second 12 frames, I want it to rotate that way. This is going to look like ass, by the way, but whatever. It makes the point. It's the example, yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That's, yeah. Now, this doesn't have to be text either. I did it with 3D text, but you could technically have a frame of video on this one. In this yes. case, the Bruce Lee swinging his arms. Yep. So then you add your trails. You have to add the trails after the render because you need this to be actual keyframe pictures first before you can add trails to it. Uh, another example you can do for that is if you make it blur more. There we go. The blur size. You can do that Richard Donner... Remember the beginning of the Superman films where it's like the text is flying with a cape on kind of thing? Yeah, uh-huh. Add some blur to that. You can do the Superman blur. Just like the <laughs> Richard Donner Superman ones. Oh, nice. And then media out. This is the equivalent of that little green box in your color correction. And then they're all happening in serial. I want them to happen in order. Sometimes there's effects maybe you want to add. I don't know. Fuck uh, optical flow. I don't even know what half these ones are. Maybe just film grain, but film grain happens in parallel. I want the film grain to happen as it renders. So don't render the film grain, but just add film grain. I would actually add it. Uh, where the fuck did I put it? Film grain. You add that as a... Oops. And that one's in serial. So the film grain and the render happens at once. Again, this stuff's powerful. I almost never need to use it unless you want to do some serious special effects. Again, other than this relationship breakdown ticker, and in the episode where I was making a book, if you'll notice as I pan on the map, you'll start seeing names of the countries I've been to kind of pop up and follow along with the map. Those are trackers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the trackers, yeah. Yeah, that's the other one I like using. I think it's called a planar tracker. It is. Yep. Planar tracker, yep. This is the, these are the two I found to be the most useful. Trails, Planar Tracker, Text 3D. The Planar Tracker, that's like a whole other thing, and I'm not good enough with it yet to want to walk somebody through it, but the idea oh, no. there yeah. Yeah, <laughs> is you want to make a hybrid point area tracker, go onto your, you know, I should probably actually have a film with something on it. Here. Oh, for fuck's sakes. It's that stupid film grain. Yep. That's going my three hundred dollar workaround. <laughs> <laughs> Just take a film grain and overlay it. So if yep. I wanted to make a planar tracker here, uh, the tracker I would have it track. I could pick a point, like maybe here. Set. 
and I know I'm screwing this up. I want it to be a hybrid point area. Technically, what you want to do is you want to actually make this into like a series, like a frame, so it can follow the colors. Uh, translation. Oh yeah, the options here, translation, rotation, scale, perspective. This is if you want to have something move back and forward and basically treat the film as if it's in 3D space, which I think is a little overkill unless you really want to do some like Hollywood level shit. And you could, you could do some Avengers level fucking edits on that if you had put like a 3D monkey on your shoulder and have it follow you around like you're playing Cool World. Translation is the one I like. It just goes left to right, up and down. It just basically wants to track it to that point. And in this case, I wanted to track red because I know there's a lot of red information here that it can easily follow. Mm-hmm. Oh. Inverted palette polygon. Oh. Yeah. Set. Oh. Option stabilize here, too. This is good, guys, if you ever have shaky cameras. Like, remember... Oh, what the fuck's that movie? The Sherlock Holmes ones where he's running away from that camp and they're they're hitting him with artillery as they're running through the forest. Mm -hmm. And they have that weird effect where the camera is like steady on his face while the whole background is shaky. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Stabilize is like an exaggerated version of that. Yep. So if you have, yeah, you basically zoom in on this thing so you have extra film data to work with and then you could stabilize a thing in the middle even if you have a shaky camera. So that's what's that's good to know. But if you, I mean, you're not filming you running in the woods with a fucking GoPro, it's probably not going to matter. Well, and for the guys in the chat and for anyone on the replay too, if they're not, if they haven't seen the Sherlock Holmes, I just, I happen to have another good example is, uh, that I've seen in more recent time is a lot of like Nike's commercials where the people are running and, it's focusing right on their face. So like the, basically the background as their steps are thumping basically as, as they're doing that instead of their whole body going up and down, it's basically like the backgrounds going up and down, but their face is rock solid right in the center of the frame. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah Anyways, um, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I still yeah. have to look up the fucking tutorials to get it myself, but I know the gist of it is you'd make a square focus on here. So what it's going to do is going to follow this specific shape. And then it'll track it. And if you put, I don't know, text on there afterwards. You'd have to actually add a text note on top of that tracker. Then it'll follow your movement. Yeah, exactly. That's how you can get text to follow shit. So it's kind of a neat thing you can do. But again, it's it's one of those things. I always have to open up the tutorial and go through it as I go through it. Because I haven't, I don't do it enough where I've memorized it yet. Yeah. Unfortunately, the stupid text and the tracer effects, I got that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I love. Like this thing, I guess I'll go off of here. You can literally, if you took footage from the fucking Avengers, you could make the Avengers on this software if you really oh, wanted to. Absolutely. You had enough time. That's that's one of the things that when I when we first it's kind of funny because we're kind of going uh, full circle now. Hmm. When I first opened this up and we were talking about like Filmora versus Da Vinci. Uh, da Vinci, obviously, from what you've showed us, uh, what I know about it from my playing with it, it is you can get very granular with it. And there, there have been films, full feature length motion pictures that have been put together and edited and, and color graded and special affected and all that in Da Vinci. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. This da Vinci is, this is, is set up to tool. make movies. Yeah, it is set up to make movies. And so if that's your goal is, hey, I want to, you know, whether you're doing it on YouTube or you actually want to be an aspiring filmmaker and make a film, pick up a copy of Da Vinci. The, the, there's the free version, which there's no limitations, no watermarks, no nothing. That's what I use. I, that's what Ryan's using. And especially for like making YouTube videos and whatnot, it's going to do everything you're going to ever need it to do plus some you would never need to get the studio version which is three hundred dollars oh okay. yeah like i said film green the option inside of the open effects here is the only option i don't use that i want to use that i have to pay for right lens flare i think is another one yeah that's another one that uh yeah, that is. is in the studio version yep see and for me like i was telling you off camera especially with uh the the 17 the latest version of da vinci the there's a thing called smart mask mm -hmm. and it's only available in the studio version but it's where you can take a piece of footage 
And you, I think you have to do it in the, the color page, I think. I don't know where it's done exactly. I, I forget when I saw it. But literally, the guy went to whatever tab he needed to go to. He turned on the smart mask, and then he just drew a line. Like, he just drew a little slash on his piece of footage. Oh. And, and it was, like, on him, basically. And it automatically created a mask that fit around him as he's walking, talking, doing whatever. And if you invert that, you can change the background. It's basically like doing a green screen without having to have an actual green screen. Oh, yeah, the green oh. screen stuff. I guess I could go over that, too. I just found a new option for JPEG damage, so I can make my video look like a shitty JPEG. Oh, yeah? Well, here, let me put you back on full. That's funny. I don't know, it's just JPEG filter. By the way, if you want to change this stuff when you do the open effects, always open open effects in your effects library. That's where the funcy stuff is. Go to the open effects tab. That's what then the video looks like. You can just add JPEG quality crap to it. <laughs> oh, yep. Legend of Zelda. Look at that. You can make it look as pixelated as like a yep. mosaic. Yep. Wasn't that neat? Hey, Red Crusader, just so you know, um, it takes up in hard drive space. DaVinci's about two and a half gigs just to store it. Okay. The, even the... Uh, the executable or whatever the, the the actual file that installs it it's like two and a half gigs and it can be a memory hog the more layers you have like where ryan's got text on top of video on top of video on top of text on top of all these things the more stuff you have the more it's going to bog down your computer because even mine and it's mine's a fairly decent machine Okay, so you still have the same problems that 16 has then. I don't, yep. that's why I switched back to 15 because it has none of those problems. Whatever change they made to the rendering engine, yep. it and happened in 16. I believe that. Okay, so if you have an older machine, um, you might want to look for a, an older version like 15 that Ryan's running of DaVinci. Or you may want to either upgrade your machine where you've got a better graphic card, better memory, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, depends on what you want to do. I know that some of the stuff that I do in DaVinci, oh. it will slow my machine to a crawl, but I can do almost the exact same identical thing in Filmora, and Filmora has no problems. It, it, it just renders, everything works out fine. I, it's not slowing to a crawl when I'm trying to do edits. It's, that's one of the downfalls of DaVinci from what I've seen. And so that's where I still keep Filmora and I still use it as well. Uh, fair enough. I just realized too, tilt shift blur. That's yeah. an option I would pay for. Okay. Uh, do you know those ones where it makes like a top down three quarter view of the cityscape, make it look like it's a little model, like Game yeah. of Thrones intro. Yeah. Yeah. That's what tilt shifting is, but film damage works, which is awesome. This is that grindhouse effect. Look at that. I love that shit. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyways, whatever. I'm fucking around on that one. No, that's good. But it's good. Like I said, I haven't shown you like I use maybe 5% of what this thing can do. Oh, maybe same here. Maybe. Yeah. So guys that are watching when I, I know that people were asking early on, you know, is there a free version? Is there a paid yep. version? And I mentioned the paid and everyone's like, fuck that. And I get it. But it's like unless you're going to actually go into making motion pictures. You know, you're going to make something you, you want to remake the Avengers or you want to remake Star Wars or you want to remake 1917. Then, yeah, you're going to need the studio version to do that kind of stuff. But for your basic stuff, all the things we do, this Da Vinci will do it and way more than you'll probably ever need. So honestly, you probably would never have to buy it. So okay, I'll hook him up. I sorry about that. The girl's going You're out good. for a walk, and so I gotta give the dog his pill when we're done here. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Like I said, two options maybe or something I would pay for. I think it's only three hundred bucks too, so it's not the worst. But yeah, the free yeah, version and it's is ninety nine percent done. of what you need. Yep. It, absolutely. The one, I will admit though, the one thing I'm woefully inadequate on is the audio effects. Like I know ah, the effects, but I'm so oh. used to Audacity that I just haven't found the oh. need to switch over yet. Okay. We're going to shift topics just briefly here, Ryan, because now yeah. I'm going to, I get to teach you something. Nice. Okay. You've taught me all kinds of things and trust me, I'm going to be rewatching this over and over and over, but now I, I'm going to teach you. Okay. Let's do it. Since I know audio stuff a little bit because audio is kind of my thing. So I started out with audacity because mm -hmm. it's free and it's very powerful. 
Yep. And and it's it's decent. But Look, I did the audiobook with Audacity, fun fact. There you go. See? And I, and it's funny you say that because I'm thinking, okay, it took you how many hours to do your audiobook? Oh, uh, over a hundred. But okay. most of that was the uh, was the editing mm -hmm. and like the pop, like getting rid of the breathing was like the biggest slog of the whole thing. Okay. You don't know how many times you breathe in and out. Oh, I, I get it, camera. but I, I'm going to piss you off right now, Ryan. Oh, you're going to talk about the breathing you... filter that auto does it, aren't you? No, 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 oh. no. I'm not even going to talk about filters. Okay? okay. This isn't about filters, even though there is things that, yeah, we can bring that into the equation too. Mm -hmm. The thing is though, it took you over a hundred hours. You probably would have reduced it to about 50 if you'd have used Reaper because really? you have more control over the tracks themselves, kind of like you do in Da Vinci. It's oh. the same kind of setup because I started with Audacity. In fact, my very first live stream that I did with uh, RP Pragmatic, uh, mm -hmm. Jimmy is his name. I did that in Audacity and I, I, I still leave it up uh, and it's, it was what I needed to do, but he asked me, can you do something to mask my voice? Because there are people that if they hear it, they're going to know it's me. And I don't, okay, I, don't I cast with Carl. That. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But he didn't have the capability or the knowledge to do it on his end. Like Carl does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had to do it on the post-production end and it took me hours because one, my audio level sucked balls there. My audio was way quiet compared to his. Uh, and then to go through every section that he talked and put on the voice changing, the voice alteration, it right. probably took me like 15 hours over and over to do everything to try and make it as good as I could get it. And I'm looking at it now going, man, if I'd have had Reaper at that time, I could have done it in an hour. Hmm. I could have done it that quickly because. You All right, you got me more. peaked, you son of a bitch. <laughs> well, you should check it out just for the fact that. Um, with with Reaper, they, they that one it's a trial. I think it's a seven day or a thirty day trial, so you can download it and play with it. Um, it's very similar to Da Vinci. You're gonna you're gonna feel at home in a lot of cases, but it's like sixty dollars, I think. And according to them, it's only for whatever version. Like they're on six right now. Oh, and so there's no upgrades in the uh, in the cost you get the upgrades, but when they finally like revamp the whole thing, I think you have to pay again, I think, uh. but they've been on six forever and they're, they constantly update it. But even in, in, uh, Da Vinci in resolve mm -hmm. in the, in the Fairlight page, a lot of the same stuff you can do in Reaper, you can do in Da Vinci. You can do voice compression where the music automatic, it's called audio ducking. Oh yeah, ducking Where, compression. I know all the yeah. terms. I just don't know the soft. I just don't know how to use it in DaVinci. Okay, we're gonna have to do another episode if you want, or privately. I can show you how to do audio ducking. That's easy. And so, and then that way you can have background music wherever you want it, whenever. And if you have your dramatic pause or whatever, the music pops back up a bit. All oh, that. so you do use your use it automatically then? Because for me, I just do that same keyframe that I do for editing. Click the keyframe, yeah. move ahead five frames, and then duck the volume from like you can do that but this does the it does it all automatically all right you, now you, it's literally a set it and forget it reaper will do it reaper will do it to the granular level but even da vinci will do it da vinci in the fairlight page will do it there is effects for compression and eq and all of that to get your sound however you want it and then once you've kind of set it you can save the presets so you don't have to do it down the road if you know you have your mic and you have your audio levels automatically already set. Like I know I do an OBS. Most of that, I it's the template thing. I've already set it where I can just go in and besides a little minor tweaks with the audio, boom, yeah, it's the big done. Work's done. Yep. So where's that, the ducking? The in which one? In I'm right here in the uh, Fairlight tab right now. Okay, so you have to go. Actually, here, I'll open the thing so we can watch it as I do okay. it. Okay. All right. So let me. I'm gonna put you back on full screen. Okay, so you go over to the side to the right where your mixing your mixer is. Down lower. Yeah, there you go. You got your mixer up. Okay, so one of the first things is let's say you've got some background music. I don't know if you do which one it is. Uh, which, A3. Which channel? 
Okay, so A3 is where you're going to want to put your compressor. So you're going to go over to A3, go down to the little square, that, yeah, right up, 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 right there. Right click that guy or even double click on it. Okay, what do we got here? What's this? It's just panning showing. options. Panning, don't want panning. You can turn that off. Well, you can oh, leave do I just it add on. a compressor to it then? Yes, you're going to add a compressor. Option. What do they call it in this one? Multi-band compressor, right? There you go. Yep. Add that into that little square thing. Oh, you add it into the whole channel. Okay. Right. Yeah, because this is on the channel level. I mean, you can do it on the clip level as well. No, the that's channel would be much better. That's why Fairlight. Fairlight's where we get into channel work. Okay. All right. Now, go over to your audio that's you talking you can close the pan out. Okay. So when you click into that one, um, I'm just thinking, God, I'm going to, I might have to pull Da Vinci up here. Let me, let me pull Da Vinci up on my end. So sorry guys, we're going to be playing retard here for a minute. Yeah. By the way, I should have been paying way more attention to you guys in chat. I know I haven't been, I'm sure you said some very cool shit and I will read it when I get a second here during the loading screen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the the DAW effect and the yeah, you're talking about that soundboard shit. I'm not gonna lie, I I know why people do it. I'm not a fan mm -hmm. of it. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up my DaVinci. It's taking a second here to load. Your computer might actually be faster than mine. I don't know. Mine's two years old, so okay. Yeah, mine I just got uh, during co beginning of COVID. Oh, so yeah, you 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 probably have a much better, faster computer than I do. Yeah, no All big right. deal. Just a humble brag. Yeah, no, no problem there. It's it. I'll tell you, Da Vinci's been the the main reason I'm thinking. Fuck, I need to upgrade my computer. <laughs> For me, it was Minecraft. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good reason too. Uh, let me think. What would be a noise reduction? No, it'd be a compressor. There's got to be well, a hang on. Uh, hang on a sec here. Let me. Like I said, yeah. I got to pull Da Vinci up, and then when it when it finally loads and does everything, because it's doing twice. It's doing three times the work right now. Yeah. Because I've got uh, the stream yard running and all of that, and that's taking up a, a lot of resources. And then of course, isn't that uh, the one nice thing too about templates? Is because you don't have to exactly remember how to do every option. You just set it once, and then yep. As long as you don't lose it, then you have to go like, oh, I got to look this shit up again. God damn it. Yeah, there is that. But the, the thing that's nice about it is you can, I don't know, you just, where you play like how you know that uh, that text effect that you showed us, that ripple swirl, whatever yeah. it is, that 70s effect where you've done it enough that you know that. That's kind of like me with resetting the presets and everything for the audio ducking. Uh, gotcha. That, that if I if I lost the template, I wouldn't have to look it up. It's like I can do this. I know how to do this. Which I, I know that's a good like, thing. The more you do something, the better yep. you get at it. I mean, the better you remember it. Yep. And stuff you don't know too well. You just I know where to go find it. That's what I used to do in the Navy, though. We used to they mix signalmen and sparkers together into a single trade called naval communicators, mm -hmm. and then they also added IT and security onto it. So it was like three different trades. Nobody could remember everything. So your best skill was just to know where to go to recall it. Yep. And it's probably and why this why. is helping. Yep. Oh, come on, Da Vinci. Uh, here we go. Finally. Just or did it just die? <laughs> Let's see. Task manager. Is it Da Vinci actually running or did it shit? Yeah, most DAWs have template settings. So yeah, template settings, I don't mind. I kind of like doing it myself first just to understand how it works. And then I'll be more than happy to steal templates. Oops. Okay, DaVinci's up. So let me pull up one of my... I'll pull up religion. Okay. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to screen share this. My system is just like, fuck you. That's fine. My body yeah. is ready. <coughs> All right. Oh, come on. Okay. So I'm in Da Vinci. Let's see. 
go to make sure. Yep. Okay, so there's my edit page. Now I'm going over into Fairlight. Come on. Okay. Yeah, Red is right. There is more layers to work with at once for audio. Yes. There's this guy I, on YouTube I watch. He's like a professional editor, and that's what he, he shows us his workflow, and it's like there's eight tracks for his video edits, and there's like 50 for his audio. And he goes, that's mm -hmm. when you know you got a good editor. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> kind of true. Yep. Okay, so let me see here, because I've got my EQ on my main channel. Okay, so you have the little... Yeah, come on. Fucking work. It's so weird. Ducking is such a fundamental thing. You'd think they'd almost have made like a very obvious shortcut button for it. Well, and see, going back to Filmora, Filmora actually has that. That it, it's... I, I like it. It definitely works, but it's not as precision as what Da Vinci can do or what Reaper can do. Dude, I just like you showed me the track wide audio settings that just for this ducking alone, you're probably going to save on the four hours it takes me to edit one of my red pilled coffees or relationship break. Oh, relationship breakdowns are like an hour and a half, but you're probably saving 20% of the time on them right there. So like this pot, I've already, I've already moved more than paid for my time on this fucking podcast. <laughs> oh, nice. Good. <laughs> okay. So where is it at here? Come on. This thing is just dragging. Oh my God. Yeah. There's three things too. If you can show me where the options are here for a filter curve, loudless normalization and limiters, mm -hmm. I could basically don't need audacity anymore. Okay. Well, I can tell you about it. So let me. Oh, and the ducking. <laughs> well, yeah, the ducking's important. Okay, so while this thing's fucking around, and I don't know if it's ever going to go or not, I'm going to just kind of go off of what you've got sitting up here. Okay, mm -hmm. so the first thing I typically do is I will set an EQ on the on the vo on the narration track on my track. You know, okay. my voice. So go over to A1 or whatever it is that's your voice. Voice is A2. Okay, so go to where it says EQ. So it's right above. Right. At, no, no, no. Down. Why can I not see what you're talking about? Your Get your your me. scroller was almost on it. Right there. Okay. okay. Yeah, you should be able to click on that, whether it's a right click or a double click, something like that. That there we go. Okay, so now you have your your EQ open. This is where you would send um you would obviously adjust if you want to get rid of the the low end on the far left of the knobs you've got one there that says frequency yeah you're in the area look down or scroll mm -hmm. down you've got a knob over there that you can roll that off basically which gets rid of a lot of the rumble and stuff that goes into your your microphone right yeah ideally uh what do i usually set like three to four decibels and roll on low and i move it okay until mm -hmm. about Oh, I'd have to see what my settings are. Usually it's somewhere around here. I'd have to fiddle with the numbers because I don't know how these decibels translate. Okay. I'd have to go look at what I got settings now, but it's and essentially that's fine, like this. But yeah, but we're Some basically... Some people I know like to roll off the tinniness yep. too, though. Yeah, I tend I tend to roll off the high end as well. Okay, but that's that's neither here nor there. You, you set that however one. There should be somewhere... Is there, because I'm trying to see on the screen, is there somewhere in all of those knobs and everything, is there a thing in there that talks about send and listen? Send do you see that? Yeah, do you see that anywhere? No. Okay. Not yet. All right. Go ahead and um, go ahead and close that tab for the EQ. You've, you've kind of got it in there now. We're just, again, we're playing. So we've got that now. Go, yeah, go to where it says dynamics. No, 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 dynamics. close that off. Yeah, the dynamics on your vocal track. There we go. Click on send. It's right dead in the center. Right dead down, center. right down, Pressure. right down. Oh, there, hit send. Okay, now without, leave this open. You don't need to close it, but go over to your audio three or four, which wherever your music is. Mm -hmm. Click on that one. Okay, that should change. Double click it. You'll have your compressor still open, but now it'll say listen. audio three. Hit listen. Okay, turn compressor on. Yes, click that. Now, when you go and play the, you do your playback, 
this is the area where you will move your uh, ratio and then the whatever it is that's on the other side of ratio right by listen. Press I, hold, uh, attack, hold, and release. And you'll do those three as well. Threshold. Okay. okay when so you what scroll, I usually, you're like a three to one. Uh, that's either way, but it's your threshold that the lower you are, the lower the music will be. The more, the, the quieter your music will be oh. versus your talking head part to your narration. So question okay. then, if this is at zero, that's obviously no change. Right. Is this like equivalent? Like, is that like a two decibel difference? If I go to negative two, if I go to negative 50, is that like going to negative 50 decibels on the sound? I guess I could play and learn this one. Yeah. And, and you will have to but do if, that. And then you'll also. If that was also, the case, I'd probably do a negative 20 then. Okay. Yeah. But then with your attack, your hold and your release, those will, the, the shorter they are, the, the faster it will go back. Like on the attack, that's when from the time you start talking, the, the, yeah, how quickly the music drops and it can be very abrupt or it can be very gradual. Your hold obviously is if you pause for a second and then so your remember, release lets it go. So if my settings on Audacity, I usually have like a 10 millisecond attack, uh -huh. but I actually can go faster here. So I wonder- Yes, you can. I'll have to play because I don't want it to be yep. too jarring. So I'll just assume 10. Okay. Uh, my release, they usually set that to a thousand. Yeah. And then but I know. I kind of wouldn't me, mind drifting that off though. Okay. And you can. And same with the hold. I tend to set the hold somewhere in the middle is the only way I can describe it. And so again, what's the hold do? The hold just. It's, it's where you like pause or you maybe inhale real quick because you can set everything so fast that the minute you stop talking, it's bumping the music back up and it's very jarring. Oh, so that accounts for pauses in speech. So how long would my right. pauses be? Okay, I right. get that. So I usually okay. never half a second, whatever. I could play okay. around with that. Yeah, you'll oh, have to. Dude, this, this is, is you're fucking wonderful. Okay, now there's a couple other features here that we're not done with yet. So mm -hmm. there's a slider right above limiter. You see that slider? Yeah, that guy. That will, uh, because when you start doing your EQ and now your compressor, that's going to alter your master volume basically is what it's going to do. Yeah. So that will compensate, the, you know, again, you have to play with it, but that will help compensate to get your, your audio sound in the sweet spot, which is about a grand total of negative six, mm -hmm. zero to negative six. Cause otherwise when you start hitting the red zones, you're peaking way too much and even YouTube will compress you. Yeah. Okay. So y this way you stay underneath that compression. Okay. Now the limiter, I, to be honest, I don't usually use the limiter because no. the limiter, there's no yeah, limit. limiter is if you're getting really close, like the way I'd use a limiter in my case is after I've done my, uh, loudless normalization, uh huh. that way I can bring the ultimate value volume up. But the problem is it clips too much at the top and then the limiter right. is way of just softening it up. Audiobooks use it. I don't think for a video it's going to be completely necessary. No, I, I do. I've I've played with it, and and it was more headache than it was worth. I basically did all of my adjustments to kind of compensate for that limiter. I just adjusted the volume of my narration itself, so your A two track on its own. I would just kind of you know bump it down a little bit, and then play with your uh, threshold, your ratio, your attack. All that stuff here on A3 on your background music, you know, you still have to kind of fine tune everything, but this is how you do your audio ducking, Ryan. This is it oh, right here. Nice. Well, I could see you not needing a limiter because you have a yeah. very, I don't want to say monotonous, but it's a very stable voice. Yeah. And the music you use, there's no like random like guitar thrashing into it out of nowhere, highs and lows. Right. So you don't have the same worries about it clipping at the top end if you do any kind of gaining gains yep. or compression. Exactly. And so that's one of the things that, but w this setup that I just showed you or I've told you, that is how oh, you dude. do your audio ducking. This is it. Again, you're going to have to play with it, obviously off camera or whatever to hone it in, but this is audio ducking. And so, and you can audio duck any channels you want. Cause all you'd have to do is like, let's say you got your, you have different uh, background music on different tracks based on the timeline mm -hmm. progression. You just add another compressor to that different track. Yeah. So if your narration's A2, you got background music on three and four, you can also run a compressor on four. Which is and perfect. And thank God I have this shit organized. Like you see right here. Yep. Audio, like voice channels, usually in this case, it was a bit mod, but like channel one, 
Channel two is effects, channel three is effects, four and five are the music tracks. So it'd be so yep. easy just to do track wide changes. Well, and the thing that's nice too, uh, where you're and talking. And you see already about, all the fucking keyframes where I'm doing the audio uh, edits yeah. now. And, and and the way you're doing it, you're basically you are doing the same thing, but it is way more work. Yep. This this way, and you're gonna have a lot more precision with the the compression, uh, the audio ducking that I'm showing you. You'll have actually a lot more precision over it based on what you want to do, but you're not keyframing it and fucking around doing that shit. That'll oh, you've cut already down got me sold on it. Just the work alone. Yep. Okay. And like I said, and you can do the compression per clip if you wanted to. You could do it right here in the edit page. You just mm -hmm. cl click on a click that you want, go over to your effect tab, go down to audio effects and load a compressor right into that clip itself and do whatever you wanted to do there. But I prefer to do it on the track level. Yeah, that well, way you're like me. You organize way. each track based on the types of sounds that's there. Yep. And, and this, what's fun about this too, where you have a lot of uh, sound effects like whooshes and <laughs> whatever else. fucking around. picture, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucking patty boy. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm paying yeah. attention and I'm seeing, taking it seriously. I'm just talking. Okay. No, that's fun. That's fun. <laughs> but one of the, uh, the fun things where you've got a lot of different sound effects, if you don't want those ducked, you just don't add a compressor to that track or that right. clip. You, you know, that way you're not having, it's not going to compromise those if you, if you're worried about that. So, cause the only, the only things that I audio duck right now is basically my voice. Yep. To the music, to the, to the bed, as we called it in the DJ parlance. Oh, look at you with your old DJ parlance. Well, I used to do that, dude. That was something I did in college. I was a disc jockey. And so that's why I have an appreciation for audio is I had to play with soundboards and it was all analog. There was no digital back then. We had to splice tape and actually cut the tape in order to make any kind of edits. Oh, Jesus so, Christ. Oh, dude. Yeah. I don't envy technology. you, man. Yep. Technology is a beautiful thing compared to what it was. Oh, but, dude, graphic design. My teacher, like I just got into the business in university when they stopped using fucking leth lithographs. Oh, God. <laughs> like drawing, drawing the text onto the thing like fucking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exacto today, knives and shit. That's awesome. Yep. So if I, I still recommend if you're interested in checking it out, getting into Reaper, it's worth the 60 bucks or the $50, whatever they're doing. If you really want to. I guess do a lot of audio stuff, but second audio book, I most likely will be. Okay. Especially well, if it saves some time. Oh, it, you'll save hours. Okay. But for the YouTube you, videos, this is definitely going to be. Oh, absolutely. This is, yeah. If, if I wasn't doing other audio stuff, whether it's making music, because you can actually make music in Reaper, you can hook up MIDI instruments and all that, and even you know acoustic instruments via microphone and record it oh, yeah. like in a recording studio. I've heard that a lot of guys use that for studio recording, like they're yep. out there SoundCloud albums. <laughs> yep. By yeah, the way, well, in case you fucking cocksucker, can I swear on this? Absolutely. In case you cocksuckers in the audience don't know, this is me constantly. It sounds like I'm just putting out a video and shitting on Stedman, but. Every episode I film is basically the equivalent of me and Rob here, except for instead of him, it's a YouTube video with some Swedish guy showing me how to do these edits. Every yep. fucking video. So don't yep. ever say I don't give you guys effort and I'm lazing <laughs> this out. Fuck you. <laughs> well, it's the same thing for me. It's like, yeah, I, that's why I wanted to bring you on is I wanted to go a little more, I guess, you know, I'm going to give you a run for your money, Ryan. I want to get into fucking storytelling rights. the way you do. Dude, you know, I want I want everybody I to crush me, so I have to be better. <laughs> All this talk about competition. Well, at least he has balls. Well, how about this? I told Rob how to make better videos than me, and now he's got the balls to do it. Now I have to do it. That's right. There's now you got up your audio game. <laughs> Nobody's getting arrested on this one, too. How's that for balls? Oh, no shit. No one's going to jail if we're, you know, just shit talking over videos. Yeah. Hey, you Plus, know, that could be fun. Do YouTube videos where it's like a war? No, where it's a, it's, it's kind of like reaction videos where they shit talk each other. Oh yeah. I just watched Ryan's video. Well, this is what I got to say oh, about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh dude. Do you remember actually they used to do those. Remember that Simpsons one with the steamed clams? Do you remember that episode? Uh, mm, Principal Skinner went over to, to, or our superintendent Chalmers went to Principal Skimmer's house and he was like going to make a dinner and he burns the thing. So he goes to make crusty burgers and he's doing these elaborate sets of lies. 
He calls Krusty Burger steamed hams. <laughs> Anyways, a whole bunch of guys, they made like 30 videos on this where everybody had their own take on that sketch. One guy even got Jeff Goldblum to, to narrate the oh, voice God. of Principal Skinner in it. It's fucking hilarious. And some of this stuff is just crazy surreal. Stuff like that would be so much fun. Wouldn't it though? Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's like, what's the new, you know, what's the new rage in the, in the red pill community? All these guys are, they're kind of shit talking each other in their videos and they're making response videos of, Hey, oh, well I fixed that. Check this out. Well now, you know, since you just, you know, made the first jab, let me, let me jab right back. You know, and at least I could jab you and you'll jab back. I'll jab Clary and he'll just like go on a 30 minute rant about the economics of shitting on Clary. <laughs> no fun at all i don't that's why i don't shit on him anymore i'm like you guys got that market cornered i'm just gonna be (laughs) nice and polite to him and that's why he's he's always thrown off too he doesn't know how to respond he just stares smiling at me what how do i respond to sincere kindness i don't know (laughs) wow this guy you know if anything i think he's you know looking at you going what's your angle (laughs) yeah but yeah there's all my other guys they just shit all over me oh exactly yeah and two (laughs) So on this too, the bigger point, I guess, for audience guys, and I guess I've already talked to you about this before. Part of it is, I don't know how long my time is in the sphere. Like the autism will eventually get to me and I'll just have to be like, I'm fucking out. You guys are talking about sticking shit up your ass to be alpha. I don't want any part of it. Stick tobacco up your ass. Like, no. And so I always want to make sure that by the time this is done and I have to stop talking about 10 ways to be alpha, at least I got something out of it that I can still like. I'll be able to record an audiobook for somebody else. I'll be yep. able to make a video on YouTube. I can make a Minecraft Let's Play episode 506. Fucking great. Mm-hmm. But I would hate to be the kind of guy that like my Gumroad course on pickup is that's all I got. And I didn't really build any other skills. And so then when that money dries up on that and I have to pull a fucking Roosh V or a Cernovich, I got more options than ranting about the evil Democrats, you know? Yeah, exactly. That's that's something without scares even, the shit out of me. <laughs> well, it it's something that I never like consciously thought about or put to words of like, oh, I'm gonna learn YouTube or learn video editing because it's actually gonna teach me a skill that goes beyond just ranting in Toyotas about Rolos a fag. Yeah, you know, it, it's like oh. Well, while some of these guys are going to disappear and they're going to have to go back and do the nine to five or, or start Cut all hair. over again, <laughs> right? Yeah. They're, they're going to have to go fall back on something else or start all over again and rebuild the wheel all over again. I'm like, well, yeah, I don't plan on being here forever either. I was saying that a while back to somebody. I was like, dude, if I'm still sitting here yelling at the fucking computer when I'm 60, that's in 10 years, basically. That's 11 years from now. If I'm still doing this, then I have failed you guys and I have failed me. And, and it's on like, the yeah. very rare chance that you've blown the fuck up and are huge, but I highly doubt talking yeah. about whammon online is ever going to become fucking PewDiePie 2.0. <laughs> I, no. I doubt it. No, I, I doubt it as well. That that I don't, you know, I'm not going to be doing this forever. It's like, no, this is what I'm doing now, but I'm going to either get sick of it like you, where you're like, fuck these guys and I'm going to go do something else. Or I've done my time that, yeah, I want to do something else with the rest of my life, guys. Fuck all this shit. But at least I've learned some skills that, oh, hey, I can, I can do some audio for guys. I can be an audio engineer. I can be a video editor. I can do other things. Does a huge disservice to your audience too. Like, I know it's do with it, do it for you. Don't do it. Don't pander. And yeah, there's that part of it. But at the same time, you are, we are, we're infotainment. Yep. At That's the most charitable way I can describe any red pill content is infotainment. Yes. Trust me, I want to use much more malignant terms here. (laughs) (laughs) And that's when I get to the subtext of it. If you're given your subtext of like, men got to be better. We got to, you know, fight feminism, whatever bullshit things you do. And then the only thing you do is you show them how you're a one trick pony. You have no skills other than just like emotional triggers and gumroad courses. The guys watching that you're essentially walking them off a cliff and you're treating them more as a resource rather than step back. I don't know how to word it, but I always said at the very beginning, the very first speech I ever gave in that central Florida convention that shall not be named is that (laughs) I'm basically paid to come here and you give me an hour of your time. So you got to respect that. Mm-hmm. 
That's at the time it was like 150 people give me an hour of time. It's 150 hours. Do you remember that story I told the one about when I was in my primary leadership quarter uh, course? Did I tell you this one or did I just write it on the blog? I might have just run it on the blog. I think you, know you just wrote it. Uh, I don't know. All right. So at one point in the course, everybody, you have your platoon and your platoon is made of sections. Everybody will become a platoon leader once in the course. You get two days where you're in, you're the CEO of the unit. And the idea is you get to do, you know, teach leadership. It's mostly just like organize the things, set the tasks, make sure they're done. You're ultimately accountable for everything underneath you. On my days, we had a bunch of bullshit tasks they do to run out the clock because they want you basically sleep deprived and that's the only hardship they can impose on you so they try to work you till like midnight and then start your work day at four we also had to give lectures on rules of force any kind of like brief you have to give it to a command team and there was 60 of us that had to do it so that's like 60 hours of content fit in within like two or three days anyways so for me what people would normally do is because they were just trying to take a risk averse approach and follow the herd everybody sit down and watch these lectures Everybody was sitting there wasting 10 hours a day watching the lectures, and then they'd spend another 10 hours a day doing all the tasks we had to do. Clean your boots, polish your whatever, do your drill, whatever. Me, I start looking through the requirements of it, and it turns out the requirements, watching the fucking lectures is not a requirement. Giving them is. And the only people that mark you are the instructors. So I'm like, you don't have to fucking be here. So I made a call. They put me in charge for this. I'm like, here's my call. We have X, Y, and Z to do. You guys all go do that, and you put a little bit extra and cover for the 10 guys today who have to give their lectures. Then when that's done, we all go home. And it was something around like 2 in the afternoon. We're supposed to be there. They usually want us there to like 10 to midnight. 2.30 in the afternoon, everything was done. All that was left was another like 5 or 6 or a couple lectures, 5, 6, maybe a handful of people. So I'm like, look, I'm making a call. 40, 55 of you go home. The last five that have to give lectures, you stick around, and I'll stick around because you have to stay until everybody else leaves the platoon commander and everybody's freaking out. Well, that's not fair. Why do these guys stay and they get to go home? I'm like, well, when it's your not your day to present, you go home. I'm not going to fuck over everybody because you got it hard. I'm here later than all you guys, so I don't give a shit. Anyways, it was actually hard. I almost had to kick people out of the fucking barracks, but they got to go spend 10 hours they wouldn't have spent with their girlfriends, their family, or jerking off in the living room or whatever. Anyways, next day, I hear this this gigantic fucking psycho bitch i can't remember uh, i don't want to say her name on here but she was like a hungarian blonde you know call me ma'am that kind of chick <laughs> call me the, Elga. <laughs> basically get over here drag me into a room for 15 minutes chewed me out this is bad leadership we didn't tell you to do this you weren't told to do this blah 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 i checked the standing orders i have the authority to to call when the day is over and when the day started and i'm accountable for the task done I met all the tasks, I made the calls, perfectly within my rights, right? But I'm not going to argue this point. She chews me out. The other boss that was behind her, he's got a, he's laughing. I can see he's laughing, but it's it's kayfabe, so I have to like act like she's chewing me out. So after 15 minutes of getting reamed, my asshole fucking opened up. I go out to the class, and everybody's standing outside looking at me all horrified. Oh man, are you okay? I knew we shouldn't have done this. And blah. I'm like, I sat everybody down for our morning meeting. I'm like, look, I'll address this thing so you all get it out of your system. You all got 10 hours, 55 of you, 10 hours. That's 550 hours of awesomeness. I had to put up with 15 minutes to get my ass reamed out. From a cost benefit perspective, I think that's a trade I would make every day. So just get back to work. And that was, I got, it actually cost me marks for it. But the other boss, he actually, we worked together later. He loved it. But that was always the lesson that I wasn't supposed to learn in my leadership course, but I did learn. And this is kind of where I talk about taking the audience and treating them like with some reverence, right? I have to make a, a pithy little tweet on that too. Like sometimes leadership is getting your ass reamed out so people can love their children or something. I don't know. I'm not catchy enough. Well, what it kind of reminds me of, it, it's funny. I, I know you meant a different thing, but I can tie it to what you just said. It was the tweet you mentioned the other day and I quote tweeted. It was part of a little thread you did. And you mentioned about having your buddy bail you out what you know you go out and oh the networking one yeah, yeah yeah and that that's better networking than some main network event type of thing mm -hmm. that's that's this right here that to me it's like oh this is it, there's the analogy is there for me at least that it's like oh yeah because if you treat your audience with reverence you value their time they're gonna love you for it you know what i mean 
Oh, I hope you guys don't love me. I don't want no para social relationship on this shit. <laughs> but no, I, I see what you mean. Like they'll it it's they'll respect you. Let's put oh, it that I don't way. even like that because respect's been such a botched up term with that fucking DC capital shit. Well But I know what you're saying. I just yeah. I'm just quibbling over the term used. <laughs> yeah, you are. You're 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 getting triggered. <laughs> grumble 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 that's right you're getting triggered over terminology now but it's yeah. the idea that they see the value because so. you're you're valuing their time so you're like i don't want to fuck around and the greatest way i can look at it and i'm sure you've encountered this too ryan is we're all standing on somebody else's shoulders whether it's red pill or it's like learning video editing yeah. okay i'm going and watching guys that that know how to edit so that I can learn how to edit. And some of the guys are phenomenal. They, they just get right into it. They just, okay, hi, it's me. Let's get in, open up DaVinci and away we go. Mm -hmm. And then there's other guys that take 10 minutes telling you their life story. And then it takes them the two minutes to tell you how to do whatever it was you were looking for. Oh, that's so, like cooking blogs. Let me teach you how to make a tortilla. But before then my trip to and you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. And those are the ones that I'm looking at it going, okay. And I know like Jack had said, well, monetization. And I'm like, I understand monetization. I get it. Your videos need to be X amount of length long in order for YouTube to monetize it, if that's the thing. But there's other things you as the content creator can do that you're not just telling your life story or whatever. You can get to the point and say what needs to be said and maybe add a little extra value to it to get your monetization mark. But at least I'm not sitting there going, I just wasted 10 minutes to watch a two minute video. Yeah. You know, cause I hate those. It's like, there's guys I won't follow because of that, that it's like, Oh, I'm, I'm a minute and a half in and this guy is telling me his life story or he's trying to hold my hand when I'm looking at it going, dude, I I'm not a noob here. I understand what you're doing, but your video was oddly specific about learn this technique. It's not going to, well, we need to go and download DaVinci and then we need to install DaVinci and then we need to open DaVinci and okay, well now do this. It's like, I understand how to do all that. I, I watched that video already. Get on with, we're going to teach you how to do a glitch effect. You know, it's like, get to the glitch effect. I understand how to open the fucking program. Yeah. And so, hell, and that's the thing. There's tools to get around that. You know that new chapter option where you're like, it splits up your timeline yes. based on headers? Yes. If you wanted to do that and somebody wanted to support you by watching your pablum, which most people won't, but at least yeah. that, it makes it easier to search. I actually got to learn how to do that. Why more please is trying to teach that to me right now. It's, Apparently it's easy. It's very easy. Like, I'm is it in the wait. editor you do that or in the descriptor? It's in the descriptor. Oh. Yeah, when you set up, you put in your links and everything and your description of what your video is, you make it a separate space and then you start off with zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, type the word intro. And then at whatever point that you're going to have your chapter, you need to watch your video as you're doing it, basically, because you can do it, you know, in real time. Yeah, you just need but your it, time code. So you just do it. Is it by frames or by seconds? It's by seconds. Oh, so at one minute, 30 seconds is where we now get to making coffee. And then at two minutes, 45 seconds, now we're going to do red pill. And then at three minutes, 22, we're going to drink some coffee. And then at four minutes, we're going to talk more red pill. That's Dude, I actually would like that for the relationship breakdown for the, each the definitions in that. Yep. That's how you do it. But you start off with zero, zero, colon, zero, zero intro, and then from there you just time code and call it whatever you want to name it i like that though yep. i will say too i'm with you if you don't have enough to fill an eight and a half like they lowered the that default to eight minutes by the way eight and a half Is minutes it? oh yeah well, I didn't it know that. they just changed that i think two three months ago oh, okay so that's recent but if i don't have a video that'll fill that time then either that video is not ready yet or I can just double them up. Like the Roycey ones where I do on points, I could, mm -hmm. those are like six minutes. I could probably put two into one and make it just work, but mm -hmm. I just or, skip the mid roll ads, whatever. Yeah. Well, ultimately, and, and, ultimately, if you get more views, then it's going to cancel that out anyway. So I'm, that's my decision. I'll let you know in three months how it works. Yeah. Hey, we'll find out. The, but that's kind of like when I did my uh, Twitter notification video, it seriously is like two minutes long. Okay. There's no way it could be monetized, even though my channel's not even that big yet. Mm -hmm. But there's just no way because it's too short. But honestly, I don't care. 
I was like, I'm going to make this video the way I wanted someone to do it for me. Hmm. You know, that it's like, just get to the fucking point. And so that's what I did. That is my most popular video on my channel. And huh. I don't know why it took off. Maybe Dude. it's the descriptors. Nobody ever knows why. My most popular video, I'm the same way. I'm like, why the fuck are people watching this? It's that it's this random one, like what makes a modern man? I don't remember it, but it just keeps blowing the fuck up. And I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. My, It was really funny because when I did the Twitter one, I did it because I wanted to do a tutorial about how to do this because I had to go slog through a whole bunch of other people's crap to get there. <laughs> and then, so I was like, you know, okay, now that I know how to do it, I'm going to do it the way I wanted it done that someone, I wish someone would have done this for me. Did it, put it up, set it, forget it, released it, forgot all about it. It did its little spike like all videos do. Oh, it's a new video from, from Rob. Let's go see what he's got to say. And then it died off, which I expected. And then like, seriously, like two months later, Boom, took off. I don't understand the algorithm at all. I don't either. I, I, it is my most popular video, and it's two minutes. And <laughs> it's not even a red pill video. It's a Twitter video. You know, it's just notification. <laughs> How to tweet. First step, take a yeah. shit. Second step, think something up. Third step, make it sound autistic. Fourth step, success. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like and subscribe. Oh, fifth step. What's up? <laughs> fuck nuance. <laughs> Tell the audience what they want to hear, but don't pander. That's right. If you don't, don't understand pander. what that means, just keep trying. Yeah, and then well, sixth step, guilt and shame your way through it all. That's right. As a real man, you're going to wipe up that hoe or you're a fucking loser. That's how you have to do Twitter. That's how you Twitter properly. Jesus. And it's <laughs> you know the worst part about all that is that I, I hate when I'm watching a red pill piece of content on something on a topic that I kind of know makes sense, but the way they're describing it is very pandering anger face shit. And then I hear some feminist dunk on it and I'm kind of like siding with the feminist. I'm like, fuck, she's got a point, dude. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you for making me say that. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> like, I don't mind the feminists. They're just like, you're a white male and freak out like the ones on my last tweet there. But sometimes they're like, dude, don't ever do this to girls. She'll... And I'm like, yeah, she probably would leave you. <laughs> like, why are you doing that? <laughs> Like put a G what was the other one? I think, I think Donnie does that. Like the put the GPS tracker in her car. I was like, ah, oh. uh, yeah. Don't yeah. worry. It's just a misdemeanor. I'm like, that's kind of not the point though. How can you argue about having a good frame when you're like, maybe if she comes back and doesn't feel like having sex that night, but she was horny when she left, then maybe you don't need the GPS tracker to know what's up. I yeah. Know. No shit. Well, and, and my take on that particular one would be if you have to install a GPS tracker, yeah, that not only know. says well. It yeah, it kind of to me. It's like well, if if you already have suspicions or you're not trusting, why are you even with this person? Well, that's the point. Like, yeah, yeah it's there's one of two scenarios. One, you're paranoid, in which case yep. you have shit and you need insecurities you need to work on. Or yep. two, you're not paranoid and your instinct has already told you what you need to know. It's and like you're just uh, not acting on it. Yep. Yeah, and Americans are, seem to be brutal at this because that whole Trump election stealing whatever shit. Mm -hmm. I don't really care to argue which one's right or not. I'll put it this way, though. The perception of impropriety right there showed you exactly why that's just as important as actually being like legit and no like fraud or anything. Mm hmm. Like yeah, Canada, whether, we're, whether yeah, it we got it or not. It's well, the it fact that people can away. plausibly say that it did happen. That's the yep. issue. Yep. It's a trust thing. And that's why Canada actually has. You guys don't have this. We have Elections Canada. It's a federal arm's length organization that strictly exists for all election like security, local, federal, provincial, whatever. That's their only reason. They're like the FBI for elections. And they make it their job not just to make sure the elections go smoothly, but to make sure people trust the system. And they oh. unfortunately and they like they can't be influenced by political parties. That goes against their mandate. If that happened, it would be just as bad as when uh, Statistics Canada, Harper tried canceling them for a bit there. Canadians lost their fucking mind. And I guess you can't have that as Americans because you guys aren't a country of provinces. You're like 50 separate countries with a yep. kind of a weird banner on top of it, right? Correct. Yes. We are a confederation. You're like the EU. <laughs> yeah, we kind of are. Yeah, we are a confederation that when it comes to... We have the federal government that everyone is, you know, evil, bad federal government. But the reality is the state governments can override the federal government at any given time about damn near everything. 
Yeah. And I think so what do they have like, the rules on? Interstate commerce and the post office. Is that the only thing the fe- and the military? That's like the only three things the military that federals have, right? Yeah, pretty much. Because even when it comes to like the ATF and the DEA, when it comes to drug enforcement, mm-hmm. okay, it, right now in the United States, here's a great example, okay. Most states now either have some form of medical marijuana or even recreational marijuana where they've, they've not only decriminalized it, they've made it straight up legal. On the federal level, that's not the case. That The feds, in theory, the DEA could come in to any dispensary or any grow farm and whatever and shut them down. Because on the federal level, it's still illegal to grow marijuana, sell marijuana, possess marijuana, right. buy marijuana. Yet on the state level, each state's they're kind of doing their own thing. I haven't seen the DEA or the ATF or anybody showing up yet, which tells me they're probably not going to. Yeah, well, it probably means the state will be like, I will kick you the fuck out of my state if you fuck with my tax revenue. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So basically, yeah. don't do it inside an FBI headquarters in your yeah, state. Yeah, pretty much don't do it where it's considered federal ground. So yeah, a consulate. Uh, military uh, base, I guess. Military, yes. Military base would be another one. And um, reservations, the, the, the Native American land, that's federal ground. Oh. Huh. And so those type of areas where it's federal, yeah, you better not fuck around there because they'll probably kill you. But literally, but anywhere else, it's like, well, if the state's allowing it, you're kind of, you're okay. You really are. Fair so. enough. I don't know. We'll All see. Right. We're now this COVID quarantine shits the way it is. I'm like seriously looking into expatriating and now I got to pick a place and I hate to say it, but right now Florida is really high on that list. <laughs> Well, why do you guys funny. do this to me? Well, <laughs> you, want, you want freedom? Comes with Florida, man. I'm like, fuck. Ah, oh, goddamn Florida. Yep. Well, it's funny you say that because, of course, there's a lot of guys on Twitter talking about expatriation. You know, leaving the, the America, and and I'm like, where are you gonna go? Because where, whatever you give up here, whatever you're trying to run from, you're gonna be trading and exchanging it for something else somewhere else. You know, yeah, that's the problem. Which one's better? Which one's worse? Yeah. Which one is okay with you? Like I would love Australia. Well, Australia and yeah, this is going to sound stupid, but Australia has got issues with firearms and I, I like my firearms. So Canada too, I guess to a lesser extent, Australia is like an extreme version thing. I don't like about Australia is it's so isolated. Yeah. Well, there I like Tim Tams, but not that much. (laughs) Like everything I'm used to seeing is like, yeah, that's an eight hour plane ride of shipping away and it costs 10 times as much. And yeah, know. no, I get it. But you're always going to have some form of trade off. Oh, well, you can have your guns and you can have this, but you'll never own the land. It's like going to Mexico. The only people that can legally own land in Mexico is Mexican nationals. That's it. Yeah, See, I can do that, too. That's the beauty of it. My girl's Mexican national. Well, there you go. See, now you have an in there. You but at could the go same down time, it's like Mexico. A Lord. <laughs> yeah, but that it's the shithole of Mexico. Right. But yeah, you Mexico is like the a... shithole of Mexico. <laughs> no shit. But you at least would be a feudal king down there with your income, you know, because they they survive on dirt and bread. And <laughs> so, you know, but that's what you're trading off there. My girl hates like... that, by the way, when I talk about the chief export being dirt farming. <laughs> stop oh. saying that about my place I'm like whatever <laughs> now oh, she oh. even starts to call it that's how much she's gotten she hears it so much she accidentally calls it a dirt farm every now and again <laughs> <laughs> now there's an example of frame <laughs> yeah you got her in your frame if she's calling the dirt farm a dirt farm <laughs> yeah Oh, well, someplace like i would love croatia would be kind of nice and i know it's kind of got really close ties to canada it's got the nice mediterranean thing Apparently fitness, uh, fitness brands, they're all down in Dubai right now. Cause Dubai was like, once you get in the country, as long as you're clean and fucking fill your boots. No shit. But that's the problem is like 54 degrees in the summer in August. I don't want that. Have you ever been in 54 degree? Oh, I guess that's Celsius. You're talking, I think it's Celsius. Like, I, you're talking like 120, 130 Fahrenheit. I think 130. Yeah. One second yeah. here. 54 Celsius to Fahrenheit. 129. Yeah, 130 degrees. That's Death Valley. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking hotter than hell. 
Dude, I remember I used to go outside to like walk around and then get into the Emirates Mall and then I would look at my pants and where my pockets were was dry because the pocket absorbed all the sweat, but the rest of my pants were drenched. And that's just sweat. Yep. And then you walk into there and you go into like the uh, the ski rain or the ski slope that's in the mall. Fucking Dubai, of course. You gotta have a ski hill in the middle of the desert. <laughs> And it's like ice cold and I had to wear a jacket. And then I'm thinking like we walk back in and forth like seven times a day. I'm like, this is extreme 50 degrees to negative 10 degrees shit. This can't be good for your heart, especially no. not when you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what the I don't know how what the life expectancy is of Dubai Nationals or Emirates or whatever they call them, but it can't be good. <laughs> well, it's too bad Mish isn't here. He'd probably have an idea about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, I love Mish, man. He's so much fun. Yep. He's kind of sad, though, because, like, you know how I shit on Muslim Twitter a lot? That, like, what can I say? I was a kid born in 2001. Sue me. <laughs> it's a 9-11 joke. <laughs> but they all put up with it. But when he does even, like, minor shit, they all get fucking pissed at him. And I think it's because, like, for them, it's like, oh, that's just a dirty heathen, whatever. That's what they yeah, always it's say. It's easy to dismiss me. Yeah. But an actual Muslim guy saying, no, no, the chicks here are still whores. I'm dating one now. They're like, fuck this guy. He's letting them know our secrets. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He He's DM'd me stuff, showed me video clips and pictures and all this. And he's like, Ryan was right, dude. We're just behind the curve as all this is. Feminism's <laughs> here. Yeah. It's like, there you go. But yeah, they, they're, yeah, it is. It's uh, We want to keep that under the rug. Don't let that out the door. We don't want to let the rest of the world know that Yeah, we're just as fucked as the rest of you. So... Hey, doesn't matter to me, though. If you guys want to dismiss me, it makes it harder for me to get uh, Twitter TOS violations. Yep. Exactly. I had my first one, by the way, this year. Oh, some random one where it was talking about like choking sexually. But I guess because of the way it was worded, it didn't it. If you took it like an Aspie, it would sound like I was talking about choking chicks. So whatever. <laughs> I'll own that one. My first 12 hour ban of my entire Twitter career. Wow. Uh, I, I've stayed out of Twitter jail so far, but that'll probably change here now. But I don't think yeah. it will. I think they've like my my followers stopped dropping. So I think they're past the let's boot everything Trump off of this platform. No, God, man, the Trump, the Trump, the Trump nation has been just <laughs> brutal. I'm down like I was like 700 guys just disappeared off the face of the earth. <laughs> and it's so hard. I had to take like a bunch and honestly, I thought about the same thing, risk perspective. I'm like, okay, so how do they how do they find out who the Trump guys are? There's obviously keyword searches, but mm -hmm. I guarantee you they see who like the big, like who's Cernovich's followers, who is Trump's followers, and do like a map of that. So I'm like, I started following some feminists and a couple you know, ex-sex workers, and I'm like, all the, the hardcore lefties. And that's when I found <laughs> out a lot of their sexual relationship takes are better than the fucking manosphere. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> you got this 28-year-old Tumblr girl, and she's saying some shit that's like, Rolo didn't even get there yet. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's kept me from getting on that band bandwagon. Uh. Although I know a lot of those guys, we lost those guys because they were pissed. You know what is funny? Makes me laugh more than anything. Is the is not the guys who got censored because they were too hardcore into Trump. It's the guys that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> How many people fucking deleted their account? in a fucking rage saying YouTube's going to fucking delete me. I know it. And then nothing happens. And then you delete their account, tell you to get to their newsletter. And I look over, it's like, that's funny because when they boot your ass off the platform, they tell you the account was suspended. This just says the account no longer exists. You lazy fucking fucker. Yeah. Yeah, look exactly. You rage quit. It's like stolen yep. valor for Twitter. Where's Jesse Ventura <laughs> to talk shit on these guys when you need them, man. <laughs> but how bad is that though when like you can tell this hardcore i don't know what to call them i don't want to say conservative twitter because it's not about conservatism it's like larpy conservative twitter has this nail yourself on the cross brand strategy martyr i just don't twitter. get it yep. martyr yeah. twitter. Oh, like yeah. jesus did that for you why are you doing it again it's like why <laughs> would you double up on work <laughs> right he even wrote down the like fuck i did this three days that's supposed to be like that's not supposed to be an instruction manual <laughs> like he's not writing the trick to branding is you need the romans to whoop your ass so you got to bait them for a ban and then when they murder your ass wait three days come back and then start your following start with <laughs> thou shalt have a gumroad course thine uh, book shall be 16 point times new roman on 50 pages <laughs> oh god fuck uh that's funny shit oh my god yep. yeah yeah what can I say? I got the Christopher Hitchens in me. <laughs> I'm here all week, guys. Tip your waitress. 
<laughs> Take my wife, please. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Fuck these guys. That's why I love Carl. We actually talk a lot about this offline. Is like we actually had a concern. Is like, are you ever worried that like using some of the shitty manipulative things like the editing techniques? Do you ever worry that that's causing more harm than good? And I say no. Mostly because I see the alternative isn't very good. So the bar set to be better than that is really fucking low. But on the other time, like we're honest. Like you're honest, Jack's honest, I'm honest, Rollo Rich, all the guys are honest. And I think that's very fucking rare. It is. Like where you can even, you have the self-awareness that if you have something stupid on yours that gets engagement, you know it is. Like when you say, yeah, I'm putting out some red meat for the guys. You acknowledge this is just some bullshit emotional tweet because... Then you guys will engage this, and hopefully enough of you stick around to watch the part where I tell you not to be a fucking moron. <laughs> yep, exactly. I believe they it, used to call that authenticity before they start doing the exact opposite of it. Right? Or what do well, I call it? Authenticity is like sincerity without having to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds real good, though. Uh, uh, it, it's lying without lying. That's yeah. it. Oh, God. Yeah. It's my Jack Murphy rant for the day. Oh, you mean the LO? <laughs> oh, dude, I, I I hate to say this too, but I always get a chuckle and I don't have any reason to poke fun at him. He's never done me no wrong. And I'm like, whatever. He, I've met him. He's a good enough dude. But I just laugh every time he shows up on Tim Pool with his hello fellow children fucking beanie and zero skateboarding hoodie. And it's like, hey, fellow children. It's like, yeah. Come on. Yeah, he, he's he's the boomer wanting to hang out with the kids. I, yeah. I'm trendy. I'm hip like you guys. Just yeah. hurts. It hurts to watch, especially when he's got that like bride of Frankenstein on her standing on her head beard going on, which yep. I found is cool. And that's just how it naturally grows. But I yeah, he's got that streak down the middle type of thing. That's actually how mine started before it all went completely white. No shit. So. Yeah, I found I got I've got one. There's this one patch here that's ultra gray and the rest is just kind of normal. So it's very weird. It's like I had, you know, those people that get those shots for like uh, what's that stuck gluten intolerance shit. What do they call that disease? Oh, uh, celiacs or whatever. I think. Yeah, I think so. I just remember this because in my book, when I talk about Weber and his wife, the fiance story, she actually had that. And she has this weird patch of like three white groups of hair from an injection for some from like celiacs or something like that as a kid so every time i have that patch it's all i could think of is like now people are gonna think i have a gluten intolerance god damn it <laughs> i love gluten gluten ain't never done me no wrong it was That's... plants version of protein can't fault them for trying that's right that's how it goes besides out of all the part about like simple deep fried carbohydrates i think gluten is the least of your worries on them there's so much more things on there that'll fuck you up Maybe high fructose corn syrup. No, but Ooh. that's natural. Yeah, fuck natural. Yeah. Uranium's natural, too. It ain't telling me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I like best times. Tim Pool's hems and haws too much for me, and his chat is a fucking mess. Every big channel's chat's a mess. Yeah. Tim, and I, look, I even got to give Tim credit. He's honest. Do you remember when he did, the, like, I, everybody was talking about now that Trump's kind of on the way out you're gonna start watching everybody pivot and like hey guys let's talk about whamming again it's like don't fucking forget who was all mega and who's coming back to man now don't fucking forget and i remember that he had a video coming out where he just basically gave a 20 minute long rant about how he's not going to talk about politics anymore he's going to talk about winning the culture war that men have to be better i was like you uh, at least you're honest about it but like jesus man yeah what does rollo say hear me now believe me later <laughs> <laughs> also why i'm pretty sure i'm never gonna do collabs with these type of guys i'm just having like no filter and eventually they're gonna be like hey bring ryan on the tim pool show and somebody's gonna send up the video are you sure here's the 20 minute thing where he calls you a fucking grifter <laughs> <laughs> all right fair enough yeah well you know and i think you even mentioned that to me a little while back that you know if hey if you're wanting to you know make your mark here you gotta you gotta watch what you say and do and I, and I get it and i appreciated the heads up you you know better than i do but i'm sitting here thinking ryan you don't you haven't gotten to know me well enough yet one i don't i don't care and and i'm not here to everybody to says rant. they don't care but they all care a little well i care if a million enough. followers fell in your lap you'd fucking care <laughs> oh yeah absolutely i'm not gonna say i wouldn't want a million followers but at the same time 
I'm not here to, I guess, to, to make the money. If people want to give me money, great. But otherwise I'm good that it's like, uh, I, I want to actually help guys and say, stop putting your head up your own ass. Yeah. You know? Well, I think yeah, same. I get it. And I, I should have clarified that I didn't mean that as in like, you be careful because this is bad and I did it. Don't make this. Mistake. No, no, it's not I, that I at all. It's just, there's, it there's a choice to make. There's actually a, a great YouTuber. He's one of those, uh, he does like films and like camera work and shit like that and tech reviews, all that kind of stuff. Random thing, nothing to do with this. And he always mentioned that too. He's like, and it's probably the best thing I've ever heard when it came to guys starting a channel on YouTube is make a number. And for him, he was like, take what you pay for bills, take what you pay for food, like all your expenses. How much do you need for paycheck living month to month? And then how big of an audience and how many videos, like how much do you need to get there and make that your goal? And then once you're at that goal, don't fucking worry about the rest because it'll happen. And that's like, you've seen it on my channel. Like mm -hmm. I'm out of all the rule zero guys, I'm probably the slowest growing guy. I'm about, how does it look here? 500 a month for growth. I'm fine with that for subscribers. Views Gee, every I, first year was like a thousand views of videos. Second year is like two to 3000 and it's fine. It pays the bills. I'm very comfortable. I'm not buying Lamborghinis. And I know for a fact, a big reason why I'm not growing faster is because I'm not collaborating with like, john somnes or uh who's somebody else i can't stand i mean i like him i just don't like the the the, the brand i guess tim pool uh murphy mm. the cortez all those guys i worked with them a little bit they seem nice enough but the better i got at brands the more i realized i just don't want to do that pandering shit but that's all i mean is that there's a cost involved that just means it's going to take me five years to get to x amount of growth as opposed to one year or two years but I don't need it because I already know what my number is. And I think there you're the you same way. It. You're like, I don't need any money. I'm just here because I want something to do with my spare time other than jerk off in the living room. Pretty much. That's <laughs> pretty much it. You know, that, yeah, that I don't do this for the money because I make my money in the nine to five world that, yeah, I, I'm not the entrepreneur. I'm not the, you know, be my own business. It's like, no, and I'm okay with that. You know, that way, if I walk away, it's like, well, it's not like I was making a ton of money anyway. If I get deplatformed, eh, I'll just go on and do something else. Yeah. You know, it, it's not the end of the world. I'm not going to be bankrupt and kicked out of my house if I get deplatformed. They, they can't hurt me with that. I can just start another <laughs> You're anti fragile. I have a nine to five. I'm anti fragile. That's How's right. that for like the opposite of <laughs> mainstream advice? <laughs> yeah, there you have it. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I am. My boss knows what I do. They know. And they're like, just don't talk shit about the company. It's like, I can do that. I can be good. You know, I won't oh, talk about Oh, you just job. figured out why censorship is bullshit. Yep. Nobody cares about this. Nobody, dude, I have never seen, Count Dankula, I think is the only guy I've seen who's legitimately been fucked over by cancel culture. Yeah. The guy with the, the Nazi pug? Yeah. Because he yeah. wasn't, he was just fucking around and he just happened to be caught, caught in the right crosshairs at the right time. Yeah. Everybody else, it's literally, I'm going to drop Nazi references for like six months and then he gets banned for Nazi references and he's like you see they're censoring you you got to be able to have free speech and I'm just like you're not a f sitting here like you're George Washington yeah well and I know I've talked with Bull Rush about it with Nick about it a little bit that it's like when people start screaming about free speech I'm like I don't think you really understand what that term means mm -hmm. that only applies to criticizing the government that doesn't mean you get to have diarrhea of the mouth and yell fire in a movie theater or call people racial slurs and not expect to get your ass kicked. Oh, yeah. You're talking like the difference between First Amendment and free speech. Right. Where people always just. Yeah, I agree, too. That it's like we've never had ever their version of what they're considering free speech. No, nope. it's like you guys obviously haven't been punched in the face because. <laughs> You know, if I run out the street and say something to somebody and call them a racial slur, yeah, we can argue the Pat Stedman. I pulled a Stedman. I got balls, but I wasn't <laughs> smart. You know, I got I, balls. I, well, they had to kick you somewhere. <laughs> yeah, because I said that racial slur and that's not protected speech. You know, that is hate speech. And it's just like you can't just run your mouth on anything you want, guys. That's not how free speech works. Or at least be aware of the consequences of what you're taking. Oh, oh, dude, that's some of my favorite ones is guys that I remember seeing here right even before the detrumpination or whatever, even before <laughs> that guys getting deplatformed because they were playing revolutionary. Okay? Oh, yeah, they, they were going off and, you know, the world's coming to an end, arm yourselves type of thing. And 
and they're saying all kinds of shit and I'm looking at it going, okay, I just heard the bombs start ticking. And the next thing you know, two weeks later, they're fucking wiped off the face of the earth. And it's like, well, you were playing revolutionary, man. If you're going to go revolutionary, you go all the way. You don't talk about it. Yeah. No, yeah. If you're going to storm the Capitol, bring, bring a weapon. Yeah. Show I mean, up don't bring a weapon, but if you're going to do that, do it properly. Don't yeah, be there. If like you're going to do it, go all the way. Yep. That's like, imagine, you know, that, uh, Okinawa where they're the three soldiers are raising the flag on the beaches in Japan. Do you what? know, that? it's like that famous photo from World yeah, War II. Yeah, yeah. It'd be like that, but there's one soldier in front with no weapon taking a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Pat Stedman in your life right there. Yeah, there you have or it. that, uh, the one with George Washington crossing the river. Yep. Sitting there looking all thing. He's just like taking a selfie. You know, everybody's there with bayonets fucking rowing. <laughs> <laughs> the Boston Tea Party. Bill, taking come here, help me out. One tea. second. <laughs> Whatever colonial version of track pants they wear, he's wearing that. Oh, God, no shit. <laughs> that would be the, God, that'd be the Civil War. Where you have a Confederate and a Union guy both taking selfies while everyone's fighting in the background. Yeah. Oh, like, Jesus. Uh, but that's the thing. I don't get, and you can't call yourself Red Pill because Red Pill is never about changing anything. It's about navigating. Yep. And say what you want about the current culture, what you can say, what you can't say. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you do. I don't think anybody's happy with it 100 percent until well they are until it affects them yeah. but it's consistent it's like very consistent i find there's certain yeah. trigger topics that you just know there's going to be a consequence i know for a fact if i put out a tweet that is a metaphor with a reference to anything violent that 15 feminists are going to dunk on my mentions like i know uh -huh. these things are coming and i know some things will be like you're going to boot you off the platform like i can say all women are cunts but i can't say Karen at this Twitter handle is a cunt because that's direct harassment. Yep, exactly. And I don't care if it's fair and I don't care if it's good or if it's right or if it's virtuous, but it's consistent and you can work with consistency. Yep. Consistency. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah, and you can. I mean, it's and I've seen it happen to guys where they uh, they they don't go after women, but they go after uh, another group of individuals who were persecuted by the Nazis. And oh, you're talking about that Austrian painter scene. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, you know, and and it's like, uh, yeah, if there there are certain groups that if you criticize them in any shape or form, your your time is running out. Yeah, they're going to find you and they're going to make you pay. So, and considering too, most of the ones that move to the States, their whole culture is based around like a justified paranoia of discrimination, you know? Yeah. Even if it's like outlandish today, that's like telling a black dude, here, look, just slavery, whatever. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's not going to fly. Try the hard R. You get the most. Ed Lattimore will probably knock you out if you start dropping hard R's in front of him. I'm just uh -huh. saying. And that's Mr. Fucking Red Pilled Rogers. <laughs> yeah. But that's fine. That's know, not fair. They should the get over it. It's causing these harms. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe. But what? just don't be surprised if you get knocked the fuck out while guys chatting World Star in the background. Well, you know, hey, that's, you know, but then we can always say that the guy that dropped the hard R on Ed, hey, he had balls. <laughs> yeah, at least he had balls. <laughs> Do you remember when we used to make fun of shit like that? That whole meme about hold my beer and then you watch a guy go basically suicide himself. Yep. And that's... now it's at the point where guys are like pinnacle of alpha male. Yeah. Hold it's my a... beer. Yep. Hold my beer is now a virtue. Yep. Starting to think that Miller light truck nut masculinity wasn't an extreme enough term to encapsulate this concept. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Should have been like uh Darwin award masculinity or something. I don't even know. We'll have to, we'll have to workshop this. Yeah. What do you guys we'll, think we'll in the chat? We'll come up with a new term. <laughs> I like it. I like uh, it. Be yeah. Best time here. Can we not say Jews now? You can, but that's the point. If you do and you start doing it pejoratively, doing your parentheses, a, it's not really mapped to anything in real life anyway, so you're just kind of doing theatrics. And B, it's really not palatable to people who are in a position to do something about it, so why would you do that? It's yeah, not hard to use a euphemism. Bear. Yeah, you're poking the bear at that point. Yeah, I can talk about how the Austrian painter scene has created a culture of people who love struggle hugging. Like, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm, not, I'm kind of being cheeky with it, right? <laughs> Chinese do that now with their version of Twitter. It's like Weibo or Weibo, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, where they know that if they want to shit on the Communist Party, they can't do that. So they have like euphemisms they use instead, which is so vague that 
it's very easy. Like the, the government comes by, were you talking shit about, you know, whoever? And you're like, no, no, no. I was just talking about flower gardens. But everybody knows. So if yeah. you really have to rant about Austrian painters, <laughs> be smart about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm Canadian though. Like, dude, I was on the West Coast my whole life. I didn't even know, like, Jewish people were like a meme to me until I was 35. I met my first one in Montreal when I was like 34, 35. And I'm not even past the point now where I'm still like asking about the, hey, what holiday is this one? <laughs> Tell me about the hat. Why is this holiday here? Why is this one? And I'm finding out most of them are just, we had a big battle. We slaughtered a lot of guys who were fucking with us. And then we have a big meal to celebrate. And I realized that's basically the Hebrew faith within writ three large. sentences. Yep, that's the writ large. Yep, you summed it up right there, too. That's beautiful. Which to me uh, sounds a lot like the Sikh religion, because most of their shit, too, was like, yeah, here's where we fought, like, you know, an Arab army, wore a turban, had some food. I'm like, All right. So most religions are basically around kicking ass and chewing bubblegum, basically. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Oh, God. Plus, I do like their version of, like, you know how there's tithing for the church, whatever? Yeah. I like how they just, like, tax food, like halal and uh, kosher. You basically pay, and a rabbi comes to, you know, bless your food, and then you can serve food to the people of their faith. It's like a nice value-added tax for Bronze Age religions. Damn oh, clever. I, I never even thought about that one. Oh, I could be wrong. It's just the way I've seen it there. Yeah, That's no, the beauty it, of it. The it, guy it, who has no concept of any of this shit, how he yeah. sees it. <laughs> well, the funny thing is I'm sitting here thinking, you know, you probably understand American politics better than most Americans. And and you're not American. <laughs> well, most Canadians do. That's why every conservative pundit right now is a fucking Canadian. Like Gavin McInnes and Steven Crowder and... How many others are there? I'm pretty sure I, if you name anyone other than like the Hodge twins, which do you remember when they used to be about relationship advice? No. I'm talking about, oh, dude, they used to have tons of videos where it's like getting into them sweet walls and putting that mushroom stamp. And that's all. They're just talking about dicks and whatever. And then before <laughs> that, they were all about working out. They basically like Elliot Hulse and them were, were like this. And then Elliot's like, hey, you know what's great? Breathing in the ice. And these guys were like, you know what's great? Hose. And then that's how... But then they're all coming back like, you know what's great? Trump. And now it's like, I never liked Trump anyway. And they're kind of... <laughs> all, road, all roads eventually lead to Rome. <laughs> they do, too. Uh, we're we're going to get back to Constantinople here soon. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> well, I got to catch myself, that. though, man. I, do, I start doing about Canadian politics, which is even worse. Because, A, you're still that idiot ranting about politics. But 99% uh, of YouTube doesn't give a shit about Canadian politics past the meme of Trudeau's such a homosexual and you're like oh. <laughs> well you're not wrong because I know when when you've gone off a little bit or I've seen someone else bring up Canadian politics all, all I'm doing is like and <laughs> yeah and you're like who the fuck is Mad Max what the hell are you talking about <laughs> what the hell does big L liberal mean and little L liberal you you're talking Swedish yeah uh, it's like I you know what I, I don't even understand uh, the only thing for me besides the White House when you guys burned that down, you know, because I'm still People sore got mad that. on that one, man. That was Fuck good. you guys. We weren't ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It wasn't Canadians at the time. It was Brits. I'm like, technically, you were Brits, too, back then, last I checked. Yep. Yeah, like, not, you weren't Americans for, like, another two years, if I remember yep. correctly. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so the, the things when I look at it is it's like, well... We got yeah, the, Trudeau's a homosexual, so that works. Uh, we've got the the burning of the White House, still sore spot too soon. <laughs> and the other one for me that I think of is, uh, oh, you guys, we we did export something to you guys, and you guys took it to a whole nother level, and that was the Hell's Angels. Oh yeah, dude, BC. My stepdad used to chop for the Hell's Angels. I remember this. Oh yeah, I remember. You, when that's when you become a man. Room. Yeah, you become a man when you realize that all of your all your farm equipment and toys are all fucking hot goods from the angels. Yep. Yeah. The day I grew up. Even my quad. Yeah. Even your quad. Yep. Why would we buy you a Suzuki just because? I'm like, oh, fair enough. Mm hmm. That's what I mean. That that was you know something that we exported to you guys, and you guys took it with gusto. It's like, oh, that it makes the the angels down here look like a bunch of you know lame asses sitting around virtue signaling on Twitter. 
That's so, what I'm wondering too. Which ones are the more badass chapters? So the Quebec ones are fucking brutal. New York mafia style brutal. Yep. But then the ones in like BC too, like along like the oil rigs and the mining stuff on the West Coast, those ones are brutal. I don't know which one is worse. I know which one's more popular, and that's your that's your Quebec ones. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that have had movies and docu series and fucking books written about. Oh what yeah, wasn't that the ones that uh, what's his face that author? What the fuck is his name again? The Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas guy was that the Montreal chapter he was with? Yeah, you're talking about Hunter Thompson. That's the one. Yep. I will say this: I did party with the Angels once. It yeah. was actually right out of basic training. I just got off. I had like three weeks before I had to go to my unit, and so I went back home. And my sister took me out to Kelowna and she goes, I'm going to a party. Uh, let's have some fun. And then, you know, we're having fun. And my sister is fucking wild. Like she runs wild. A thin blonde girl at the time. It was like, stay out of her way. Because <laughs> she's going to get everybody else killed and nobody's going to hurt her because she's like a blonde, thinny white chick, right? And the guy who, there was her, the dude she was fucking, that guy's friend who owned like a 1976 Ferrari. He's like, it's great. I only paid 30 grand and now I have a Ferrari. And I'm wow. <laughs> Sat in there, drove it around. It's actually kind of cool. It's kind of fun. And he goes, hey, I'm going to go to a party, but we got to ditch my friend and your sister because they're going to get us fucking killed. Do you want to come? I'm like, yeah, sure. So we go to this party. It's this log cabin in Kelowna having so much fun. Sit down. Look like this guy looked like Hulk Hogan surrounded by chicks and they're having like a poker game over here, having drinks. And then we get in there. I'm like, I don't get it. What would be the problem here? He goes, just so you know, this is like a Hell's Angels party. I'm like, oh, I have my dog tags on the inside of my shirt because I was a brand new sailor. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> Last thing I need to do is be around organized crime just as I got my security clearance, right? Oops. But whatever. And I remember, I don't remember much of the party because I was, they were just throwing drinks at you. They didn't care. And they were the most cordial people I've ever seen. Yep. Nobody started a fight. And in the redneck towns I'm from in BC, fights always happen at parties. But this one, oddly not enough. Hmm. Not nothing. Go figure, right? And I remember at one point, this girl started hitting on me and I fucking panic because I'm like, all right, she may think she's single, but does every fucking guy, does Hulk Hogan think she's single too? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> is she, is she community property or is she some dude's old lady? Yeah. So yep. I lucked out on that one. She ended up sitting on my lap and getting the ride home with the Lamborghini or the Ferrari and all that stuff, having a lot of fun. I came home. I'm telling my brother and my buddies were all sitting around like partying together the next day. I'm telling them about the story and they're calling me liars and like, whatever, fuck off. And then all of a sudden, Dunks, our one high school friend, he's like, dude, you got to come in here. And I look over and their TV's playing and I'm like, hey, that's the cabin. And then I see RCMP hauling guys out in cuffs. I'm like, oh my God, that's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I guess they raided the place like four hours later and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> wow, you almost got caught up in a sweep. I know. And it was just like the most random thing. No, I didn't alpha male to get into that party or whatever. It just happened to be in the right place, right time. And I just, mm -hmm. I don't know why I was, oh, I was telling that story because we talked about the angels. They have very few Hell's Angel stories. That's like one of two of them. And it's always <laughs> one I always laugh about. That's a good one. But yeah, we, you know, that's when I think of Canada and politics and whatnot, besides the goofy shit, obviously, <laughs> like uh, the, the, the royal, you know, the, the, the Mounties, you're, and I think of Dudley do right. You really? Know. You should be thinking of like hardcore racism and like black lives matter beatdowns. They've been in shit for a long time for that. Really? Well, yeah, I, dude, I, I they, don't live in Canada. They had a federal probe because there was so much outrage over them, like literally executing people. There was a story of a, a Polish guy who was having a seizure or something and they tased him to death. In this Vancouver was the Airport. Royal, the, the yeah, Royal, our no? FBI basically. Wow. Um, there was a story that came out that started the, that followed onto that one where this one guy who was like native or black, I can't remember which, but in his unit, guys were like flat out, like none of this racism's like, hey, do you play basketball? No, it was like, screw you and you're like, you know, insert slur baby there, guy, brand new father, and they're throwing slurs out at his kid. Oh, wow. Nobody was working with him. He got gaslit. His boss is refusing promotion. They're throwing and all this shit. And then. There was a bunch of chicks too that had like casting couch promotions and shit like that. Yeah, they fuck. <laughs> wow. And then once you started getting up north, that's when, because that's Hell's Angels territory. So they were like a tougher breed of cop. Now, I don't know. Maybe it's justified. Maybe it's not. But they're literally driving people out into the tundra and then beating the shit out of them and leaving there. Plus that uh, serial killer we had up and down the Highway of Tears where the guys were stealing like native prostitutes along the highway and murdering them. 
the Picton farm, feeding them to pigs. The cops basically like ignored that because like, yeah, it's not a concern. Fucking serial killer running rampant for seven years. Yeah, oh, they Jesus. don't let don't let the funky hat and the do south episodes fool you, man. They got yeah. a lot of. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm aware, obviously, that just like anywhere, there's going to be shit, you yeah. know. But like I said, from an American perspective, I think of, you know, like Strange Brew, Dudley oh, Do yeah. Right, you know. Hey, oh, hey, you know. The, yeah, the uh, Canada the nice. That's, you know how you guys export freedom? We yeah. export nice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're yeah. not that nice. We're yeah, passive. Exactly. Well, and that's, but that's where I look at it. And I think, but on the more darker side from my take anyway, it's like, well, we exported the Hell's Angels to you guys, and you guys grew them into some fucking serious players. Yeah, well, you what know? can I say? It's all about the oil. <laughs> yeah, Basically, you guys hard. made ISIS what they are when you exported freedom over there. You guys exported the angels over here, and we made them into Hell's Angels. Ah. Except for the flag's not nearly as cool for the angels. By the way, if there's any angels in the chat, dudes, the party was fun. I got no beef with you guys. I'm just chucking shit. Don't take it too seriously. I don't want to visit. <laughs> I got no beefs with you guys. Whatever. Right now, I'm kind of choked at the government, so you guys keep doing what you're doing. Uh, there you go. Keep at it, boys. <laughs> there, there's a fucking disclaimer you need to put on a goddamn video. <laughs> this is not an anti-Hells Angel rant in any shape or form. It's merely no, satire. That's not to it. be fi financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. This is not financial advice. This is not life coaching advice. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I hate that. I hate that macho. I've been to jail mask. This is why I hate that, by the way. This is the shit I grew up around. Fucking criminals. I was inbred Blaine. He was a friend of my stepdad's. And they used to tell this story about how they broke a guy's arm for stealing his chainsaw. They were smoking crack. I actually I've been around crack more than Ed Lattimore. I don't like bragging about it because it's kind of embarrassing. But it was just one of those funny things as we talk. He's like, you did what? I'm like, uh oh, how does the crack account? Telling me, dude, that's a lot of crack. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> but he got murdered. My sister's boyfriend, when I was like 17, got murdered. Like literally knocked on his door, shot him in the face kind of stuff. And I've seen crime just decimate my town and every marriage and that. And when I see guys talking about having balls and criminals are the real alphas, I'm like, this reminds me of those idiots who talk about how they want to work on a farm. I'm like, no, you oh, fucking don't. Yeah, I, I, I want to do physical labor and, and dig ditches. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, you, that tells me right there you've never dug a ditch in your life. Soft because, hand, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I'm like, there's no way in hell that I would go back to doing some of the shit I did because it, it is backbreaking, miserable fucking work. Yeah. Like, yeah. You guys are taking that as a virtue? Fuck off. Yeah, that's like, LARPing to extent. I will never forget that feeling of waking up aching. Like, I know it's not 60 year old men who are like, oh, I ache when I get up now because I've been working no. too most of my life. No, it's like, I'm like 15 waking up aching. That's not like, yeah, yeah, okay, that's what we used to be, but no, no cold showers, none of that knuckle push up shit. No, normal push ups, padded gloves, and a hot sh fucking shower. Fuck you guys. That's right. And I'll take I'll, I'll make it up on the masculinity sugar. index later. <laughs> <laughs> the masculinity index. Yeah. Like, oh, I love it. Yeah, but no, that's. It's funny because you're talking about a little bit of your past with family and friends and whatnot and mm -hmm. talking about uh, inmate Twitter. And, <laughs> and it's funny because I think about it and I too have family members who have done deeds that got them incarcerated for extended periods of time. In, the, in, like, in like Mormon state? Oh yeah, yeah. Utah's Jesus. got its share of criminals. Oh. Uh, one of them is a, a cousin of mine who did like, 15 years in a federal penitentiary. Okay. God damn. Well, the guy, it's funny because, you know, he comes out and he's got all kinds of jailhouse tats and whatnot. And he had joined up with, uh, one of the, uh, prominent gangs in the prison because he needed to survive. And so yeah. in prison, color is a real thing. What, what color you are, it counts in prison. It may not count for much out on the street, but inside, it's it's kind of a big deal. So it he makes had, sense. You're all wearing the same clothes. You got to distinguish for something, right? Right. So he had to join up with the Aryan Nation, and so he's got swastika tattoos and Adolf Hitler and all that kind of shit all Jeez. over his body. 
Okay, it's not that he is racist or that he was racist. It's what he had, what he had to, to do. To survive. Yeah, I get it. Okay, because he saw and did some really fucked up shit while he was in prison. Okay, one thing I know about this cousin of mine when he got out, other than telling me, don't ever do that and go to prison. You know, don't make the mistakes I did. You don't ever want to go to prison. He doesn't want to talk about it, you know? And so I'm looking at these guys that, yeah, you know, I was in prison for 10 years for whatever. And, you know, and it was, and I'm hardcore and I'm hard to kill. And I'm thinking my cousin, yeah, dude, would probably, no. my cousin doesn't even want to talk about prison that he's like, can I, I just want to put it behind me and get on with my life, man. You know, he's ashamed of his tattoos, but it's like, it's what I had to do at the time. I can't afford to get laser surgery or whatever to get these things removed. So I got to basically wear long sleeves the rest of my life. Stuck with turtlenecks for the rest of his life. That's pretty much fate worse than death. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. I look like I'm in the seventies going to the club. God damn it. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. You know, the guy's got to cover up at all times because he's got all kinds of white supremacist propaganda on his body. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that's what he had to do to survive that. And I, and yet I'm looking at him going, okay, he did some real time and in a federal penitentiary where it's day for day, you know, you you don't get out on early behavior. You don't get that kind of treatment. Right. It's a gladiator academy. And it's like, so every fucking day of the years he was in there, he was living hard. And it's yet he's not coming out and getting on social media. And let me tell you about my 10 years that I was in prison. You know, know. In fact, wasn't the one guy like tax fraud or something stupid like that too, talking about being hard in prison. Yeah, I, you know what? I don't even want to like, but I agree with you. It's I miss shame, shame and dignity, right? If you want to go back to trad, that's what I want. Shame and dignity. Bring yep. those back. <laughs> Fuck, I'm embarrassed enough now when guys ask what I do. I just say author now author and I make YouTube videos and even I like the YouTube videos. I say it quietly at the end because I don't want the what kind of videos eh, it's how to sleep with women. <laughs> I work with these guys. I work with this guy here, you know. Red pill four twenty sixty nine, <laughs> sexy wampa one. <laughs> yeah, with his amazing video on why the divorce industry is rape and akin to like the Holocaust. Like, yeah, that's that's my peers. Yeah, that that that's my people. <laughs> Not an ounce of shame on them either. Not an nope. ounce. It's like, ah, oh, whatever. Trump was going to be the god emperor, and I'm coming back, and Hillary's the devil, and I'm going to go storm a pizza joint with a rifle, and you're just like, what the fuck. Maybe that's the big problem. Maybe it's not that men can't get laid. Maybe it's that there's no more and there's no rites of passage shit. Maybe it's that like friends. Ah, like the one guy that's around you to say that ain't it. No, man, (laughs) slow down. Like Carl's that you're that my really good friend. Chris is like that. There's lots of good people that are like that in my life. So I know even if I try to go off the edge, they at least would warn me first. Yeah, I, I would be. I know I would be like, what are you doing, Ryan? Uh, you think that's a good idea? That's what terrifies me about uh, Stedman's thing. Like, I actually feel pity for him on this one. All that time and all that shit he did. Nobody tried to talk him off a ledge. Nobody. Not only that, they tried talking him into it. They're like, this is the best idea you've ever had. Yep. Oh, my God. You are a true hero. Because yeah, like, look at me. Balls. Hold my beer. I'm going to walk off a ledge. Oh my God, that is brave and stunning. And I just think like, remember feminists when they're like, yeah, cut your hair, girl. And if he doesn't like you, that's his fault. Gain 50 pounds. He should love you at any size. And they're just like, I think we're supposed to be better than this shit. I, I, I thought so, but want it to be. Yeah. That's, that's always been my thoughts, but, and, and I tied that into something I said, even the other night with Nick and bull, we were Mm -hmm. talking about, uh, technology that, why you and I and Rolo and Rich and all, why we even exist, why we're having these conversations and whatnot and doing what we do. A lot of it's not just because dad wasn't in the house. You know, that's the big one that everyone wants to use as the convenient answers. Daddy was gone, rather physically, mentally, emotionally. He was a pushover, whatever. So they're kind of demonizing dad a little bit. And in some cases, there may be validity in that. And same with, you know, they can demonize mom because mom was a cunt and yeah, maybe she was, but the one thing a lot don't really bring up that I think is a bigger one is technology. You oh, got so like, generate... you're like the atomization of people now. Yeah. Because you have technology where we now have the first generation of people. I, I'm going to sound like Rolo here, Did but it. we have a generation of people that have grown up online. It's they've known it from day one. 
And that's all they do to interact with one another is they're texting and, and selfieing and, and Instagramming each other. They don't know how to even Stop have adding a ing at the end of technology. You sound like a boomer. <laughs> right. With the texting and the sexting <laughs> and the twitting and the Twitters. And that's right. The, the, the tweetering and all that. Yeah. And the but vlogs. <laughs> <laughs> right. But a lot of it's technology. They don't know how to interact like you do, like I do, where we were pre-internet at some point. I definitely was. Well, and yeah. so you had to face to face and that's where your friends would either tell you, dude, that, that ain't it. Or they might, you know, you say something stupid enough instead of going, well, he had balls. That's when you got punched in the face. And sometimes it was your friend doing it to save you the bigger beating that was coming your way. <laughs> Here's you a know? classic. Trust me, you want this better. I remember right. those. Yeah. I think, yeah, and I think we're in the last generation for that. It's, I don't, because I don't know how, when yours is, but that I had 19, what do they say, 1977 to like 1983, that little micro generation, they call it like Oregon Trail. Yeah. Is the ones that grew up without internet and played with rocks and sticks and then had internet just on the cusp of becoming adults. That sounds about accurate. Yeah. See, I'm definitely Gen X because I was born in 72. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, but that so, but the point was like old school enough to know what human interaction is pre-internet, but yep. tech savvy enough that, you know, I understand why a zoomer is doing a TikTok where he's dancing talking about his depression, right? Yep. Oh, it's yeah. almost like a gap bridging thing and it's yep. I don't want to say it's our responsibility to drag everybody into this, but it's one nice unique unique life experience we have that's kind of like not going to happen again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're we're pre-internet enough to remember what it was like back in the day, but yeah. we're not so isolated and and so obsolete as to not be able to comprehend what these younger people are now doing. Yeah, like I'll never call it the Twitters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the right. Twitters and the, the vlog and the gate of gamers. And, and that weird funny TV channel you watch on your computer that, yeah. what is it, that MeTube or something? Yeah, go go watch some sports. Stop watching this gameplay, God damn it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, like my boomer father, I mentioned YouTube to him and he's, he has no, when I tell him I do shows, I have to, for my dad to comprehend it, I have to tell him, dad, you know those uh, TV talk shows you watch on TV and they sit around a microphone and talk to each other? Yeah, that's pretty much what I do. Huh. Then he then he comprehends that if oh, I try so to you're tell like him, Rush Limbaugh. That's yeah, awesome. kind of. Yeah, I kind of have to go that direction with him. I have to tell him, yeah. you know, because if I tell him live streaming, he's like, what the hell's that? <laughs> and, and even if I mention, well, it's kind of like being on a radio station and people call in, except we can see each other. And he's still kind of like, and that's why I have to tell him it's like those you know, sit downs where they're all in the room and they got the microphone in the middle and they, they sit in their chairs and they debate shit back and forth. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what I do, dad. That's pretty much what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. good. As long as he gets it. Yeah. He understands Holy it. Fuck. We've been on for like almost four hours now. Yeah. We probably well, fuck ought to Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, I'm good, dude. I, I set aside plenty of time to, to do whatever and it would go as long as it needs to go i'm more right. of hey if you got shit to do man you know i'll cut you loose and you can go take care of business because all no, I'm my girl do had to go out she's gonna go take uh take care of a friend from work she's a uh, older lady has nobody around for covid so she's gonna go keep her company hopefully bring covid home why don't we cut <laughs> it off at like the on the four hour mark we got 15 okay. minutes that sounds good i kind of like that. this last chit chat we don't talk yeah. and collab much anyway mostly because i'm just too disorganized to schedule something outside of like the core stuff i do well, and you know what, but it's, it's kind of the same with me. It's, mm -hmm. I, I get guys all the time that are Rob, you know, have you seen this video? No. Have you read this blog? No. Have you listened <laughs> to this audio? No. Well, why not? It's like, uh, I make my own videos. I make my own audios. I'm on at least three different shows a week and I hold down a 10 hour day job and I date and I go see my dad. When do I have fucking time to do all this other shit you guys want me to do? I'm busy. Uh, the content creator dilemma. I'm yeah. so busy working that I don't have time to consume. <laughs> exactly. Which is a beautiful thing in my book. It's like, wow, I, I'm not nearly as irate and pissed off because I don't have time to get irate and pissed off. I have to, I have to amp myself up to do it. Well, and you, that's what I like because I can tell you're social because you do that with like when we're talking, 
we both know when we're talking to the other person we talk about a thing we've done like oh yeah my last thing on this or my tweet like this you always kind of sum it up as you talk about it so the other guy can i don't want to say save face but has that impression like he can save face by like oh yeah that one no idea what you're talking about but he's enough to follow along right right (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah but that's i've but that's where I was, you know, when I hit you up and you were like, well, hey, this Sunday works, you know, this time. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to pretty much free up most of my Sunday. I mean, yeah, there's going to come a point you're going to have yeah, to pee. Give me all that free time, you motherfucker. <laughs> hey, but you know what? I'm enjoying this. That's the point. I've wanted to have you on my show forever. It was just finding the time and saying, hey, man, can you make it or not? Yeah. Just like Carl, when I've had him on, getting trying to get- Dude, he took it personally that you won't have him on when he's sober, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking uh, about that all weekend on the show. He's like, yeah, I don't get what's with you guys. I was told Rob, yeah, I'd love to do a show with you. I'm just not drinking for January. He's like, all right, we'll schedule for February then. <laughs> like, the I, I want you drinking because I'm going to drink, damn it. <laughs> God. That's I'm so I really want to start the homebrew thing. Like he and Chesty have both like I, I know exactly the kid I want. I know the beers I want to try. I've got like space set aside for it like the smaller ones here, but I just know like I'm on a cut right now. And Mm -hmm. so I drink when I'm on a cut, but I calculate the calories for the drinking. And if I brew my own beer, there's no way I'm going to be able to drink two gallons of beer and have any manner of cut to me. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) But it looks like so much fun. And I would love if I could make like a bitter ass, one of those estrogen inducing IPAs. I'm so mad. I'll drink estrogen. I don't give a fuck. I'll still be fine. I'll still outman you with your stupid Miller light brand motherfucker. (laughs) <laughs> social signals you know the ones yes ah, so, i love it dude i love social signaling once i've kind of learned it it's really turned down the the heat on auto like the political hot takes because mm-hmm. i've always confused me for the longest time that diversity is our strength line and like Im- mass immigration should be a great thing and everybody's like there's all these problems now the labor wages are down people become poorer uh crime goes up What's the other one? The uh, community trust goes down and it sounds just bad across the board. And then I think it was either Jeff Miller or a different guy when he's talking about these social signals. Yeah, this is basically your way of sending an expensive signal that says, see all these problems with this diversity thing. None of them affect me. And so you're like basically proclaiming genetic fitness Mm -hmm. in a social signal, which I'm like, oh, fuck, that's clever. Yep. And that explains why everybody starts repeating like very contradictory statements saying I can I can be batshit crazy. And I'm still doing better than these people who have their reality in gear. That makes sense why girls dress ugly. You know, hot chicks when they dress up in like fucking homeless clothes. Oh, God. Yeah, that's a flex. Hey, I'm so hot that I can dress in a plastic bag and you'll still want to fuck me more than Susan over here. Yeah. Or or, uh, a a burlap canvas bag. Yeah. Yeah. Those ones. Yep. Yeah, totally. That it that. Oh, my God. That does make sense, too. From that point of view, I never even thought about that till right now. And it also makes sense then why you hear all these guys bragging about being alpha males and people take the wrong message from it. Well, the right one, but the wrong one, according to the alpha male. Yeah. To where the you guy think he's just an it. idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, you wouldn't understand. This is what evolved alphaness looks like. Exactly. Of course you don't, you dumb fucking dirty plebe. You have no clue. And that's, that's And I got to give him credit, man. Ajax Cortez there, when he did that thing in the ballet outfit, everybody's calling him gay. And he's like, I'm like, it's a pretty good social signal. Yeah, I can wear tights and chicks will still want to fuck me over you. The big mm-hmm. shit eating grin on his face. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah. Red pills for 2069 is like, man, fuck that guy. He needs to be like me. He needs to right. play soul caliber. Uh, he needs or, to play soul caliber. He needs to grow out his beard and be a lumber sexual. <laughs> that was the only, that's how I did the, the what I did Twitch there. And now I'm doing the game shit there. It was me thinking about that expensive social signals. I'm like, all right, that's the angle. I can sit here and play two hours of live streams for I'm playing Tekken because I get enough fucking done. And I got enough money done that I can basically chit chat with you guys while I'm playing a Jackie Chan simulator. And oh, still I, do okay. and I love it. I, I've noticed that you uh, decided to, I guess, uh, put more attention towards your digital channel, which that's good. Yeah, everybody kept telling me and I keep forgetting that because I see it doesn't mean anybody else sees it. <laughs> right <laughs> plus that's my just in case like a hey, red pill get them off the internet 
just in case Trump comes back. And that's my uh, like backup. Yeah. What are they going to do? Boot me off for that? Oh, this Minecraft Let's Play, man. It's got to go. <laughs> no, man. I'm not going to be Stefan Molyneux. No fucking way. I hear you there. Well, and what I took from it too, what it reminded me of when you first started it up, like with with that channel and with the Twitch, mm -hmm. besides it was more like a fireside in a way where it's like, oh, it's just a bunch of dudes sitting around talking shit while you play video games. Yeah, You still were dropping nuggets. So it was like, oh, this is cooking videos 2.0. I yeah, like well, you got to talk about something. Yeah. Might Be like well the standard Let's Player where they just basically describe how they're playing with like as, as manic a voice as possible to keep interest as long as you can. I mm -hmm. fucking hate those guys too. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't, I don't typically watch. Like I said, that's where catching you on Mondays when you were doing Twitch, it's like, oh, I got some time. I'm off today. Let, oh, fuck it. I'll go hang Dude, out. It always warmed my heart when I saw you or Chesty in there, you know? Yeah. yeah well, yeah. I know it surprised you the first time when I said hi to you on Twitch and you're like, Rob, wow. Yeah, well, what know? the fuck are you doing on here? You're what? <laughs> isn't, aren't the Seahawks playing? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so not the sports guy. It's like, no, nope, I'd rather watch video games when it comes <laughs> to that. It's like, no, not the sports guy. I'm not the Jersey guy. I, I am totally indifferent to professional sports. It's like, dude, eh, it's, whatever. dude, there's a skill to it. I never considered like, I don't know if you do any game streaming at all. I don't, I have done, I've, the, I've done the, uh, what the you masculine geek it. stuff. Well, there's that, but when it comes to actual gameplay, it was the among us that you, uh, was like, Hey, you should come on and do this with us. Oh I'd yeah. No, no. That again too. The group stuff is fun. I, I actually yep. wouldn't mind doing that again too. I'm talking solo. It's oh, fucking no. harder than it looks. Yeah. Like I realized this cause I've noticed Tekken especially cause I have to focus on what I'm doing cause I'm trying mm -hmm. to level, I'm trying to get up a higher rank, but it takes like 20% of my attention to talk to an audience and that 20% costs me. So I usually like I'll practice for like two hours during the week and then stream for two hours and I go up and then as soon as I get on stream, it's just Marty laughing at me getting stomped and I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck, just to be able to keep a point and a conversation going in your head while you're focused on this thing is goddamn difficult. Mm -hmm. And I see now why people do Minecraft because it's like a much easier paced game so I don't have to pay 100% attention. Yeah, you're not going to lose your ass if you take your eye off the monitor for a second. Yeah, and I'm good at that skill. Dude, when I used to work in the Navy, I used to be a bridge watch keeper. Fucking good one, too. And one skill you learn is how to have a conversation and an ear on the radio and eyes on like the monitor all at the same time. It's like I'd have to talk with giving an order or a uh, communication to the officer of the watch but the radio, I got to listen out for communications while I'm having a conversation with the bosun mate because it's eight hours of boredom out there. And to be able to multitask like that is a real skill. And, and even then, I still get fucked over. Yep. Like, I need Ritalin <laughs> or Xanax. What's what's the good one? Ritalin, Xanax, Ambi No, Ambien's for when you want to get fucked up. You want to Yeah, Ambien will put you to sleep. Yeah, you'll sleepwalk and sleep eat and sleep fuck and everything else on Ambien. No, don't, don't fuck with that one. You would not... You would actually you would be surprised out of all of you know who i work with yeah. and you know who i have worked with in the past but no yep. longer work with yes you have no idea how many of those guys are on fucking pills of some sort it actually wouldn't surprise me yeah and i used to Based think it was on... just the space but now i realize i think it's just everybody's on pills like everybody it kind of seems that way doesn't it yeah i i don't fully understand it either because I'm the guy that I I'll, I'll live with a headache for six hours. Then <laughs> not taking aspirin. Yep. Then not taking aspirin. Yeah. That's kind of how I roll that when I go and get like a physical or a checkup and the doctors or the nurse will always ask, you know, what meds are you on? I'm like, I'm not on any meds. Yeah. And they're same. like, you're not on anything. It's like, well, I take aspirin occasionally. Mm -hmm. You know, if I get a really bad headache, I'll take a couple of aspirin. They're like, but you're not on anything. No blood thinners, no, uh, heart meds, no boner <laughs> meds, no fucking antidepressants, anti-anxiety. It's like, no, nope. they're like, wow, dude, there was like a year long period where they had me on that in the military during the panic attack and the Batman origin story shit. That's the one lesson I took. It's like your prison one. I ain't never going back. Yeah. Fuck that. Nope. Oh yeah. It's, I, I see what it does to people and, and it, it explains in some cases their behaviors. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, well, I can see why this guy's out on the, out on the ledge. You know, he's on a, a cocktail of, of Oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, exactly. Dusty in here. That's right. <laughs> 
it, it makes a lot of sense. You know, it's like, well, yeah, the dude's on all kinds of meds. That's got to fuck with your brain chemistry at some point. Mm -hmm. And not like in a I'm, good way. And I'm still wondering if uh, El Presidente, <laughs> that's the only thing that makes sense. The last time I've seen people act that chaotic is when they started getting nose candy. And that's my running theory, because I'm like, it says yeah, like nose candy or he was on some kind of meds that stabilized him and he got off them. Oh, yeah. Because that now that be Rolo's more. pitching my shit, I don't need these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Wait, no. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Because that that's my two takes too. You're I'm in the same boat as you. It's like, well, either you found snow or uh, or you got off of something that you really ought to be <laughs> staying on. Exactly. Yeah. So what are you gonna do? I don't know. Some people are just born to fail. I guess there's eight billion of us. We could lose like a billion or two and not worry too much. Oh, I, I the world wouldn't even slow down with that type of a loss, in my opinion. I used to say that, but now with like how many people from COVID, like ten thousand, twenty thousand, the world did slow down. But that's only, mostly because only we're all because panicky. Of that's why it's only because of, that's it. It's because of fear. It, even with the loss of people that have died from. You know, and it's such a paltry loss compared to some of the other losses we've had over the, the years. Mm -hmm. But it's it's the fear factor. That's all that is. Oh, we're still dude. COVID is still way behind tuberculosis and like yearly murders. Oh, it's way behind pretty much everything down here other than I think the only thing. Well, it's right. It up overtook there the with, flu. Yeah, but that's because it, it was flu. stealing the flu's numbers. <laughs> there you go. The only thing that I think that it that's it's going to reach it's almost as dangerous as people dying from the common cold. Jesus Christ. That's it. Shut down the mall. Yep. Because, you know, people die. We're, we're seeing the same numbers that die from complications due to the cold. Well, that's COVID. And it's Fuck like, me. wow, we're shutting down the entire world over the cold, basically, over the same numbers. And it's don't get like, me wrong. My investments have never been happier. All this panic selling people have whenever an industry has some COVID after effect. It's really been helpful. Oh, I'm buy sure. it when they're freaking out and then just wait for them to stop freaking out. And then I sell. Yep. Oh, yeah. Buy the dip. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, I'm so pissed. I was like my latest one. I don't want to say what I invested in because right. I don't want to jinx it. Right. But it's been bouncing between 20 and 23. So I'm like, oh, I'll just buy it at 20 and sell it at 23. And then sure enough, it worked right for like the first three dips. And this last one, then it dropped down to 19. And now it's back to 20. And I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> But then I remember all that means instead of waiting two weeks, I just wait a month. Yeah. Granted, at the beginning of COVID, it was at trading at like 50 in the 50s. So oh, wow. Worst case scenario, if I just leave it there and ignore it for a couple of years, it'll go back. Oh, probably. Well, and I think I'm, you know, this is not financial advice because mm -hmm. I'm not an investor, but that seems to be the kind of the, the main point that I have gotten from investing is you find whatever it is. And you put your money in it and then stop looking at the fucking, the, 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 the graph, you know, yeah. stop watching it, stop obsessing over it. And you kind of hold it for the long term. And it tends to, unless they totally tank it, that tends to work out better, but it's, yeah. you don't get that dopamine rush of, oh my God, it went up to 300 or whatever. You know, you don't get that from it. And that was my thought, because back in the day when I was first investing, everybody was saying a 10% return in the year was considered a good year. And I think that's still the case, right? I I, I, mean, I believe so. Unless you're in, in GameStop or Bitcoin, but... Right, yeah. But if you're doing kind of more conservative investing, that's that sounds about right. But that's all I do now is, so if I get a 10% boost in anything, I pull it out. I don't worry if it's going to go up another 10% or whatever. I'm like, 10%, that's a year's worth of investing right there. And then if, if something dips again, looks opportunistic, I'll go into that and then hold it there. And if it goes up 10, and even that, that used to be called risky investing back in the day. Now, I don't know what the fuck. People are looking at me like a, Jesus, you're such a pussy. You should have put 20,000 in GameStop when the banks were halting trades or something. And I'm like, I, don't know. I like my heart where it is now, not fucking in my stomach. <laughs> right? <laughs> at least you know. You know oh, that's dude, what I mean. These GameStop guys and the Bitcoin guys, I'm like, how the fuck do you guys handle this? Are you yeah. are you on Xanax right now? And that's how you can keep level like I couldn't do that heroin. <laughs> Wait, yeah, wake up in the morning to 40 grand, have a coffee. It's 30,000. It's like I just want to sit down and watch like a watch PewDiePie talk about dicks like fuck slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Think about my future where I want to retire. I don't want to sit here and just like jump out the window. Then halfway down, my stock recovers. And I was like, oh, shit.
<laughs> grab onto now. that grab onto the rope that the the window cleaners are using and hopefully it has burned my hands a bit yeah exactly <laughs> i don't know if you guys in the chat have like a have like a system where you can handle these ups and downs without a panic attack you let me know because i, I want to fucking learn that skill and i'm level-headed as the next guy ah uh, you're, you're probably even more level-headed than me then because i the, the swings are too high couldn't do it mm. couldn't do it uh well i think for me it's the book the revenue the p passive revenue from like the book and the audio book and that i'm like all right my retirement plan is basically to have these properties make enough money that I'll be okay. And then my pension, all those other funds, I'm like, I'll just trade that for my future. And we'll see what happens. There you go. Hey. Government's well, already taxed half of it, so I'm already pissed off. Uh, Dude, can you believe that? Military, you're forced to contribute to your pension after taxes. So it's money you've already paid taxes on. If you leave the military before 20 years... They give you what's called a return of contributions. Now, of that, 50% of what your pension is will go into what's called a locked RRSP. It's like a 401 or a Roth. Okay. It's tax deferred, goes in there, no taxes paid on that. The other half of it gets taxed at the highest tax percentage. So of my already paid tax paid money that went to my pension, they took another 40% of it right on the top. So by the oh. time I get it, 200000 turns into 50000 Ah, oh. which was annoying. But luckily, after like this whole COVID and the panic thing, I managed to get it back. So I've made my money back on taxes, and it's in what's called a TFSA, which is tax-free savings account. Okay. So basically, you've already paid taxes on this. Whatever, there's no capital gains on whatever you earn out of it. I just oh, I'm annoyed that we need like a worldwide pandemic in order for me to like mitigate the tax damages because the military has shitty fucking planning. Ah. Oh. Yeah. What it reminds me of is the kind of, and I don't know how it is in Canada, but like in Utah is a good example, since the states are all doing their own thing when it comes to like income tax. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have, you, you get your pay, the government, the feds take a cut. That's your federal income tax. Then the state, at least in Utah, takes a cut. And then you got like social security and a couple other things in there. But then, okay, so you get your, your net earnings and you go out to buy groceries. Now you're paying sales tax on money oh, that's already just taxed. What's your guys' sales tax? Let's, let's, do, let's, let's compare dicks right now. I think it, well, here in Utah, let me look it up real quick. Cause I'm going to blow your fucking mind in a minute. I'll, I'm pretty I'll, sure. I'll, I'll bet you probably will, but let <laughs> me look it up here. Let's see. All right here. While you're looking it up, I'll tell you. So for us, okay. it's used to be provincial sales tax and general sales tax. One was 7%, one was 6 They've since switched it to what's called a harmonized sales tax, 13%, except for in Quebec, because Quebec can't do anything the Anglos are doing. Okay. So 13%, that's on top Oof. of income tax and property tax, you got your 13% harmonized sales tax. That's on everything. Actually, I think everything. There's very few things that aren't. I think the only things that aren't is if you buy a used home. Like if you buy a new home, you're paying 13% uh -huh. on it. But Holy if you buy a home from another seller, then no. But they'll make up the difference in all kinds of other fees. Or if you're in Quebec, they have the bienvenue tax, which is funny because bienvenue means like welcome, like welcome. But for them, welcome's like 5% off the price of your home. Oh, and you're like, that's fucking retarded. That's not very welcoming. They're like, actually, it's the guy who made the tax. His name was like Donald Bienvenue. And I'm like, ah, you fucking assholes. Jesus. Well, yeah, you're, uh, yeah. You're now you see why Quebec's all pissed with that fucking lockdown shit. Yep. No, I get it. Well, our, uh, well, yeah, compared to you guys. Uh, 7%? Like you cocksuckers. Yeah, that's actually about right. That's what I was looking up. Let's see. Salt Lake, we have, let me look at, because there's a couple things. It's 7.75, because you got to figure the state, the county, the city, because the city gets their cut, the county gets their cut, the state gets their cut. So yeah, it's 7.75 is what we pay in Utah for sales tax. How do if Americans go bankrupt? You guys don't pay shit in taxes. That's just on sales tax. That's yeah. Not, that's not property tax. That's not inheritance tax. That's not um, the, the income tax that you get charged through your paycheck type of thing. That's the money that we pay yeah, by straight off your groceries. payroll. Right. That's not the gasoline tax that we pay when you go to the gas pump. That's you know, oh, gasoline dude, dude. taxes on top of that. 
we compare gas prices between the states and Canada, it's not even funny. Oh, I'll bet you guys are paying. A I don't even want to hear you bitching about that hidden gas tax. Like, <laughs> fuck you guys. <laughs> We well, we run to the gas it's tanks like it's like under a buck a liter like here. That's awesome. Yeah. For us, that's four dollars a gallon for us is like a crazy steal and go fill up the car. Wow. Jesus. I remember well, going to the States. When you guys hit three leader. bucks a gallon, you start having your American Revolution LARPing fests. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that's my concern is that and this isn't even bad. Quebec is way worse than Ontario is, but I have a feeling if we start going down the list of what the taxes are, like I'm gonna Oh, so this is why you guys have free health care. It's like, yeah, yeah, is it worth it? <laughs> but I don't know how Americans go bankrupt. Like you have to physically go bankrupt. It's you know called I mean? like, overspending. Is it? That's everybody always says is because once you get sick, the American systems fucks you. And I was like, is that the only reason? No, that's I mean, for some people, yes, that is that is a one way that you can be bankrupted for sure is you get in a you know, you have cancer or you get into a, like a major car accident that puts you in ICU and you got to have life-saving surgery and all this other stuff and rehab and everything else. Oh yeah. That'll, that can bankrupt you real fast. Okay. So but mostly it's that. guys who wanted a third power boat that year. Yes. Most of the bankruptcies are not health related. They are spending related. It's them spending more money than they earn and rack rolling up the credit. Dude, this is the most controversial thing I think I'll ever say, but you Americans don't deserve America, man. <laughs> I'm Such not going to necessarily disagree with you. Such a waste. <laughs> yeah, but that is, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a, we live in a debt driven society. See, we Bolo are every three not. months has a party in Vegas and he's like, yeah, my snowmobile caught fire. I'll buy another one. And he's doing well. And I'm just like, fuck man, I would love that up here. That'd be awesome. If I could have my car catch fire and it just like irks me and that's like the, the legit reaction that I have is like, oh, that's nuts. I got to go to Walmart later. Fuck. Now I got to Uber <laughs> as opposed right. to here where it's just like, holy shit. I don't know. Maybe I should move to Florida. It's too bad. <laughs> that's the one state in the union that I got like a guy I don't like there <laughs> or wherever hey. Cernovich lives to him and him and Anthony. Well, I can't move to New Jersey because Stedman. Well, oh, actually, yes, I won't have to. I'll never see him. Well, <laughs> I'll be out on the street. Yeah. <laughs> Prison junkie, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Well, you know, you would if you moved to Jersey, you'd you'd get to know Vince because that's where he lives. He uh, lives in the same state as Stedman. And so. that's what I don't get, isn't it? Like, I think there's, is there two New Jerseys? There's like the one that I think of with like Snooky, and then there's another New Jersey yeah, with like gardening Jer and shit. Yeah, there's North Jersey and there's South Jersey. Huh. So, and, and I can't remember which one is which. I think it's South Jersey that's Snooky. Uh, and, and, and the mafia and all that kind of stuff. And then I think it's North Jersey that's flowers and everybody's kind of happy. Is this like so. the, the, New York state versus New York kind of thing there. Yes. It's, it's very similar to that. It's New York city versus the rest of New York. New York. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. I did notice that driving through like, like Chicago versus everywhere else in Illinois and the New York state versus New York city change. That was kind of neat. The road trip through the States was kind of fun. Nice. And then did Seattle go, versus the Utah? fucking boonies. We just did all the Northern States. I've been Utah's on like 12 hour layovers where I just got hammered at the bar with all these like Mormon beers. Yep. Which I'm like, thank God you guys don't drink this more for me. <laughs> but no, I did. Uh, uh, so I've done Washington, Portland or Oregon to California. Down we went down to Mexico. And then the other one was Washington, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, North Dakota, dipped into South Dakota briefly. Uh, and I know I'm missing a state in there. What's on the other side of like Mon oh, Montana, Montana. Okay. And then we did Illinois, Michigan, oh, the East Coast ones. What is it, Vermont? Well, there's... No, no, not Vermont. Vermont's like way east. I know we just dipped briefly into New York State, but I think there's a okay. state in the middle there that I missed. Well, there's, uh, I want to say there's Maryland, Massachusetts. Uh, oh, but... Maryland. We didn't go as far as Massachusetts. Okay, so you didn't go that far south then, so... No. And you didn't go as far east as like over to Maine or anything like that then? No, no, no. We stopped just short because it was on our way down to, to, to Montreal. So we stopped. I think I guess Vermont would have been as far as you go to get to Montreal. 
I think. Fuck, I'd have to go look it up now. I have to go check. Isn't it bad when you've been to enough places that you have to go check your Facebook albums to see which ones? You're like, oh, yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Well, I, I could say the same thing, too, that it's like, oh, well, yeah, it's like, well, where haven't you been at least at some point? And it's like, well, I've been to Florida. I've been to Massachusetts, Maryland, Vermont, Connecticut, um, a lot of the East Coast, actually. I haven't been to Virginia or West Virginia. I haven't been there. Been to Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming, all that. Holy, and by the way, Northern Colorado or Northern California, I did yeah. not expect like Eugene. Do you know Eugene, California? I think mm -hmm. I'm pronouncing it right. I did not expect that. Like country people with like a shop that's a diner that sells pies and you didn't good really, but salt that's the earth. But I thought it was just LA, LA everywhere. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You're just thinking it's LA or, or San Diego or something. Yep. Yeah. There was no traffic. And then I remember outside of San Diego where you get like, People that as a hobby, what do they do? They just roam around the border with guns looking for migrants sneaking across. And it's like fucking Batman wannabes. What do uh -huh. you guys want to do? It's like you used to do gopher hunting when I was a kid. You guys are like, no, we're just doing that with the Mexicans. Like, <laughs> yeah, not all of California is just L.A., even though no. L.A. will try to tell you otherwise. You know? Well, to be fair, I know more San Diego than I know anything else. San Diego and San Fran. But the San Fran I know is dead. Oh, yeah. It's we used been to go there. Years. Yeah, we had Diego and San Fran every year, Fleet Weeks. It was so much fun. And then the last time I went back, my girl was having a uh, uh, one of those conferences for her industry. And I went there, and the place smelled like piss. And I was like, dude, you had a thousand sailors here peeing in the streets. It didn't smell this bad. What the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. It's too bad, though. It was like a really nice city, and then you guys oh, yeah. just ruined it. Yep. Seattle I mean, was you guys, nice. You, you personally... Yeah. Yeah, not me, but I know what you mean. Yeah, oh, I know, dude. Seattle was gorgeous at one point. Oh, I like. I used there. to love Seattle too. Yep, I used to love it too, but now it's just a shithole. Yeah, yep. it sucks. And oh, that's, yeah. that's the way Frisco went too. Frisco's a shithole. So poor bastards. You know what happened? What started this all? It's when Kansas City barbecue burned down in San Diego. It was all downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> that was the fulcrum point. <laughs> that. Every sailor was a rite of passage. You hit San Diego. You're like, what do you want to do? You want to go to Horton Plaza and buy some hot sauce? You're like, yeah. You want to go, you know, party at the pier? Yeah. What do you want to do? I'm going to fucking Kansas City barbecue and I'm going to blast great balls of fire on the fucking piano. Why is that? Because Maverick. Fuck you. That's why. <laughs> Maverick and Goose. That's right. Maverick you always get to be Goose. Well, you're the one that's going to die the way you act in foreign parts. So you get to be Goose. <laughs> Yeah, oh. Top Gun was like these sailor movies. Like, that's Navy. Yeah. Because Amer and Kennedy's have like our NCMs have the peak cap where you guys have like the Gilligan hats. Yeah. So we were always, everybody just thought we were American officers. So we always got treated well. And the strippers would try and steal our hats. But because you don't want to be without your headdress, Canadians were like very careful to make sure no girl stuck it. You'd use it as like a coaster for your drink so the stripper couldn't steal it. And it's fun times. <laughs> but you have to make, but strippers aren't fun in the States anyway with that whole topless and booze rule you guys got. Which one? Oh, dude. Okay, so you know how you can't drink and have full nude clubs in like most states? Yeah. 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 That's, You're talking G-strings and pasties. Yeah. That is something I have never seen until I got to the States. In wow. Canada, it's always full nude. In Canada, they're paid for like the show. They don't live on tips. So it's not very like, it's not always about buying their gumroad course. Right. <laughs> you go down, it's like a fun experience. There's like a group of Filipino ladies watching the UFC fight and eat chicken wings on the meat seats. It's like an event. It's fun. It's lighthearted. It's like an 80s movie. It's like watching Ski School or Police Academy or The Toxic Avenger. Oh, nice. And then you go to the States and they're like, there's a vagina and here's your Mountain Dew. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, no, you're right. And see, it's funny you mentioned that because I didn't really think about that till you just brought it up. Because I, I haven't been to strip clubs in quite some time, but... Right. Me neither. It, well, yeah, exactly. Wink, wink. I, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but in Utah, we, we've got some goofy ass laws because of the LDS religion. And mm -hmm. I just thought it was more a Utah thing that it's like, oh, I... Because I, we have a couple of clubs that do full nudity, but they don't allow alcohol. 
So you can go in and have your punch or have your Coca-Cola or whatever and sit down and see full nudity, but you can't drink alcohol. Like, what's the Where, point of that? That Well, exactly. That's my thoughts, too. Okay. The only thing that I know when I went into those couple of places just to see, like, what the deal was. Yeah, me too. All the guys that were there, <laughs> it was the whole, like, hat pulled down low so you couldn't see their faces, collars turned up. Uh, the, the trench coat on that. It's like, Oh, that dude's jerking off at the table. You just, you kind of knew that, Oh, uh, this is not good. You know, it, it, it was, it was it's sleazy. A damn shame, man. Yeah. It was sleazy. So it was like, yeah, I got to get the hell out of this because oh. I'm not going to sit there with peeping Tom. Go to, go to one in British Columbia. You're going to love it. Sit there. Girl, a strip for you. They have their three shows. They do the dance. First dance is like a dance dance. Then the strip tease dance. And then the third one's a full nude dance chant shower at the end of it and bang your fists on the tables maybe they take a shower maybe they don't nice it's fucking good times so, yeah alberta they'll play games like i remember when i went down to the french maid in calgary i think it's still around it's probably i don't know who knows with covid here but because there they were more tip based is that girls would set up like pitchers empty pitchers near their hoo-hahs and like everybody would try to throw loonies and toonies to get it in there and if you were kind, you would like warm it up in your hand first. And some of the guys that weren't kind would like just whip them down there to try and leave a mark and they'd get kicked out. And it was fun. <laughs> and Montreal is a little more like, like the mafia run it. So it's kind of like, I think I've told this story before too, but yeah, I remember guys would come back from St. Jean uh, Richaud and yeah, I got $20. I got a blow job and I can't remember the name of the place in Quebec, but there's this one in Montreal. Every sailor military guy knows exactly the place I'm talking about. If you remember the name, put it in here. And Ontario is kind of more like an American strip club, except for it's fully nude, so I don't really like it. But yeah, BC was where it's at. I don't know. I, like I, just, I just think you guys really missed an opportunity. You're talking about freedom, and you should have the freedom to to drink a highball and see a shaved vagina in the same place. Uh, I agree 100%. That's my my version of freedom right there. But Export yeah, that shit that. to the Middle East. Oh. <laughs> Mish, we're sending you a package. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? It was like, and that's the part I miss. And I don't, that's why I kind of joke, like 80s movies need to make a comeback, like the yes. Police Academy stuff. It's just mm -hmm. sexuality and comedy need to come back. The lighthearted fun of it. Yeah. You go to a strip club and it's not, you're not at a strip club because you want to jerk off. You want to go to a strip club because they got good wings. Titties are fun. Yeah. Everybody's laid back. Everybody's mellow. Nobody's uptight and tense or nobody's, you know, a bona fide pervert where it's like, oh, Jesus. Dude, some of my favorite stories. Here's one more. I'll tell one more sailor story. Uh, my roommate, I talk about her a bunch. She was like my wingman. She was one of my uh -huh. two wingmen. Uh, I used to live with her, bipolar chick, D cops, awesome girl to drink with. Her friend, who was the first girl I met when I moved Victoria for the military, ended up leaving her psychology classes in university to become a stripper. And I knew she was doing it, but she never did it at home. So none of us knew what or where. When all of a sudden I get a text from my brother who lives back in like the interior in BC. He goes, who the fuck is Gia? And I'm like, I don't know any Gia. What are you talking about? Well, she says she knows you. Turns out a different name also starts with a G. That was her stage name. And he starts telling me the story. I guess he was the cool guy with all of his friends. And they all know me from like when we were kids. And she's like, strippers usually make casual conversation with the guys in the meat seats. And he's trying to be all slick. He's like, yeah, where are you from? And she goes, oh, I'm from like, the Vancouver Island. He goes, oh, I got a brother who's down there. He's in the Navy. And she goes, oh, really? Who's him? Who is he? She, he name drops me. And she goes, wait, are you? And she name drops him. And I was like, <laughs> like, what the fuck? And then they're calling me from the, they're texting me from the strip club. Who the fuck is this? And I just started laughing. And then I came home. They thought that like the sailor life was nothing but like strippers and blow all day. It was the funniest <laughs> shit ever. <laughs> oh, shit. It but is yeah, you can't get down. that with like trench coat and jerk kicking off in that. No, no, God, no. Most no. of the time I had strippers yelling at me. Like I was this one chick dressed as an Air Force thing. I was kind of bored and I wanted to go out. So I'm like noodling, doodling on my napkin with like a pencil from the bingo thing. I look up at one point. She's staring at me. Titties hanging out. It's like, are you done your fucking math problem? Like those are the kind of stripper <laughs> stories I have. And I'm all like, like, I just got chewed out by a naked chick. Fuck, why do you walk back from that? It's like a, it's like a gay guy calling you a fag. You're just like... <laughs> Like, what do you uh, say? <laughs> you got me. <laughs> uh, God damn it. 
<laughs> oh shit well um, hey a uh, couple of options here for you depending on what you want to do we okay. can either call it quits if you want to go i can still go because if you want to go we can go for probably another i don't know about a half hour make it an even five and then you will have officially trumped uh carl oh uh, you know what actually no fuck it i haven't had breakfast or lunch yet okay. it's like three in the afternoon i should probably go yeah, I get you, because I, ne I need to use the bathroom. So This is your goddamn problem. You're too goddamn fun. <laughs> well, we need to do this again. We can well, next one, make it about before. 10 ways to be more alpha, and I'll guarantee I'll be bored of it in like 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys in the chat, hit the like button, subscribe, do the thing. Go watch Ryan's stuff if you haven't. Uh, if any one guy's content really popped a few bubbles for me and got me to pull my head out of my ass, Ryan was the guy who did it. So, <laughs> Thank well, you, man. It was, it was. It was your Gillette one, dude. That, that oh, just yeah. totally just like... Rolo made me realize I wasn't insane, and he helped me, you know, by his work, he helped me not want to eat a shotgun round. You, on the other hand like totally popped the outrage thing that I was going down. And it was just like, Oh my God, fuck this shit. Oh yeah. Nobody remembers Gillette anymore. You notice that? Yeah, exactly. But they all remember the outrage that's still, you know, constantly churning day to day. And, but it was your Gillette take that I was just like, Oh God, I'm not going to die of a heart attack or of a coronary or a blood burst in my brain because I'm so wound up <laughs> and angry because the internet told me to be mad. Yeah, it fucking nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's and that's where even to this day, it's like, yeah, I just, I got guys that are like, hey, you should talk about this. It's like, that's outrage. I don't care, yeah. you know, because I don't. It's like, no. I don't give a shit about this stuff. It's like, why do you want to wind yourself up, guys? You're just going to give yourself a heart attack and die early. So why? You're a better Christian than the Christians. You're doing the serenity prayer, man. Pretty much. <laughs> you know, it's like, eh. I'll just talk shit. We'll talk about how to make videos. We'll talk about cats and dogs, which one's better and why, you know, because we could have that conversation too. Is I know you about your dogs and you know, at least vaguely of my cats. Yeah. So. yeah that big fucking thing you got there. That's right. My goddamn main coon. He He's a behemoth. Either you're a midget or your cat is fucking huge. That's all I'm saying. It's a combination of probably both, <laughs> but he is a big cat. He is. He's a big son of a bitch. So yeah, he's part mountain lion. So he, he might even be on the show at some point. I'm surprised he didn't show up today. Yeah, but, fair enough. Yeah. Done with your shit right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So guys, hit the like, hit the subscribe, share, all that stuff. Definitely bookmark this for you guys that want to learn some real crash course intro. Hey, here's how we make videos. I mean, I, I learned a lot just from being able to kind of step into Ryan's mind of why he did it and how and what makes sense. And it's like, oh shit, this is nice. So, oh, you saved me so many hours of audio ducking. Good. Well, then it was <laughs> worth it for you then. See, this is value and value for value type of thing. If I just saved you a bunch of audio ducking shit, because <laughs> dude, you'll play with that. You'll never go back. You'll be like, fuck key framing and all this other bullshit when it comes to the audio. So it's good right. stuff. But guys, we'll see you all next time. And...